Hello and welcome to HBFT Gaming. I'm HBFT and we are back again with Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. That's right, we are back and this time I have a feeling we are near the end because we just entered Act 5 and there's so much to do. And we are currently chasing after the Holy Inquisition. It seems like there's a new alien race to confront. And on top of that, we've got access to so much more stuff. So I'm going to jump right in because I'm very excited about this, if you can already tell. So here we are in our void ship. This is crazy because after all if we head on over to our inventory you're going to notice something very different because hb is wearing heavy armor that's right we saw this last time he's got an insane 27 deflection if you compare that to our buffest of guys well he's wearing something different as well he has 11 deflection but he's got power armor that's right we've got power armor on everyone that we could possibly fit it on so that means abelard has power armor that means pascal has power armor that's right he's got the dragon scale power armor the adeptus sororitas of course she's got her power armor of course we've got the holy power armor on ulfar himself and right now it seems like in his companion quest we got to go back down and face whatever the heck is down there that basically left him on death's door so that's super super crazy so i'm very very excited about this and in fact if you take a look at where we are at right now you will see that we are barely in it at all and yet we have done so much so here we are we are in the system neos i don't know how you pronounce this i want to say chariot but caroitus and in here is the snow world where Ulfar's Baleful Howl companions have disappeared too. We just recovered Ulfar. He has just... He was basically left on death's door. Anybody who wasn't superhuman would have died. And now we are going to descend onto the planet and fight next to him as his eight Vator. So you'll see we've got Abelard, we've got Argenta, Kaja, Pascal, Ulfar. It's looking pretty good. Although, yeah, no, that's looking pretty good. I cannot believe we're at 49. We're close to 50 as well. So I don't know how high we can go. I hear that maybe people can kind of cap out at 55. So that definitely tells me something about how close we are to end game. Yeah. So let's get in. Here we are for the first time. We are on the map. Doesn't look too large. Let us know. We have quite a crew. Quite a crew. Oh, hello. We can get down here. Space wolf never fails. Some never goods. Melt a weapon, virtuous. Vin oh my god, 80% armor pennant. Wow, this is starting off well. On hit, target must perform a toughness resistance test with a plus 10 bonus. Oh, weird. The target has a plus 10 bonus to resist. So we're kind of helping them out. I mean, I guess if they're tough, they could use a little help because 80% is a lot. It is a lot. You know, right now we have an Inferno pistol on Abelard. He could definitely use an upgrade if it's better. I would imagine that it is. Yes, it is by a lot. Oh my God. Wow, that's incredible. Well, Abelard is now... Oh, it looks small. <laughs> it looks kind of like those old pirate... I don't know. It looks like a weird old school silencer on the... End. Well, actually, no. Now it looks more like a break. But my God, yeah. What is that armor? Hey, Dreamy. Well, it looks like Abelard just got himself some power armor. That's right. The modified artifice, your armor. The one thing that I'm a little bit sad about is that it has a bonus minus one AP for attacks with heavy weapons. But unfortunately, he doesn't really use heavy weapons. So I'm very strongly considering specking him into heavy weapons just so they can utilize it. But take a look at that. Look at his strength. 121. That's plus 12. And that's straight damage applied because he gets plus 20 strength with this. There's also an alternative that he was wearing, the Tempestus Elite Carapace, which is very powerful too, because his deflection and power armor is 11. You stick this on here because of his carouse. He's now at 19, but overall, oh, and he gets extra dodge, 52%, but this is a 75% dodge penalty instead of a dodge penalty of 50%. So he actually gets a little more. So I just like the fact we've got so much power armor here, yeah? I'd say heavy weapons aren't that good unless they are the bolter. Well, there is, in fact, we got this, which is pretty darn awesome. I like this one. It is the Judex. So if you compare it against the standard Astartes Flamer, this one is 40 to 55, 10% armor penetration, right? It's one and one. This is a cost of zero and one with heavy gunner. And it also has the negative effect of burning, which basically means if the enemy suffers a willpower test and he fails, then he'll go around, go psycho. If the target fails, they run to a random ally, burn them, 
equal to the power of burning the target is currently suffering, and then that target inflicts flames on his ally. So it spreads. <laughs> So this is pretty good. I never saw it before my playthrough. These seem destructive. Well, this is from, I think it's from the, they're from the same vendor. They're from the Drusian uh, chaplain, yeah? Hieronymus Doloroso. And good to see you, man. I'm very excited about this. This is the conclusion in theory to the companion quest for Ulfar. The scouts discovered Ulfar's lifeless body here. Okay, so this is where he almost died. The tracks of the mysterious enemy that defeated the Space Wolf have almost been hidden by the snow. Demolition. Okay, Argenta's with us. We're fine. She's got all the agility in the world. She's got advanced demolitions. Very snowy. Basically in this, like, perma-blizzard. Looking very Necron-ish out here. I'd like to say a thing. Do you know Caiaphas Kane, the hero commissar of the Imperium? I have heard of him in the books but I never read the series and I keep hearing people talk about him. I remember, but I, I don't know him very well or his story well at all. I remember it was like, Kane, is it Kane's Ghosts? Is that right? And I do recall my, one of my favorite characters was actually Commissar Yarik, the orc hero or a fighter against the orcs. Ooh, what's in here? Can we go inside? Oh, we can't go in. Oh, that's strange. It totally looks like we should be able to. I guess we can only go here. And this definitely looks like... Oh, no! We might have found the Baleful Hal. Do you know why? How he ascended to be the greatest hero? No, not at all. Well, that's not good. Well, I guess now he's free. He achieved his status by killing a greater... Oh, my God! How did he do that? Not by himself, I would think. That's... Well, that's beyond impressive. <laughs> My brothers. Red brows furrowed in anguish. Ulfar bows down over the bodies encased in ceramite and adamantine. Once again, fate has barred me from traveling to the hall of the Allfather with my brothers. Look around. The snow-covered battlefield reveals little, but it is clear that the wolves gave furious battle one last time. The rocks are pitted from bolter strikes, and here and there you see scorch marks left by plasma charges. Who were they fighting? I smell no corruption on their bodies, and I see no traces of Zenith's weapons. I think they did battle with humans here. Oh, what? Hum the only humans we know out here are the Inquisition, yeah? What do you think they were looking for here? I do not know what they were seeking, but they certainly found someone here. Otherwise, this crime would not have been committed which is equivalent to what you did by a greater daemon of Tzinch. Oh my gosh. We're talking about that, um... You're, I know what you're talking about. It was the one that Urulan summoned, right? I am... Um, they met their doom with honor, Alfar. As befits true warriors. Alfar huffs a weak laugh. <laughs> true enough. No one would dare say that the baleful howl would stare into the eyes of Morkai with anything but joyful awe and fire in their hearts. That means you could get your name etched in the monument to the great heroes. Oh my, we miss what we're talking about. High five. Oh, I'm glad I know now. Now I can put in a petition. <laughs> I love you, man. I sense evil in their deaths. The souls of the baleful howl are not at rest, but remain here on the battlefield. They are not with the Allfather. I must escort them to him. Will you bear witness to the last honor given to my brothers? What are you going to do? I will sing their sagas, so the world remembers who they were. Then the flames will take their bodies, and will we, we will drink to the memory of my pack, to ease their march to Kahala. Perhaps we should return their bodies to Fenris? There is no point now. If they had died recently, and if I were a wolf priest, I would have armed myself with a fang of Morkai and extracted their progenoids, the implants containing the memory of the Allfather's blood. On Fenris, they would have been transplanted into young wolves, and the valor of my brothers would have lived on in them. But their bodies have lain here too long, so they should simply be given to the flames to protect them against scavengers and unworthy hands. 
Turning to Pascal, Olfar says in a grave voice, I know that you are a man of curiosity, but do not even think about performing the sacrament of harvesting on my brother's bodies. It is forbidden for you. The tech priest's voice is cold and contemptuous. This unit has no intention of assisting a pack of murderous beasts. That me. This con thus continues the adventures of all foreign friends. That's right, Kazek. Good to see you, man. High five. Why me? Our sagas have long since become one, and tradition bids that the burial be witnessed by another clan member, not an outsider. I am no one closer than you here. I shall bear witness to their final honor. Alfar produces a knife inscribed with scarlet runes. Picking up a rock from the ground, he begins to scratch the rock's sharp edge across the blade, etching a name. His powerful voice rumbles. Hear now the saga of the baleful Hau Pack, proud warriors of Fenris, Yeka Fenrika. The verses weave together, recounting the deeds of each of Alfar's dead brothers, with incredible precision in every detail. The wolf lists the accomplishments of his comrades, the enemies they slew, and the sacrifices they made. The saga continues at length, and the relentless rhythm sends you into a trance. With a grinding screech, the rock is drawn across the knife blade again and again, inscribing one name after another. Any plans on doing Dragon Dogmas, Dragon's Dogma 2 when it comes out? Uh, I don't have any at the moment. I mean, I didn't really think about it. I haven't really even looked into the game, but I have, do recall that DD was really good. Uh, the number one, yeah? On the cold world they gave battle. The pack's fierce name never disgracing. So ends the saga of the baleful howl, and the void thunders with echo unending. Fenris Hilda. Alfar is silent for a long time. The etched knife blade slices across his huge palm, and scarlet drops paint the snow. His weary voice rasps. Hear my oath, Allfather, Yelga Thura. With his bloodied hand, the wolf removes the rune-covered horn from his belt, and from a flask, pours something dark and sharp-smelling into it. Let us drink to my brothers, eight water, and then we will build the pyre. What oath did you just swear, Alfar? It is the oldest oath on Fenris. It translates us, I will avenge, or I will be forsaken. And what is that in that horn there? Usually wolves are commemorated with myod, but I will have to settle for something I made myself. A few poisonous herbs from Janus, some rare toxins traded on footfall. Maybe this brew will overcome the physical might of an Astartes. Alfar smiles sadly. How I wish that my omen would prove a lie, and that my libation would sour without ever being tasted. It sounds like you're asking me to drink poison. I am not a madman. It is a strong brew, but it will not kill you. Well, it shouldn't, at least. But it may envelop your mind in a haze of dreams. Do not believe everything you see. The visions may have been sent by the Allfather, or by someone less worthy. Oh great, he wants us to drink poison! <laughs> Blood Oath, there's no way I'll pass up on DD2. Love DD1 so much, so can't wait. Heck yes, what do you guys like of it? Oh, speaking of which, what happened to Argenta? Argenta's here. She's here, and she's got... Her power armor, yeah? Alright, well... Feast well, wolves! Oh boy. Congrats, thank you! High five! We've done as many companion quests as we can. I, I don't know if we've done Heinrichs, if he has one, yeah? Oh god, we're dying. The astringent liquid burns your throat, and a fog immediately descends over your vision. The sky darkens, and the rising wind whistles in your ears. Through it comes the high-pitched cawing of a bird. Alfar nods approvingly. It is a sign. Fate walks beside us. Skull! Taking back his horn, the wolf takes a mighty swallow of the stuff. Majestic shadows rise in the snowy haze around you. The figures of warriors clad in indestructible armor bearing an emblem of two black fangs piercing the yellow of the sun. They are looking at you. The brothers bear witness which means 
It is time for us to meet my last comrade. Wait, what comrade? There was one missing among the dead. And now I know who I was fighting before. It was brother Ignilf. Oh, the wolf's... Wolfen? What happened to Ignilf? He went mad with grief over the bodies of his brothers. And the curse of the wolfen prevailed over his valiant heart. He became a beast. Okay, that makes a lot more sense now. And I love how muted everything is right now. Is he dangerous? Well, yeah. Or will you be able to reason with him? There is no reasoning with one who knows only the black bitterness of hatred. The curse of the wolfen is not only our bane, but also our shield against temptation. When intolerable thoughts take shelter in a wolf's mind, the curse comes and drives them out, dousing them with the waters of anger. You cannot reason with the wolfen, or deceive him, or entice him. That is our bloody talisman against evil. Okay, well, rather than... And what are we going to do with him? Corruption is washed away by blood. We will cleanse his spirit, as there is no hope for his body now. None return from the curse's embrace. Kalkazar once encountered another of my brothers, who had also become a wolven. Kalkazar captured him and brought him to Fenris. That is the debt we came here to pay. But we have no way of doing what Kalkazar did, so we will have to grant Brother Ignilf peace. Okay. <laughs> we have to fight a space re That's cool. You know what Wolfen are? They're crazy, berserked out space wolves, right? Doing the Ipecac S, right? Oh boy. The wolf moon raises its head and howls. Werewolf. Oh god, that's that's even better. I I'm sure that a superhuman going with super increased magnified strength is, is better, right? They start growing. Oh well there. Then it turns its wise piercing gaze on you and blood rains down from its snow-white fangs onto the frozen world. Where do you intend to look for him? A toothy grin is the only response you receive. You see fangs lengthening before your eyes. Is it all far laughing at you? Or the feral moon suspended in the sky? The fog clouding your mind grows thicker. He will come. <laughs> I'm a little scared. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Alfar lets out a belligerent howl, whipping up snow drifts into frightened whirlwinds. You hear a terrible cracking sound. Someone's feet, no paws, are breaking through the crust of snow on the ground. The beast now comes, and its cruel howl awakens the fallen warriors of Fenris. Are they like gonna fight on our side against this thing, or are they gonna? I don't know. Where? Which one is which? Are they all woven? I doubt it. Right? These are the brothers. So where's? Oh my god, Ipecac. <laughs> it's something that really only happens with Space Wolf initiates who are becoming fully flit. Oh wow, well he's not... Wow! So it's muffled. I don't know if you can hear that, but I heard Allfar barely in the background screaming for the Allfather. Everything is... And the howling winds. Everything is muffled like I'm in some kind of dream. That is so cool. It's going left and right in my ear. <laughs> Well, uh, what are these guys? We've got Ice Blade Ghost Wolf, 855, 424. Okay, well, let's pull back. It kind of reminds me of if you're ever in a concert or a club, and basically this is what it sounds like. Yeah, we'll get Pascal, we'll get HB back here, and then we're going to go ahead and get all far to the four right there, and let's hold, yeah. Those aren't Wolfen. They aren't really capable of wearing power armor. Well, I guess we'll find out where the Wolfen is. Maybe we have to get through his brothers before we're allowed to dispatch with the Wolfen. Kind of. Uh, Points-wise, we'll give it to HB so he doubles up. We're going to buff the heck out of each other because this seems bad. Hold. We're going to go ahead and buff Kaja. Give an air of authority to our boy. And we're actually going to move Abelard so that he is in an interception position if, well, we don't have the opportunity. So let's get behind high cover with HP. Wow, this is wild. And Kaja. Okay, so willpower over to Argenta. We're going to go ahead and buff up Argenta. We are going to... I'd like to gather everybody together if possible. 
doesn't seem like we can necessarily see everyone from here, so I'm curious if moving up a little bit is going to help. It doesn't seem to affect them at all, but... Oh, no, it affects them. It affects them. Let's pull back, and we're going to go ahead and try and move this other guy on our left. It worked. Great. We're going to try and do a stare at two. I can only assume that they're hurt. And we're actually going to try and fear this guy and push him over to the right somehow, if we're lucky. All right, great. And then we'll try and apply a debuff of toughness and willpower on them. So I'm assuming they're hurt. We'll put the front line on them. And we'll put ourselves in the rear for increased damage output right there. Uh, also, Caiaphas Cain killing a greater daemon isn't what made him the greatest hero. It was all his random successes he had since he started as a commissar. In his first campaign, he was defending against an orc invasion force when a tyrannid hype... Oh my god! In the midst of... Oh, I scrolled past what I can read. In the midst of it all, he tried to desert in a com commandeered salamander when he accidentally ran into a flanking tyrannid force with a hive tyrant and he retreated frantically back to imperial lines and they believed it was a brave scouting and beat... Oh, that... That sounds like me! That sounds just like me! Apparently, it's like the Black Rage. All Space Wolf Space Marines can fall to... Oh my god. Hey, Der, it's good to see you. We are currently fighting against ghost Space Wolves, yeah? Hiding behind the rest of the party. Oh, yes, it's true. It's true. Obviously, I'm just pulling a bait and scout and bait campaign. Caiaphas Cain even considers himself to be the biggest coward and never wanted to get into fights, but he also didn't act like a normal commissar and sacrifice his men unless it thought it would save him. Oh, absolutely. And Der, we'll see you in a little bit, man. Thank you so much. All right, so with this, let's go ahead and... Well, I don't even need to really curse him. I think I'll give some points to Alfar so that he can at least get a swipe in. So he's going to Reckless Rush. We are going to... This costs one and one. So we'll Rapid Fire and then Wildfire, which will allow us to use this Bolter with three AP cost, even though we only have two AP. And then we'll go in and send this down range. And now, 101, excellent. Now that actually buffs his single shot damage by 50%. We'll go in and give this guy a swift kick if we are able. And the push. And then we'll follow it up just to the side. Perfect. And we shall hold right here. Kaifas Kane, unironically a master sword. Oh, wow. All right, now we shall back up if we can. Oh, I really want to give an extra turn, but I'm going to wait. I'm going to hold. Wow, they're fast. And he dodges into the middle. Oh, we dodge, but we take a big hit there. Oh, they've got plasma. Astarte's plasma. Oh, and just ends his ghost brother and ends. Ends the main blood wolf or ghost wolf. Revel in slaughter for all far indeed. Wow. He's controlling this engagement. We're actually going to go berserk. So it's going to cut his armor and deflection in half almost, but increases critical damage and output overall. We're going into rapid fire. We are going to send a burst remaining. Point blank. There we go. Oh, and it activates the other ones. Okay, so all far. Uh, let's switch over because we're going to full range. And we are going to send a wildfire burst so we can keep increasing our versatility. We're at 13 stacks and we'll send it right in between, hoping to catch both. Burst to three. We'll dash up. And flip over to his axe. Give him a free kick here. This guy's down to 42, the ghost wolf. And now we're going to use Firearm Mastery where we are empty. We get a free reload off of that. Send the ping. Shot. Enemy down. Beautiful. And we level up. We're at 50. Level 50 now. Ghost Wolf. And this looks like a sergeant of some kind. Ice blade. Double Ghost Wolf. So let's go in and isolate. We'll work on this guy right here. Just keep shooting. If we get in, he's within that five tile radius. Oh, we're missing. All right. Maybe get a direct line on him. Beautiful. There's the burn. And we will hold. Now it's up to HP. We might as well push it. So let's go ahead. We'll utilize press the advantage. I'm saving. 
I'm saving our extra turn just because I don't know if the wolf is going to come after this. Let's go ahead and at all costs, this guy. Black Rage was by the death of Sanguinous. Why do we hear boss music? Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and inspire. A lot of the firstborn space marines have some sort of negative trait in their gene seed like the Wolven or Black Rage. All right, well, he's already... We'll get him buffed up. Oh, they don't have the negative trait or they don't have the gene seed. Hold. It goes over to our boy Pascal. He'll tuck on up. He is going to apply Machine Spirit Communion on all. He's then going to stack the most healthy of the Space Gulf's Wolves. We will then do Joint Analysis for everybody. And we're going to mark our prey for both because he's got three to start with. And then we'll trail the one on the left at full health. We still have the opportunity, Argenta. She pushes up in a position to fire on both. She'll Reckless Rush over to four. Rapid Fire. And Dump onto the fresh Ghost Wolf. Enemy down. Beautiful. Stack that. Hold. Argenta's up. It's going to dash forward. Wildfire. And burst to finish. Enemy down. Oh, there it is. There we go. Does Argenta have power? Yes, she does. We have like... Four suits of power armor in our, our party right now. Material. Oral retelling of On Alfar and his brothers, the Baleful Howl saga. And on the last wolf verse, recorded by Arch Chronicler, Olkert Memestad. My verses you will hear, glorious brothers, of how the paths of Ulfar called Thunderlung from the first, and the last wolf of the Baleful Howl were intertwined. Over his brother's cold body standing, Ulfar the hard armed proclaimed, To the sky their glorious sagas, and his last homage paid, to those warriors proud as his witness taking his companion of the line von Valancius. The blizzard was raging and the wind furiously howling, as under that terrible clawed paw. Terror and awe the beast's form roused. His retinue to his aid, the rogue trader called, the Allfather's call to summoned to battle against the beast. We'll do that one. You did not fear to meet me, perfidious spirit, who the name Doppel Grendel claims. I see you have not learned from the last battle, though you paid for it with gouged eye. So spoke Ulfar Thunderlung, and the beast replied. Of your spoils you boasted to the priests in vain, Ulfar ever lost. My body alone you wounded, but I your spirit maimed, and your weird crippled. Then came the turn of the eight Vader to speak, and turned the two wolves away from the empty shedding of blood and his words were formidable and filled with wrath, but enough had already been said. The power of words spewed from the beast's mouth grinning, the cry of the wild hunt and the embittered souls hearkened. Out of snow and wind, wolf bodies were woven, for the warriors who died an unclean death, the unavenged, evil never forgetting. Their ice fangs gnashing, they approached into the roiling sky howling. The first brother by Alfar was vanquished. Against the second went Von Valancius, the brave. Oh, no, no. Oh, wow. We've got 0%. With the second, he clashed the eight Vader as his shield. Oh, we failed. Like stout armor in trouble's path standing, Alfar boldly accepted the hail of blows. Numb to his wounds, the cruel foes he slew, his allies looming death forestalling. Interesting. So we do not have access to all of the statistics of the party because I said the two of us are going to fight. But I left out the capabilities and checks of my party. So this is basically HP and Ulfar. That's it. That's crazy. Yeah. One super interesting fact of Caiaphas Kane, though, he actually apparently retired and died of old age. But due to some Imperial administrative mistake, he was marked as killed in action and it was caught and removed. So now it shows he's alive and on active duty, even though. He, whoa, that's crazy. Now, if only the Yarrick Omnibus was written as well as... Oh my god, I would read the heck out of the Yarrick Omnibus. It wasn't a mistake. He's been deemed KIA and came back so often. It's now standard operating procedure to deem all reports of his death as fake news. Wow! Well, that's just like us then. The pack 
is defeated. But the beast was not yet vanquished. Roaring his body he threw into the fray like a mighty spear thrust. Howling his claws cut through the adamantine. The warriors fought, a river of blood spilling, Ulfar Thunderlung his battle song singing, the black curse his vicious rival echoing. The warriors were clashing when the cunning ate Vader. Oh boy. A direct blow struck to the beast broadsides 25. Keen shot. Logic zero. <laughs> Athletics 85. Step back to his ally granting breadth to strike. I'm just getting out of the way. <laughs> Ulfar held no fear. That his strike broadly sweeping his ally would catch in a glancing blow. He fought mercilessly, his heavy swings scribing scarlet runes upon the snow. To his knees the beast fell, and suddenly about his grey lips a smile played of guile and fear. Upon the eight Vader fell the wolf's fiery gaze. By the power of icy Fenris I do curse you. If you look into the past, you shall see only deceit. If you look into the future, you shall see only treachery. The false friend's dagger shall open your breast. The arrows of deceit's wrought shall pierce your back. So spoke the eight Vader, the spirit born in sorrow cursing. And in the bloody wound he spied, his breast was cut. Oh, well, I have very good persuasion. From the eight Vader's lips, a daring song burst forth, death on the battlefield extolling. The heat of these words, the eight Vader's heart inflamed. The spirit's fatal vision banishing. Glory to brave hearts that fear not death. In its death rasp, the doppelgrendel answered, Brother, we were doomed not by the arch enemy's followers, nor by the despicable inhumans, who did not touch our armor, nor with dark sorcery did the malefics defeat us. No, it was the humans who oaths of friendship swore, that plunged the blade into our back, their treacherous plot in malice hatched, said the spirit and then it fell silent forever, the noble wolf's body fleeing, and peace to it bestowing. The pair stood together over the prostrate body, the body not of a beast, but of a brave fallen brother. The fearsome Ulfar declared an oath of vengeance, and the mighty wolves to Kjalhala went charging. They went knowing that from their betrayers three times the blood price would be exacted, and the eight Vader also his speech spoke. Who killed your brothers from this day forth? Who is our foe? The honor of Fenris you have defended. Now the last of the pack remains. All far the Avenger. A shame it is not it is that you came not in time to save your brothers. What will now become of you? Who killed your brothers from this day forth? Who is our foe? The traitor's name for now remains unknown. But in the darkness, I will find him and have my vengeance. So answered Thunderlung. And the eight Vara also his peace spoke. The honor of Fenris you have defended, Ulfar Thunderlung. My brothers, the Allfather's Hall entering, will boldly tell that in death they have not been forgotten. With a joyous roar, these words they will answer, for they surely mean that fierce Fenris still stands. So Ulfar's mighty word was spoken. A proud funeral dirge was sung. His brother's weary body, cursed by grief, from his carapace was freed and laid upon the pyre. The old spinners weaved the weird thread cruelly, no inquiries or entreaties excepting. Ulfar Thunderlung cast his gaze, and clearly he beheld the end of his trail. We've got the Blood Craver. Oh, new armor and Emperor's Justice. Allies auto dodge the wearer's burst attacks. Over penetration of wearer's weapon is increased by plus ballistic skill. <laughs> oh my, how can he become stronger? And so ended the saga of the Baleful Howl. May the Black Bane guide them to Kjalhala. Only one was not claimed by Morkai the Dark Hearted. Ulfar Thunderlung stood stalwart upon the ground. Too stubborn for death was this rebellious wolf, too hot to be seized by the chill of the grave. His brothers praising, he raised his deadly axe. Fenrir stands, so there will many yet to slay. Glory to the fierce wolf, son of Fenris. Let us remember, brothers, the baleful howl. Daring hunters, fierce fighters, troublemakers without equal. Let us glorify their exploits and glorify their fall. With honor have these wolves gone to Kjalhala. Let us remember the mighty brother Ulfar, who did not abandon his pack in the snowy wastes. Let us remember the traitor of the Von Valancia's line, he whose name is known and honored on Fenris. Let us raise our cups and cry into the face of Hellwinter's gale. 
Father, we live still. Fenris, Hilda. Oh my god. So apparently, Ulfar becomes stronger. <laughs> but of course. But of course. My god. I had to put down the Yarrick Omnibus after the first book. The author seems to have completely forgotten about Vox communications. So he just runs around to shout at the Imperial Guard unit. Sounds a lot like when you're in uh, feudal Japan and you got all the banners and you just, like wave at each other. It strikes me this might a wolf in. It's a rare mutation among the space wolves and their derivatives. They sometimes mutate into what Yep. That happened because of the sorrow of seeing all of his baleful hound brothers dead in a heap. HP's a bard. Well, I, I, all I do is just stand back and let him do his thing. And then he becomes stronger, right? So, oh my god, we're level 50. That is crazy. But even crazier is that we actually have something that synergizes. Look at his. Oh my god. So 85% same armor, more deflection by 4. He gets how much strength? This is very long. 30 strength so five more strength so that actually tops him out gives him another to plus 11 it bumps him up there the wearer suffers negative 40 percent less damage from psychic abilities when the wearer suffers damage from a psychic ability the absorbed and redirected energy pushes every adjacent enemy two cells away if the target fails a toughness resistance test it gets knocked prone for one round oh my god holy crap dude oh oh yes that's uh he's so big uh, the wolves are off of the screen well he also got a helmet emperor's justice i love this one auto dodge the wearer's burst attacks so i just and over penetration i just want to point something out right now if you go to heinrichs look at what he's wearing on his head whenever the wearer dodges an attack they gain plus one psi rating so does that mean <laughs> Does that mean if we were to, let's say, give a high rate of fire weapon, like, let's say, this with 12 over to Alfar, he does burst fire to double the rate of fire. And would that book give 24 stacks of Psy rating to Heinrichs? <laughs> if he auto dodges, is that how that works? Hey, Smeeble, good to see you, yeah? That makes me so happy, right? Right? Isn't that crazy? Well, we're definitely putting that on. I don't see why I would wear anything else. Right now, he's got... If he uses heavy weapons, he gains plus 50% additional damage, which is great for the heavy flamer that we've got that causes people to basically attack their allies. If we stick this on, he gets rid of the... Oh, now he's got matching crest right there. I mean, we might as well put these away. We don't need them. This, this is cool, though. It inflicts burning, double burning level, but no need for Beaky. It gives you over penetration. Yeah, no kidding. HP's created new Bolter Psyker ritual. Shoot over the heads of Psykers to mega buff. That's right. Why not? I mean, wouldn't that be cool? I think this is awesome. Well, apparently we leveled up. I'm curious if level 50 is significant. I would imagine so. We've got so HP right here. Uh, I mean, he typically helps people, doesn't really do the damage himself. So, oh, Psychic Awakening. The character becomes an unsanctioned Psyker and gains plus one. <laughs> Wait, I could become a psyker? Okay, that's weird. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Wait, 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 wait. Is that real? How did I all of a sudden... Okay, well, that's interesting. I don't know if I'm ready for that. I was not ready for that. I didn't even know it was a possibility. I guess, wow. Okay, cool. Uh, yes. The character's deflection is doubled against single target attacks. Well, I've got 26 deflection. Oh my god. That means if the Death Marks try to shoot HB, he's the Emperor's second coming. They're not going to get through at all. I won't die. Unstoppable toughness. Yeah, let's let's try Steel Shell. That's going to be hilarious. That's going to be awesome. Probably do all the warp encounters. Oh, that would make sense. Be smart. Well, I don't know about being smart, but they're going to enjoy it. Lasting impression. That's for voice of command. That's awesome. We'll definitely give it to our allies there. Ulfar gets stronger. So, I mean, for him... All damage dealt by the characters increased by 3% until the end of combat for every new enemy damaged by them this combat. That's basically like everybody, so let's do that. That's awesome. And then with trusty weapons, critical hit chance for axes, hammers, and last. I mean, it's basically axes, the only thing that is going to boost camaraderie, demolition engineer. It's kind of nice for area of attacks, but there's enough bullets for everyone for agility, but he only has plus four. Cover efficiency. He doesn't really use cover because he is cover. Controlled cost. 
controlled shot costs minus one AP less, but he basically has controlled shot on his helm now, which is insane. While at full wounds, the soldier has plus 10 ballistic skill and 2 MP. Well, guess what? The ballistic skill actually affects the um, the effect on his armor. So let's get integrity. That sounds awesome. Now he's at, well, well, he'll be at 90 ballistic skill yet. Wounded beast. Oh, I didn't see that. What's wounded beast? Yeah, Kazik. Uh, let's go Pascal, who now has power armor. So he's kind of a melee guy too now, which is insane. We've got critical velocity. I like this one. Critical hit chance, critical damage increased by 7% of their dodge, but his dodge is pretty low. First melee attack deals an additional damage. Deadly aim, death dealer, degraded defense, destroyer. Every melee attack the character makes reduces the target armor by negative 6% until the end of combat. Stacks. Wow. I like this. During the first turn of combat, the character has two additional action points. He's got a lot of stacks and things to apply. That's pretty darn awesome. So we'll go with that. And then fresh target. I like the fact that he's got good perception. So he'll deal more damage to someone who has not been damaged yet. So that kind of aligns in the beginning of combat. And then we've got our Kaja, who's basically, I think, gotten every single navigator power possible. Is that right? So what could she use? I mean, she's not awakening into a Psyker, which is interesting. At first turn of combat, me only, only turn of combat. That's right. It's just going to get worse. The character gains plus five to all characteristics. The bonus is doubled when they've got 25% wounds or less. Well, we've got basically perception and willpower, her two most important stats being brought up to the next level. That sounds amazing. So that'll just bing, boost her up to actually get that extra plus one that she hasn't had yet. Not that she need it, needs it. And whenever the officer uses an ability on an ally, that ally gains a bonus to the perception and ballistic skill equal to eight. That sounds great because she often buffs either HP or Argenta. Yeah, navigators already psychers. Well, you know, the thing is their navigator powers, I don't think they work with um, the psi rating items. So it would be nice if she all of a sudden got a psi rating too. <laughs> gains 15 willpower as long as they have no ranged weapons equipped. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Uh, let's see, 7% of dodge is actually not bad. Crushing assault, though, death dealer. After the character kills the first enemy, the character immediately makes an additional single attack against the closest enemy they can target with the same weapon. Sure, that sounds awesome. She gets more shots on people? Sure. She has awesome agility. The soldier's second attack action in a turn deals more damage to enemies that have not suffered damage from the soldier this turn. Yeah, why not? That sounds great. <laughs> Do more damage, Argenta. Yes, please. And we got Abelard. So, I mean, he's basically a, a beast of a tank. He's already got, I mean, perfection under fire. Is that going to boost him to anything new? Agility is nice, but nothing too crazy. We've got Puncture. Uh, we've got Relentless. Ooh, toughness bonus. Whenever the character's healed, they regain more wounds by your toughness bonus. Five times the toughness bonus. He already, that'll be 45% more wounds. That's a lot. Whenever the character loses wounds, their next melee attack gains plus one damage for every two wounds he lost. I mean, he's got decent deflection. That's not going to help him too much. Tough as steel. The character gains an additional 12 wounds. Those wounds are further increased by toughness, increasing by 10 times 9, 90% in the same... Okay, we'll do that. That's cool. That's awesome because he's got high, high toughness. And then attacks of opportunity deal less to him. Whenever an enemy attacks the warrior, next thing against them goes up. Crowd kill, area attacks. When the warrior takes damage, they gain. Agil his agility is very low. Uh, let's see, we've got plus three. I mean, that's nice. Toughness bonus plus agility bonus critical hit chance if he's under 50%. Living shield. Oh, I like this one. When he's surrounded by a bunch of people, it's negative percentage to even hit him, which is crazy. Charge and push increase damage or range attacks against them. Oh, he has a high strength. If there are no enemies adjacent to the warrior at the start of the turn, the warrior's damage increased by two times the strength bonus of 12. So 24% by 24. Oh, plus 24. That's flat damage. Oh my God. That's insane. That is insane. Wow. Argent equals opening salvo in combat. Uh, anyone equals opening salvo at this point. This is insane. I would like it if we can get more stats across the board. So... I think it was perfection under fire. There we go. That'll boost us up for the perception. And then we've also got combat insights. Nice. 
joint offense that's more of an intelligence thing weak body weak soul i think is intelligence as well so none of those really jive too much so maybe instead we'll do the combat insight if her perception bonus is 10 or higher gain plus one ap ignore deflection i mean that's going to be great because all we have to do is buff her her perception is going to boost by quite a lot maybe get to that point yeah what's that Zena still doing in your ship hey the Zenas, she's believe it or not she's pretty powerful um we've got jai eager subordinates like it they'll deal 15 more 15 percent more damage when she gives them uh a turn and then we've got iron discipline uh will power bonus is very low we've got personal oversight oh so she's targeting someone then they get more resolve that's awesome but she has a free move 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 so we'll oh actually does she still wear that that's item dependence so maybe we won't do that we'll just go with i did like inspire courage for everyone targeted by her non-attack abilities gets plus three extra temporary wounds yeah leveling up is so good and then finally last but not least we've got heinrichs does he have anything for his psyker stuff relentless revenge shot through tough as steel that's based off toughness his toughness not great deflection is not great his ballistic skill he's very middling gains bonus to all resistance tests equal to the deflection toughness revenge no relentless toughness puncture no he's not gonna have higher pinpoint accuracy his ballistic skill is not great maybe we'll just give him more stats so he actually boosts up for his strength and then last but not least we got hymns of hatred this one's pretty cool critical hits scored by anyone within the psyker's line of sight increases the psyker's critical damage by one percent until the end of combat well a lot of people crit <laughs> a lot of people crit in his line of sight that's a fact so that is amazing level 50 that's crazy so yesterday i actually cleared out the ships that were over this world so we can actually head right on down which is pretty awesome yeah so let's go with instead of i mean abelard's awesome i like this crew they're really good let's do it here we go heinrich says Javier's hairdo from No Country for Old Men. Who's that? Javier from No Country for Old Men. Is that a is that a band? Yeah. Since you've been fighting Necron, have you ever watched uh Pariah? Yes, Pariah Nexus on Warhammer Plus. I mean, I didn't watch it on Warhammer Plus. It was actually available on YouTube in clips. <laughs> keep your eye on the price. That is such a good such a good animation. Oh, this is very Necron. We're in a vault. All but buried under a thick layer of dust, these crates contain equipment still in prime condition. It's as though, even in the face of death, the tech priest would not dare offend the machine spirits by handling the equipment with anything less than reverence. Okay, can we can we loot it? Looks like goods. Yep. Got more stuff to trade to non-existent vendors. I'm really curious what that's going to do if there are no vendors to trade to. These sensors were erected by Techno Priest to ward off malicious Zenus machine spirits. Yeah, it didn't look like they warded much off. Have you seen the Battletech animation? Yeah, studying right now. I think Baradul's voice is in it and everything, yeah? The creature's completely motionless like a black statue. The dark metal of its body shows no discernible damage. Well, if it has no discernible damage and it's pretending to be asleep, can I shoot it? Like, is that possible? Can I... Like, Sins can Argenta shoot that guy? Turn all to decay. Will he get shot? Faith without deeds is Apparently not. I really think he's alive still. Buried. Yeah, that's right. Double tap. Oh, really? Aw. I want to be in hired steel. That'd be so cool. I have but good for, for them. Good for them. That's awesome. Well, I'm going to double tap. Oh, oh, oh. What's happening? What's happening? Nope, that's not it. Who, if not me? Nope. Oh, well. <laughs> Let us not dawdle. Logic. We've got a lot. 100%. The bodies of Skatari, whose flesh and armor have disintegrated in various places, judging by their wounds, they were shot during a hasty retreat. Oh, so they tried to run. And maybe all of these Necron are just completely asleep and just waiting for Is us to walk up to them made? before totally just coming alive, right? I'm sure that wouldn't happen. The edges of the platform are twisted and melted. It appears to have been deliberately damaged by a powerful explosive. Oh, so they're trying to sabotage it? Probably I the Skitari. Oh, that... Oh, yep. Yeah. They tried to shut down some kind of portal. Seems as though the dark hollows of its lifeless eyes could flare with a flame of ancient hatred at any moment. 
but the eye sockets I remain empty. Judging by the debris, the passage was blocked on purpose. Yeah, no kidding. You're looking at part of a system of pylons used by small Zenus repair machines to move around the crypt. Can we destroy that too? Can we just destroy it before they wake up? Yeah. Have you run into orcs? I have not. No, I haven't. I was saying give the monster the double tap. It's in the... Oh, gotcha, green team. High five. In zombie media, you always take a shot at the head after they already looked at... Oh, yes. I learned that in Resident Evil. Shoot them first. They'll probably come alive. All right. Well, here we go. Can we activate the stairwell? You didn't trick anybody. The creature emits a low hum alternating with string. Oh, yeah, sure. We can't attack them when they're dead. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Let's... Well, this guy, Necron... Immortals? Oh, look, there's a guy right behind us. How is this guy not alive? I guess they're not all online. Maybe they're coming on online slowly. All right, well... Cool, beans. Let's stay over there. That's kind of safe, right? We'll get HB over. We'll get Abelard in this guy's face standing in the middle of everything uh, better yet actually we'll have all far stand on the stairs and abelard can kind of guard this side here argenta can just stand here and be menacing uh i think that'll that'll work or maybe she'll stand on the stairs and uh kaja will maybe stand next to her to give camaraderie pascal will uh <laughs> will stand here because he's got melee now and power armor and abelard will tuck on the corner to avoid him slipping by all far will run block right here so we actually get shots on and we won't hit each other all right this is fine this is good we'll just all right kaja she'll buff all far immortals are their more dangerous infantry oh big surprise i know you say double tap i say melt a charge well it will probably kill them and they'll reanimate and then we'll be able to kill them again all right so all far gets to go a little bit he's a little stronger now reckless rush he will now suck up to this little immortal yellow he has he'll get a actually we're gonna hell brute horn trophy so now we look at it his armor should be down 48 percent but his dodge is 95 percent but his damage output is a lot higher so we're gonna switch on over rapid fire we're gonna switch oh we don't have wildfire crap i messed that up uh we'll kick him instead <laughs> at least later we're gonna kick some butt right and now Kaja gets to move. Let's bring it on over. Can't reanimate if there's nothing to reanimate. That's why I said melt a charge and not crack grenade. Nice shin kick. Yeah, we just kind of tickled him a little bit. Don't it's kind of the bunny way. Down. It kind of gets us to, you know, it's like person. neener, neener, neener. And then the enemy has to think about whether or not they're going to come after the guy who kicked him in the shins or whether he's going to shoot the easy prey like HP, right? All right. So as far as movement, let's get Abelard. Oh, Abelard's out of range. Well, let's give some actions to actually pascal right. if we can debuff the immortals early maybe it's going to help us we'll also get machine spirit communion on our rapid fire specialist we will sidestep over we're actually going to mark because we really want to drop the guy at our back for sure we'll mark him as prey we can actually mark three prey so the other immortal and then we shall also mark the warrior in front of Abelard, and then we will last but not least trail the guy behind us we really want to drop that guy and then now it's back to hp will hold now lady kaja will give it to argenta she's got her willpower for all the bonuses she will then kind of zap this guy actually first we'll curse him for the warp damage he currently has 50 54. he's got quite a debuff we'll go ahead actually you waking nightmare drop his toughness willpower further now he's down <laughs> his willpower is one bunnies he has zero zero characteristic and then now we'll zap him with held in my gaze oh not bad <laughs> not bad at all that's pretty good well maybe we'll make it so he's not actually behind us willpower i refuse to go on how is hb gonna survive this there's no heavy cover for him to hide behind his entire team oh did we mess him up oh wow i think we messed him up a little oh well so much for that guy we'll give hb a little buff so that he can buff harder percentages and all and then we shall say ayatsi please move a little bit closer get next to papa albelard there we go and then we can say zone of fear on oh not all far 
not Alfar. There we go. Try and run away from Alfar. That would be great. That did not work. Okay. Then we shall give the frontline bonus to Papa Abelard. This a job for the serfs? We will put ourselves in the damage arena right here. And then Kasha, who already has crazy dodge, is going to put herself in the dodgery do arena. Oh, if, if she could. I guess we'll just put it in the middle Me. so that there's more if places for us to get benefits captain. from. And last but not least, we give some points to Argenta to start if this I off. May. Here we go. She's probably pretty stacked right now. She's got six stacks of Reckless Rush. If we take a look at her, her stacks are... <laughs> she has 190 Ballistic Skill to start with before hurting people. Okay. And 111 Agility. This is a good start. This is great. Those are some big numbers. Yes, yes. I'm okay with this. This is fine. Okay, so what we're going to do... I'll do it. Rapid Fire so we can shoot 20 times. <laughs> Emperor protect <laughs> and burst damage for the weak. not much of an immortal now is he well we're gonna go in and flip it over because we actually have a very special bolter right here this one actually with furious recital will gain rate of fire based off of those affected by her recital it currently has a rate of fire of six she does this yahtzee and now it has a rate of fire oh she wasn't close enough okay so it's still six that's a bummer well, let's go ahead and get a little bit to the middle so she can see more people. And now she'll shoot manifest. eight times. So we got shot. She won't miss. Uh, forget. Oh, she gets a free shot. So that only counted as one. Shot. That guy died, but reanimate this. I feel like she's Carrie Ann Moss. Necron Mortal doesn't quite have the same ring, but it is a more adequate descriptor. Yes. So here's the thing. Pascal has equipment on where if any ally who has joint analysis is dealing damage and removes exploits, he gains permanent for the rest of the combat 5 perception. I just want that to sink in for a second. <laughs> 5 perception. We might as well raid as well. He's getting all this free stuff. So here comes the shot on those stacks. He just got 5. As the Emperor he just got 5. <laughs> And it's just going to keep weakness. going higher. It's so I'm curious, what's his perception at already? Oh, it's 100. That's cool. I'll do it. Shot. <laughs> She's laughing. She's laughing. Okay, now we're just going to hang tight. It's back to our boy, Pascal, who now has 105 perception for each of those shots. He's now going to claim the bounty offhand. Just pop one over. Actually, can we, we already marked that guy. We're going to call the bold. We're going to... Make sure we can hit that guy more reliably. And we're going to push over to the side to get some cover with HB. He's now going to take an at all cost shot on this enemy right here. Shot to the immortal. There we go. And the nice thing is 110. <laughs> oh my God. I love this. Okay. Uh, let's see. We'll give some more buffs to Abelard. We'll give... A little more air of authority to Argenta. We'll go ahead and inspire our boy Alfar. Definitely the bard, yes sir. <laughs> we'll give a little more resolve to Alfar. Not that he needs it. He's very full of resolve. And then we shall hold. So now it's to Kasha. Kasha is going to say, have an extra freaking turn, Argenta. Okay, so the nice thing is she's at 11 stacks of versatility. She now boosts up to 16 rapid well let's flip it over rapid fire for zero ap 23 shots that's a very rapid fire well let's get to a place we're actually going to use controlled shots so we don't accidentally hit Ulfar because he will automatically dodge shot oh i guess he did not whoops whoops okay well apparently uh she shot more than i thought she would it, it, he did not dodge <laughs> oh, whoops uh, all far is in trouble. Okay, that's fine. Whoops. Well, he's not a proper bard. HP doesn't try to seduce everything that he sees. Well, I mean, I seduced them with our wily charms. And obviously, all far is seduced by the incredible firepower of this sister of battle. That's about it. All right. And joint analysis. Let's get a move on. We'll actually stay close to Lady Argenta. She doesn't kill us by accident. 
reveling in the slaughter right now. She's gonna dash on up. Yeah. I said do some with guns. Does that count? Shot. High ground. We got the high ground. There's only three left. She's got... Ah, uh, she does have a shot on that warrior. Ooh, he didn't die, so wildfire. And we'll send 13 and hopefully we'll hit. All right, that guy came back and then died again. And now As the Emperor commands, I she act. will move a little closer. I will bathe this battlefield in righteous fury. And she's gone. Does she have a shot? No, she doesn't. Those two she cannot see, so she has to stop, unfortunately. Lady Kaja, hold. Oh, Argenta gets her turn now. So let's go in and activate the stairs. Oh, hello. Can she activate the other stairs? Does it cost points to utilize? Nope, it doesn't. Great. Oh, so she can go all the way up here. Does she have sight from here? She does have sight from here. There we go. It's over, Necrons. Lady Argenta has uh, the high ground. Shot. That guy's gone. He's definitely gone. Revel in the slaughter. Actually, what's her ballistic skill right now? It's 284! <laughs> It just keeps going up. Revel in slaughter indeed. Well, reckless Dodge attack. This makes it 22. Now she will wildfire again. And let's find the last guy. Oh, he's right there. We'll try to get line of sight. I don't know if we're going to be able to make it. Uh, she almost is done with her turn. We'll now run and gun. Get a little closer. There we go. Now we got line of sight. She is ready and burst. All right. Oh, wait, there's more? I thought they're all dead. What happened? Hey, when did these guys get here? What the heck? Joanna Argento Wick. She's now John Wick. Yes. Well, how did he survive? Okay, well, apparently they're not all dead. Oh, look, it's her turn. <laughs> oh, I love this game. All right, let's go, Argento. Never stop firing. You're basically the Flash. Reckless Rush. She's up to 28 stacks of versatility. And she now has 291 ballistic skill. As the Wildfire commands, for zero. And then she gets a send a burst. Well, that guy's done. Okay, so where's the last guy? Where's the last guy? He is... Oh, he's right there. Well, can we use steady Power superiority? The the and then now she can send a burst. I'll do it. All right, yay, we got him. We win. Oh, no, we don't win. Oh, that's cool. But of course. Oh, see, I wanted to destroy that pillar, but they wouldn't let us. Hey, at least the stairs are down, right? Oh, my God. How many are there? All of them? Are these warriors or death marks or out of existence. oh my god <laughs> can they just teleport out of anywhere do they have beacons do they have to have the gates can they teleport right next to all far that we accidentally killed i mean he's not dead dead but that looks like a warrior based off the weapon i think oh there's 16 Okay, there's 16. That's that's cool. This is a... I have no idea. Well, it's... <laughs> We've been ambushed. We can't deploy. So hang tight. We've got Lady Kaja. Let's move to the middle at this Be point. If we can kill everybody. My oh my god. Oh, she's been bitten. Well, that's not good. Let's go ahead and... Do we still have our buffs? I am a navigator. We Your do not. We've been reset. They reset all of our buffs. Okay. Well, we'll give it HP Isn't here. For Four warriors. Well, this guy, I don't know. He's a he's a death mark. We got a death mark on the field. We've got a warrior. A lot of little drones. We've got warrior and death. So two death mark, two warriors, bunch of drones. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, hang tight. HP. Let's go ahead and maybe we'll buff Alfar this time. He's got an injury right now. Poor guy. We may accidentally have shot him with 20 bolter rounds from a heavy bolter. That was a mistake. I didn't mean to do that. 
All right, we're going to give willpower to poor guy, all far. Death mark. Yeah, sniper. Actually, Dreamy was talking about Pariah Nexus. I mean, let me tell you, that definitely is not good for us. We'll go ahead and also buff me. Argenta. All far is a paper gun. Assist, Lord Captain. And now we shall gather up a see drones I'm not accustomed to being ordered around. and try and fry some of them yeah that'll do I am a oh oh did we kill oh i forgot about pascal pascal's fine Ugh, i did not mean to oh yep he's he's burning okay that's whoops yeah it's a little dangerous we should probably give some points to all far before our turn is getting too crazy all right reckless rush to six 20 rounds from a bolter is a friday night for a space wolf well, it was a good Friday then. All right, let's get a move on. We're going to work on the flanking death mark here. We shall dash on forward. And then we shall run and gun into their face. And now he shall kick the death mark and give them a... I guess we'll shoot the swarms. Oh, we've got firearm mastery already. All right. Well, let's flip it over and we're going for it. Typhus Kane got caught on an awakening tomb world and only survived by randomly jumping into one of their teleporters. Ooh. Oh, they bit us. Oh, over penetration. Oh, and we're hitting. Oh my God. We're hitting scarabs downrange. We get four more shots and over penetrate. Beautiful. Shot. Okay, working this guy's gonna be a little bit harder. Hang tight. Well, let's. Uh, he already has it. We'll give air of authority to Argenta. And I'm actually gonna give a whole nother turn to our boy, but we're gonna inspire. Actually, we'll buff up Argenta. She needs some help. <laughs> of course she does. Give her linchpin for resolve. We'll go ahead and mark up at all costs. We're going with our 15 stacks. It's not much of an advantage, but we'll take it and mark this guy as an objective and then send off a snapshot and shot to death mark. Now we give this to Alfar and his stats should be a little better. Yet 248, 202, not bad at all. All right. Can do this better than a war Revel and Slaughter, 268 on the ballistic skill. Reckless Close Rush play. to 12. Now he's 283 on the ballistic skill. We'll go ahead and flip it over. Send a. Yeah, we'll send a burst. Five is five enough. We're going so rapid fire and shot. Almost there, battle. Singleton. He now lives again. Wildfire. Reload. Double tap. Okay, that's more than double tap, but that works. All right. Since every time he's killing, he's getting more MP. <laughs> Let's give him a nice swing. Shot! There it is. Oh, my God. Wow. All right. Uh, let's kick him for free. Yeah, see. There we go. <laughs> There's six. All right, Allfar's coming around. That guy has been not reanimated anymore. We're going to go in and dash on through. And then we're going to charge just to cover some distance. Uh, okay, I guess run and gun. We're going. Flipping over to range. Maybe he's in range. He's going to try and get a shot, but he's out of range. So hang tight. We're relocating with HP. He's got the line. And we're going to hold. Oh, it's Kasha's turn still. I forgot. Let's, uh, we'll give some points to, actually, let's give it to Abelard. Poor Abelard, yeah? Poor guy. Here, come on, Abelard. Have some fun. Double, triple, quadruple, no quintuple tax. Oh, he, he just kept going. Yes. Abelard's ready. There's the other death mark. We don't want him suffer, not the Zenus. Sworn enemy. Give him a nice charge. Oh, what the? Oh my, oh, there it is. But Abelard has a lot of armor. <laughs> He's got 128%. Why not? Endure. Someone else we shall wall. Abelard watching the space reach show off. 
He's been steady on the same spot for a very right, long time. Well, here's the thing. We've got a clear. Go, Abelard. Swing. Swing better. All right. How do we... We can't close the distance anymore. We're out of range for taunting screams. We're going to use Bulwark because we're going to reduce, increase our deflection on ranged attacks. And uh, I guess... We do have an Inferno pistol, but we're out of range on that. God, I wish I had a dash or something. Right now, he's got... Well, he's got the single shot. Oh, this is the anti-reanimation protocol, even though he's got really low ballistic skill. So we'll just keep shooting. Maybe he might touch him. Uh, yeah. At least he's got the range to do something with his AP. We'll flip it back over to the parrying sword. Brace for impact. Defensive stance, just in case. And we shall hold. All right, so Cautious turns still. Now Argenta gets to go. <laughs> Yay! All right, go Argenta, go. And good to see you, Trith. Reckless Rush. Rapid Fire. Wildfire. Currently, she's at 180 Ballistic Skill. Let's make that higher shot. 20 rounds. Oh, the, the, yeah, no, they didn't. They didn't escape anybody's judgment here. She's got a shot, shot. There we go. And boost it. Firearm mastery. Shot. All right, one left. Death mark. All we got to do is get line of sight. Move. Revelant Slaughter. The Emperor commands, I act. 200. We have no shots. Dance Run and gun. The weak. I will now we've got shots. He's basically fury. dead Necron walking. And it's only going to hit harder and harder each time. Let's go for a devastating attack. I'll do it. Not that these are not devastating. We might be able to knock him. Oh, we'll try a burst. Yep. And shot. 71. As shot. <laughs> and shot. To kill. He cannot reanimate. He doesn't have allies. All right. Great. Awesome. Well, that was pretty good. Did they get a turn? Probably not. Okay. So what do we got here? Ooh. Ooh. The Last Confession of Magus Theseus Delta Praximus. Run. Oh, oh, oh well, thank, a little late for that. You will find no grace of the machine god in these faithless halls. Only an unholy hatred that is more ancient than the fading stars of these distant systems. They are asleep, the legions, the innumerable hosts. But their sleep is at its end. For no one's fault but mine. I have disturbed the slumber of an ancient mind driven only by a thirst for extermination. Even death cannot snuff out the cold green flame of its lifeless eyes. I hear the lockstep march of our doom. A silence echoes it, the silence of our assassins, for death has no need of words. Mercy is unknown to the Nephilimex, his wayward and unholy firstborn. We have blown up the bridges, barricaded the entrance in an effort to contain them, but the marching is ever louder, ever closer, ever more inescapable. As I listen to its resonant echo, I offer my last prayer to the Messiah. Trusting in his mercy, for my transgression is great indeed. In my pride, I neglected the universal laws and attempted to harness the language of the ancient machine spirits that had once served the owners of these vaults. And I succeeded. As an infant comprehends the essence of words through images, so did I comprehend the meaning of certain symbols of his firstborn. And out of those, I composed two or three forbidden litanies. My false orders sounded just like the voices of those who commanded the essence of this eternal fortress. I stole their knowledge. More than once in my complacency, I uttered the dead words with my lips of flesh, tarnishing them with the breaths of life. I did so to open the sealed halls and bridge the chasm so our scouts could cross them, and by that unforgivable blasphemy, I condemned us all to death. To atone for what I have done, I have composed a crypto lullaby out of the dead words, akin to the one that plunged the Nephilimex into mindless oblivion at the dawn of time. More stolen words. 
The Zenith's altar of machine worship has begun to sing it to the spirits of the machines in the fortress, but I know that before it concludes, the awakened wrath will have reached us. As I prepare for our last stand, I leave this confession as a warning to any who may dare walk in our footsteps. This is my final testament. Run. You know, he could have left that in a more accessible place. Not in the middle of all the sleeping Necron. That would have been ideal. But my guess is he tried. He tried. Damn. HB did more damage to his own party than the Necron did. That's kind of canon for HB. Oh! <laughs> he mastered the Apple iOS. The madman. I know. I seriously. Steve Jobs just went crazy plan. here. Yeah. Yeah, it is, green team. They did such a good job. Oh, what is this? This is a pillar? As you approach, the black metal of the ancient plate begins to move. Strange geometric shapes, symbols of some kind, appear on its surface. A host of smaller symbols glitter above them. They are no less mysterious and inscrutable. The Nevelimex Books of Wisdom. Knowledge received from the Omnissiah himself by his most beloved children. Knowledge that led to the most terrible betrayal of all. Two of his mechadendrites extend toward the stele with covetous trepidation. Two others coil tensely, as though about to attack it. Should we touch the surface? <laughs> All he says is run. He says, don't do anything. I, I mean, I mean, it was, I don't think we should because wasn't it a tech priest that caused all this mess? I mean, it's, we already killed them. There's no way they'll come back, right? Touch the surface carefully. At first, the metal feels not much different from plasteel to the touch. But as soon as you apply a little pressure, it becomes pliant and viscous like cold resin. Emerald green marks linger for a moment where you touch it before being swallowed by the black metal. Try to carve your initials. <laughs> HB was here. <laughs> It'll be fine. I know. All right. <clears throat> HB was here. Take that, you noob Necrons. You spend several minutes trying to carve HB was here into the ancient Zenus artifact with your knife but the metal instantly heals any damage done to it. The idea seems more pointless with each passing moment. Uh, take a swing at the slab. Take that, you slab. You might as well have stabbed a tank. The blade recoils from the monolith with an unpleasant grating sound, slips out of your hand and flies off. Wow, it's like kinetic sand. Well, that's, that's scary. Well, at least in the, we were just testing it, bunnies. You know, it's for science. That's kind of what bunnies do, you know what I'm saying? Oh, hello. Oh! Drukari weapon proficiency, two-handed las weapon. The weapon's attack projects additional rays each. Oh, that I have to see. And then we've got cloaking field emitter. When the wearer moves one of their combat tactics areas, the bonuses granted by the area are doubled. Oh, would be good for Kaja, but she's already got some stuff. Yeah, I was just checking. Always it's true. You got to check every once in a while. Maybe they've got something on the other side. We've got to check, you know? Although it seems like it's just a place to house Necro. Oh, there's another one. Great. The obsidian smoothness of the enormous slab begins to ripple and roil. A set of mysterious symbols appears on it as if impressed on its black surface by an invisible finger. They shimmer forebodingly, like a martyr gasping for air as life drains from them. Place your palm on a random symbol. What's this do? <laughs> as soon as your hand touches that random symbol, New sentences start appearing on the slab's surface. They dash around maddeningly fast, overlapping each other. They seem to be trying to burn alien and unsettling messages into your mind. Discerning these messages, let alone comprehending them, is beyond you. Your nostrils are now bleeding. The searing pain inside your head is like dead fingers digging their nails into your brain and trying to squeeze it out. You snatch your hand back in a hurry and look away. You feel nauseous. The sense of being invaded is gone, leaving only its horror behind, a horror you're not sure is your own, and not forced upon you by the will of a different mind. The inscriptions freeze and fade away. The symbol you touched is erased from the slab's surface. Lord Captain Bunnyman! Are you crazy? And also, are you uninjured? Sound of mind. Why am I even asking? You're the Bunnyman. The answer's been obvious for a while now. The Seneschal mutters the last sentence under his breath. Wrinkling his nose in disgust, Alfar asks, Do you go poking your fingers in every kind of Zenas filth you encounter, Bunny Ate Vata? Or have you just taken a liking to this? All right, God, all right. 
Just, I just touched it. It was for science. Would you like me to chop off the hand before something happens? It will be quick and almost painless. I'll choose a nice augment for it. No? God, God, all these haters. Give the vile slab a hearty kick. The slab withstands your anger stoically and continues its silent display of the same incomprehensible symbols. This calls for less barbaric methods of interaction. Wow. It's like, Keep don't go poking around in Zenith's filth. Don't do this. Don't. I'm the bunny trader, man. I'm not going to do whatever I want. I'm just that kind of guy. All right. Well, I guess we're done here. They didn't give us much. Rise oh, I guess we got. We did get uh, a lot dust. of experience. So that's true. And we did learn that we probably shouldn't be messing with Zenith's artifacts. Eh, that's fine. They. they I can't really believe that my party would have read that slab that said run. So I'm probably the only one that knows, right? HP is the bard. Best not to have him make any kind of physical checks. That's true. And after all, I can make lore checks all day. I can persuade the Necron not to attack us. I'm sure that'll work just fine. All right, we're going to back it up. So one of the things I do want to check, though, is how powerful this weapon is. We do have Iliot. She is capable of utilizing Drukhari weaponry. So we do have that new Drukhari weapon right oh she can't strength of 50 her strength is 35 oh i guess it's maybe a little heavier than she's used to okay that's fine well oh well <laughs> we shall um all right let's not do that that's cool great so we've been through naeus we've been through debris we might as well swing by this i don't know what this is a n something kt system off we go man Pretty sure it's like an Eldar equivalent to a heavy bolter. Yeah. Willpower sent a flamer squad to burn away the infestation. Holy gifts removed our holy gifts. I, you know what? We already finished up with that, that faction there anyway. Uh, man, he should have told us to run away earlier. We would have listened. I wonder what happens if I poke. <laughs> That's... Wow. That when you put it that way, it, it sounds so bad. Green team. I know, burning holy gifts. I would never do that. Not on purpose. Maybe by accident. But you know, it's for the greater good. We really don't need plus deal. And even if we extracted it here, is it going to do anything? That's so curious. We've got nothing. We do get experience, though. If we ever do get back home, they're going to probably give us more profit factor. The problem is the bard is leading the whole show in this game. It's literally a one hour adventure of your companions telling you what a bad idea everything you do is. And you do them anyway. I mean, that's true. But then they should learn I'm going to do it anyway, right? I mean, why tell me? I guess it's just for, you know, to be able to say that they did. That's probably what they're thinking. Most of the surface is covered in icy dunes with greenish highlights. At first, Officers aboard the vessel decide the unusual color of the ice is due to a quirk of the atmosphere. Later, it becomes evident that the source of the highlights is a group of monstrous pyramidal structures wreathed in an emerald fire. Examining them in detail with monoculars, it can be seen that one of the monoliths is damaged. A device on its wall emits an energy beam at a similar pyramid not far from itself. Examine the structures. The Von Valencia scouts approach the monoliths with as much care as possible, fearing the appearance of an enemy. A small servitor sent to gather data about the energy beam clearly demonstrated the destructive power of this Zenith technology. After carelessly making contact with the beam, it instantaneously broke apart into minuscule pieces. It's curious that the second pyramid is still intact, and that only matter at the source of the beam is being destroyed. Study the surviving monolith. The energy beam barely reflects off the dark metal of the pyramid. Occasionally, a scarcely visible wave runs across the surface of the monolith's walls, after which the material appears to become even smoother. It's as if one monolith is feeding the other, not destroying it. A few scouts decide to come closer in order to better examine the phenomenon. Oh, great. The soldiers of Von Valantius notice a fragment of a metallic ribcage melted right into the material of one of the walls like a bizarre bas-relief. Between the rows of ribs, a talisman of black stone shimmers with colored light after each wave of energy. The figure to which the talisman belongs shows no signs of life. After a quick debate, the officers decide to take the artifact on board. Oh, that's smart. Wow. The wearer's strength, toughness, and agility are decreased by minus 15. The wearer can use heroic acts. At 125 momentum instead of 175 and desperate measures earlier, the wearer is considered 
heretical adherent if they do not yet have it. Wow! So if you wear this, it's like a magical adapter that allows you to be heretical. Kind of like if we happen to wear a Halo device. No! <laughs> so that you can then wear heretical stuff. That's kind of cool. It's rare to find such an ominous phenomenon in lifeless ice. But you know what? I'm going to get rid of that as soon as possible. Let's... <laughs> Hey, uh, Heinrichs, would you like to aware of something? Uh, hello, add to cargo. Yes, there we go. Let's get rid of that. It's like we have parents. Seriously, seriously. I, I don't know what they're thinking. Thinking they could boss around the bunny man. All right, burning world. Already explored it. It's basically the last thing. It's this Necron ring. The greenish glow of the gigantic ring made from unknown materials flows through the windows of the captain's bridge. The void ship's instruments measure a whole spectrum of various emissions. Sometimes the dull green is darkened by clouds of space dust or bent by gravitational waves. The object most closely resembles a portal, albeit what's passing through it cannot be clearly defined. Observe the anomaly. Arcs of incandescent star gases bursting from the ring pierce the darkness of space, reflected by the surface of other celestial bodies in the system. At times, dark light waves bend the edges of the portal but they're quickly restored thanks to the enigmatic flowing metal. Then lashes of purple clouds dissected by threads of lightning appear in the center of the ring. An unseen force prevents them from reaching the other side of the portal as the blocks of black stone become covered in purple scarlet illumination. If the ring truly were a portal, it is not fit to serve as one any longer. Stellar heat and gravitational force forbid any vessel from passing through it. According to the ship's astropaths, the purple clouds are an even more dangerous phenomenon, indicating that the powers of the warp are eager to flow out of the portal into real space. As if to highlight its deadliness, with the next wave of dark light, the portal throws out the shattered remains of an unidentified void ship. Oh, let's send a team to examine. <laughs> Just stick your arm in it. What's the worst that could happen? Well, I'm not going to do it, but I will send a team. Uh, all right. Oh, oh, all right. That's what we're talking about. Additional equipment and a closer position allow the team to understand part of what is happening. The portal seems to resemble the gate devices used by the Eldari and Drukhari, only made of a different metal. The metallic shine of the ring alternates with the darkness of the large blocks of stone, reminiscent of the material that makes up the famous Cadian pylons. Ah, oh, we failed. The pilot of the exploring vessel does not successfully escape a powerful wave of incandescent gas. Part of the team perishes as a result of damage to their compartment, and the vessel itself barely returns to the Von Valancius flagship. What kind of test was that? Oh, wait, why are we using Pascal's Lore Zenus? He does not have the highest Lore Zenus. Oh. It's hard to believe a civilization capable of creating a device as powerful as this one could have undergone such a decline. Okay, well, that went as well as it probably could have. We definitely will scan, though. We definitely need more points. If there is a location that will appear, we're going to need at least five. So we're scanning out, and now it's just a matter of pushing on forward. There's only one more world to go to. The Medicaid teams from the lower decks reported the appearance of a dense purple fog that causes people to develop mutant deformities. Exterm Organized prayers to banish the fog. Led by the preachers of the Ecclesiarchy, the Voidsmen gathered for a mass prayer as the priests chanted holy verses to banish the corruption. Some of the more severely infested crew members failed to endure the celebration of the God Emperor's glory and perished before the vessel could leave the Immaterium. Oh, okay, well, that's not too bad. <laughs> and off we go to the Sanctum. Reports are coming in from the navigation chambers regarding the appearance of a warp storm along the Void Ship's course. The ship can go around the perilous region, but the ceremonious vox cast from the navigator are tinged with strange inflections, as if for some reason they desperately want to approach the raging warp elements. Okay, fine. Trust in them. Emergency aboard the void ship. A foul warp entity has pierced the thin veil of the Geller field and spawned unimaginable beasts of unnatural hues. All right, we'll deal with it. Well, tell you what. Let's change out... We know Abelard's tough. Let's go ahead and try out Iriliet. I mean, she's pretty good. We know Ulfar and Argenta are tough. I mean, we could actually swap them out and we'll try it just like so. This is going to be interesting because we don't have some super powerhouses here. I mean, we've got Kaja. She's basically a powerhouse. 
It may be dangerous and some of you may not survive, but that is a risk I'm willing to take. Yes. You know, I'm not exactly like Lord Farquaad, but there are some things, some minute similarities at times. All right, so here we go. We're ready to take on these unimaginable horrors. Oh, they're just regular horrors. That's fine. Let's get Kaja on the high ground. We'll get HB also on said high ground. We'll get Heinrichs to protect us. Uh, we'll get Irliet up here. We'll get Jai up there, and we'll get Pascal. Actually, Pascal can handle quite a lot. What do we start like this? There we go. Nice block here. We'll give it to uh, Jai in the back. If you insist, Lord Captain, we'll give actions to her, and we're just going to try and buff as around. many of the buffers as possible. So we're just chain buffing here. Don't get too cocky. Hold. Hold. HP. Now we'll buff Kasha. Give her room. Because we can give everyone extra turns. We basically have three extra turns, which is insane. And we're going to start with Pascal. And he's going to close in with the enemy because he does actually have power armor now. And we'll hold. Then we'll give him a buff. Isn't Willpower. Toughness. And we shall put him into the middle of a frontline field. We shall put ourselves in a damaging rear line field. And then try and move these horrors around. And bring this little guy on the opposite side. And then ping out. And try and pop the guy. There we go. So now he turns into two blue. And then we shall frighten them. As much as you can frighten horrors. And then we'll give a few points to Pascal. He'll go ahead and communion. Pray. Trail. And now we shall give him an actual turn. He'll start with a swing. Oh my god! How? Wow! Not bad for Pascal. 96 weapon skill. Serv Cold meant it when he said he's a bit of a beast. All right, so we'll go in and send a nice offhand downrange. Oh, that wasn't it. Joint analysis. We'll mark up close. And we'll call. Swing. That'll do. Then we'll do a little AoE downrange. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, we might kill our own. So we'll walk it up. Swing. Oh my god. How are we doing here? Wow. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, <laughs> Heck, when I said we didn't have powerhouses, I take that back. Where's the rest of them? Oh, they're like around the corner where he cannot see. Can we shoot at anybody else? We don't have line on them. All right. Well... We'll call this nice cover. We'll raid up and we will camp mark them. Hold. Well, there we go. Let's go ahead and give some turns to Irliet. Maybe she can get out there and, and do the deed. Air of authority. We'll inspire. We'll give her a turn. Irliet's on the move. She actually has a line now. Oh, there's a pink one. Now we can see two. Well, she can say, I would like to have an opening. And then mark that guy. And she should do extra damage on him and killing edge. Oh, did that say? Wait a minute. Earliot deals 1,567 <laughs> Oh. Respectable. Respect. <laughs> oh Shot. Pet. Oh, she actually missed on that one. All right. We'll ping here. It's just Death Whisper. It's 25%. Oh, wow. She can't hit worth a darn now. Let's see. What do we got? Shot close. 502. I know we do more damage the farther away we are. 
so we're doing less damage now. Hopefully we can tag these guys. Just a target. And uh, shot. Soul slips there we the go. Mail. All right. I think we're clear. Uh, Let's get out of here. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, that's cool. Off we go. I'm feeling pretty good about this right now. I don't think the Necrons stand a I don't even think the Greater Daemons of Chaos stand a chance. I, I think this is going to be okay. So now we shall proceed. We shall scan. Is this the very last system in the entire game? Because I'm not seeing any more. That's a little sus. That's a little sus. Maybe we should repair. Hall repair. And let's go. Here we go. Don't tell me this is the very last system. Don't tell me we finished the game already. That was super fast, if that's the case. Dead stars. Oh, stars. This is where they went? Okay, well, let's scan before we get into fights. Because remember we were looking for what happened to the star they took? Tomb. It seems that all color has died from this world. Gray masses of rocks give way only to brownish sand in the black voids of gorgeous. The team barely notices a strange detail amid the drab landscape, an extensive area where the land is too smooth. As they approach, this area turns out to be a lake of moving metal, in the center of which burn green arc discharges. On its shores lie the ruins of pyramidal constructs. Through monoculars, it's determined that the remains of the pyramids are slowly melting, creating flows that dump new metal into the lake. The smoothness of the lake is lightly rippled by currents trying to extinguish the flames in the center. Ooh. Trying to extinguish the flames in the center. I don't know why I would. Attack the pyramids. There's something wistful about the sight, an unhealing wound on the body of mysterious technology. If we do that, aren't we helping the pyramid? We can try. I don't... The vessel's cannoneers find the idea of smothering the green flame with the ship's waist rather dubious, but do not dare question the will of the Lord Bunnyman. The drop cargo dissolves to no effect, barely touching the discharges. Okay, uh, send an exploratory shuttle. Specially equipped servitors are the first to disembark on the shores of the metallic lake. To the explorer's surprise, they return unharmed with samples of the anomalous substance. The squad sets out to study the lake and the Zenith constructions. Acolytes of the Adeptus Mechanicus determine the metal contains the same substance from which the pyramids are made. The behavior of the metal particles indicate the constructs made from the metal are capable of regeneration just like living matter, albeit incomparably faster. However, the pyramids filling the lake by transmitting the metal through built-in portals cannot surmount the destructive force of the arc discharges in the lake center. Find out what happened to the pyramids. One of the pyramids lining the lake's shore is more damaged than the rest. Judging by its melted edges and the direction of the breaks, this damage is the thing that started the fires at the lake center. Analyze the movement of the metal. Endless flows of metal pour from the portals of every monolith. However, one of the flows is noticeably weaker than the rest. Looking closer, officers notice a small object blocking part of the portal. With the help of servitors, they are successful in removing it and bringing it to the Von Valancius shuttle. Holy holo field emitter. Oh, we've seen this. Now we've got two. Interesting. Attack the pyramids with the void ship weaponry. The Xenus structures do not give under the first salvos, and from the portals, flows of metal begin to fill the damaged parts. The lake slowly shrinks, but the rogue trader's team quickly understands it'll take several days of bombardment to fully destroy this place. Odd. Tomb world. I guess... Yeah, I don't know too much about that. Dying star. Let's fly right next to it. Judging by the orbital trajectories, this is the parent star of the system. If the Lumeno reader is right, back in the day it used to be huge and angry with a bite to it. Not this half-dead firefly. What happened to it? I cannot imagine what could have drained a deadly beast like that. The Lumeno reader swears that the rays of this star would have continued withering all life in the system for millions of years more. It was too young to have faded like this. It's like it was gnawed out. It was attacked, suddenly and fiercely. A hungry predator bit into its magnetic field and drank as much of its energy as it could. The predator was starving. 
and would have surely devoured the star whole had it more time. Katan Katandu? They're called star vampires. Why do they do that? Is that, as in, are they ship size or something? Are they huge? I would imagine they're like battleship size. Like, you can't be human sized and then eat a freaking star, right? Nomos, where did you get this information from? I do not know, but I can read the traces of what was committed here, as if I've seen it happen a hundred times. Uh, their, ma their ships, oh my god. Well, that's scary that Nomos can just have seen that before. But yes, their natural food is, oh my god. There's a lot of tombs here. A shuttle of Imperial make is detected among the rocky gorges of the planet, alongside two nearby Xena objects, monolithic structures embedded into the landscape. When scanned, the objects distort the signal, but no signs of enemy activity nor signals from the shuttle are found. Disembark and examine the shuttle and the Xena structures. HBFT von Valancius wishes to personally explore the enigmatic monoliths, the Von Valencia shuttle overcomes a turbulent zone with an alarming rumble, after which the connection to the void ship becomes tenuous. Despite a rough landing on rocky terrain, the flight ends successfully. Oh, we get to go. Okay. Um, I kind of want to bring Heinrichs because I feel like he will know. Eriliet's kind of our... She's our awareness person. Lord Zenis is Jai. So... I guess we don't need the awareness because Kasha has pretty good awareness. So between Alfar and Argenta, let's bring Alfar. Here we go. If you're in Necron space, yes, it's all tombs. They all went into hibernation like millions of years ago. So are the tomb worlds where all of the Necron are sleeping, waiting to awaken? Is that... That's what I'm getting Yeah, Like when dinos were a thing for us. Jeez. It is? Oh my god. So basically we're walking into a place that is completely filled oh, and densely packed with Necron. Hey, sir. Good to see you. Welcome. Sleeping Nec... Well, this one's not sleeping. I didn't walk softly. Uh, I didn't do anything. Okay, well, this is fine. <laughs> okay, that's cool. What are the? Are they just? Oh, they're just warriors. That guy. Oh, and an immortal. Oh, that's cool. Oh, it looks like a what used to be probably an Inquisition ship. I don't know why they're messing around with these guys. All right, well, we got Heinrichs. He should obviously answer for the whole entire Inquisition. Uh, we got all far. He's ready. We got Jai. We got HB ready to go. Excellent. They're still sleeping. Walk softly and carry a heavy bolter. Well, we did not bring Argenta for a reason. Jai. But all far's pretty strong now. <laughs> Me? If you insist, Lord Let's do the officer buff circle. Don't get too cocky. Air of authority. I can do that with the right incentive. And hold. Hold. HP. The Kaja. There we go. We should probably get. I guess we can give him two. You'll know when they wake, it's when the warp starts making sense. What? What? How, do, how does that? I don't even. I cannot even fathom what that is like, Tank. Okay, here we go. We've got rapid fire for six. We are now going to go berserk. And we shall send it downrange. Oh, 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 wildfire. And now we'll send a burst downrange at the immortal. Hopefully we can hit him. Ooh, I did not pay attention, did I? What does he have? 105% armor. Tesla carbine? Oh my god. Techno auricular targeting. Immunity of deathless. The creature's immunity to the cannot attack, fatigue, disturb, toxin, perplex, and horrors of the warp effect. Okay. Well, let's... Can we walk up to him and kick him? Maybe he can't take it. We'll flip it. They can reinforce real space into warp space. Oh, well, that's pleasant. They convert you to Necron energy, basically. I mean, you're, you lose your soul and consciousness in the process. But hey, you get a really cool set of armor. <laughs> well, at least you get a cool set of armor. That's what's most important. 
All right, hang tight for HP. Okay, so now we are going to probably buff all Farce Will's power. Even though buffing her own would be just ex acceptable. And we'll group up the warriors here. There we go. Very nice grouping there. Uh, we'll go ahead and maybe curse uh, that guy. I'm not Oops, I think I misclicked. Around. Yeah, I might have misclicked. I meant to do... Uh, we got to move, huh? All right. She's going. Warp curse. Fifty-seven instead of one hundred eight, and Me? zap him. If you insist, Lord Captain. Very nice. There we four hundred one. Let's try and move him away from all far, so he gets an attack of opportunity. And yeah. <laughs> oh, drop him to his knees. That's a maze balls. Well, we can say yellow. Oh, hang on. Let's give actually buff all far. Oh, that is glorious. That is glorious. We should give all for... Well, actually, we should make these guys Me? run somewhere. If you insist, Lord Get Captain. running. Oh, wait. What happens if we destroy the... Should, we should probably destroy these, right? You see these teleportation matrix beacons? That's probably good to destroy. <laughs> oh, that's great. All right, all far. Kadia was the gateway to the Eye of Terror. Kadia had the massive Black Spires enforced real space and made it a choke point. The Black Spires were... Oh, well, that's fantastic. Probably no one understood it until it was too late, I would imagine. All right, let's 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 start with a little bit of a swing. Yeah, get rid of the Immortal. There's two beacons here that I did not notice. So maybe we can give a little charge. That'll do. Oh, what's with this guy? Is he trying to heal us? Oh, he's having some trouble. Oh, he's repairing. Oh, screw that. See how the wolf well, we shall now rapid fire, wildfire, because it's going to cost three AP to burst with this bolt pistol, but it's gonna, every time we do it, it's going to increase our single shot damage by 50%. Oh my God. Oh boy yep that was on the opposite side can we did we destroy this yet oh we did destroy it excellent excellent we did destroy it okay hover imperium tech is also more or less oh no this just keeps getting better and better help his recoil stack up on necron warrior mark both the warriors as prey and then what I'm actually going to do, I don't know if I can trail the beacon. I cannot. So I'll, I guess I'll mark the one in the lead. Whoops. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I thought it was still uh, Pascal's turn. So let's go in for some AOE. We're going to do press the advantage. Just 50 stacks. That's going to be 25 on top of it. And she's going to send an AOE. Oh my God. Oh, that we probably should take care of the beacon. Uh, okay. Uh, shot. Yeah, we should probably take care of that beacon. Shot. Don't get too cocky. Oh, come on. Come on, lady. Come on, Jai. Heck yes. All right. It's over. We destroyed all the beacons as far as I'm aware. Whenever a tomb world is found, the Adeptus Mechanicus basically burn a straight line to it to try to loot it, which makes the Necron up more often. <laughs> Good job. Well, I'm sure it's with the best of interests. Obviously, their interest and curiosity never killed the Imperium Cat. Hang tight. And we're going to start closing that gap because Pascal, to serve Cold's chagrin, probably, he's got that beautiful beautiful power armor so he's all stacked and ready to go and he's prize. suited up for a little more melee this time Tell me, and it is done. give him the joy all right we're gonna inspire Don't the heck out of pascal and we'll go ahead and send a little bit of a burst i can do that with the right incentive remember the name we're working it and actually can everyone see these guys we'll just do orchestrated what firestorm Everyone who can send a burst will. Well, that that was good. 
All right. Well, we can actually close. Get on up. Keep stacking. We will raid. We will grab increases damage output and hold. She better move. We'll take 20% damage, but we get the cooldown reset on her master tactician stuff. We will buff. Who if not me? Very true. Belisarius call is basically the John Hammond. Wait, what? Who's John Hammond? Are we talking about like um from Top Gear? I'll make it happen. This a taste of Hang out with come. Stupor. We'll give temporary wounds to Pascal with strong point. We will give damage to Pascal. Jura oh, Jurassic Park. Now we just need an ad mech. Any dun, 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 dun. Let's do it. We're down. All right. So I forgot about this, bunnies. I forgot about this this whole time. So I'm wearing a ring. It will give the entire party momentum by 30. It will make them all... All of their dots gone. And it will give them wounds and armor till end of combat. Our persuasion is like 250. So... <laughs> Right now, Pascal has 103% armor. If we click this. I'll make it happen. Oh, that's a lot. That's a lot. Wow. All right. That's pretty good. I forgot about that. That's still end of combat. <laughs> Why haven't I used that before? Okay. Well, let's give Pascal a little love. My perfect moment. More dots. Hammond is the old dude who built. Oh, gotcha. Well, uh, we shall send an offhand blast. <laughs> 645. Well, I forgot to close the distance, unfortunately, so we're just going to have to shoot instead. I was hoping to swing our Omniscient Axe. Oh, what? Kneel before Pascal. So I've been sleeping on Pascal this whole time. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> oh my God. What the heck just happened? That was like AOE's nonstop for 700 damage. <laughs> I fully realize that we as a chat are filling a knowledge gap you might have, as I would think nobody is going to want to watch a movie about dinosaurs that would eat them in a heartbeat. Well, I am fine with you filling my knowledge gap. I have a lot of them, if you haven't guessed, yeah? Right? Admech doing Admech. Seriously, that's crazy, Nahorush. Na Nahoshru. Uh, Pascal can be pretty... I, I did not know. This whole time, Surf Cold's been like, HB, he's actually really good at melee. He's actually a pretty good damage dealer. He can debuff like crazy, but he can do stuff. And HB's like, oh yeah, no. I mean, I totally believe Surf. I just never tried it. It's the fifth act of the game. <laughs> it's the fifth act of the game. What the? He's got power armor now. Wait, how much? He's got 95%. I mean, this guy could tank for us. Do we even need tanks right now? I don't know. I mean, you got to think too. Look at this thing. This is crazy. Whenever the wearer's allies under the effect of joint analysis, allowing them to do more damage based off his intelligence, whenever they hit a target and remove an exploit, he gets plus five perception. That's until end of combat. And a lot of other things scale off his perception. So he's just, he's just, what the hell? Okay, so let's take a look at what is on this planet. We have, oh, heavy void suit. The wearer suffers negative 30% less damage from area and burst attacks, plus 20% armor against, I mean, dear God, what is, and what is this? Bolter, what, they shall weep. I'm weeping with joy right now. Look at this, 41, okay, hang on, hang on. What is this? Fury incarnate. Whenever the wearer is under the effect of reckless rush, which is, they do every single turn, 
all wearer's attacks gain plus 50% crit hit <laughs> The wearer gains 50% crit hit damage. All attacks against the wearer gain 50... Oh, it will, the enemy will be dead. They're not even going to be able to shoot at the wearer. Does that matter? Oh my god. Why, I can't even turn these in. How? Okay, hang on. Hang on. There's got to be like an after act Keep five where you can turn stuff into you. vendors or something. The broken body has been smashed into the ground with such force there are cracks radiating radiating out from under it. You can still recognize the Von Valencia's coat of arms in the half abraded emblem on the side of the shuttle. Parts of the hull and equipment look as if something vaporized the ship's components one layer after another. We've got a secret body to loot. We've got the Gloom Rifle. Oh my god. 42 to 65. Damage from overpenetration is always equal to 100%. Wow. Deals an additional plus three times the target's deflection damage. Oh, please don't hit HP. He's got like 27. And inevitable demise. The wearer's critical hit deals double damage. What kind of end boss is there? Oh my god. What are they gearing us up I for? Always keep my options open. One and eight. Drawing upon your patchy knowledge of the Zenus, you guessed that these monoliths were once part of a mighty transport ship capable of transforming into ground-based structures. So it just kind of... Transformers. Let us know, is that it? Wow, that's... Wow, that's... That's both terrifying and amazing at the same time. Let's get back to the ship, get these things equipped. I have to be patient. Yeah, you gotta be patient. You do. Uh, I, I appreciate your patience. It's like eight things that say Argenta go. I mean, there's so there's too many things. If she could wear all the amulets, she'd be like a rapper. She'd have so much bling on and just deal endless Holy Emperor's wrath within one second across the entire Imperium of Man. Let's go ahead and level up first, though. Yeah, like Awaken Necrons give Space Marines trouble. Oh, well, not Argenta. She's a sister of battle beyond the sisters. Ally coordination. All allies have 25% dodge against attacks made by allies, deal less damage to allies, and have less of a chance to score critical hits against allies. I kind of feel like I need that. Let's go in here. <laughs> we kind of need that one. Uh, don't ask why, but I'm just going to say that normally we just kind of do. So we'll... <laughs> Yay, no friend, less friendly fire, less friendly fire. What do we got? Fires of the forge, persistence of the forge. Uh, we can get more movement points after every successful melee attack grants Pascal more movement points. Oh, that's cool. But you know what? There was one I wanted, which just gives him more tech use. I, I think I'll, I'll just grab it cause. And then he's got his logic, his tech use, that's all capped out. So we might as well push his awareness Oh, we'll, we'll push his Medicaid. No one really has Medicaid higher than him at the moment, yeah. We've got Kaja. Uh, she's done, like, almost all the Navigator powers. We might as well literally get them all. And then Awareness, Lore Warp. I mean... Toss it into... Jeez Louise. I guess... I don't know, Carouse? Or something? Or I guess... Sure. <laughs> Is, is there anything else that she can really dump it into? We've got Jai. Uh, she has... Gotta collect all the powers like you collect all the Pokemon. It's true. There's actually some Navigator powers that get stronger than more Navigator powers that you have. That's the main reason why I'm collecting them all. Comfort and Conformity. I like this one. Whenever an ally grants a Master Attack, stacks of tactical advantage, the ally also heals for every stack granted. That's crazy, but she's not really the buffer. She kind of just keeps popping off shots, so... Uh, we have Stand Resolute Suppressive Fire. That one's cool. All enemies hit by her have a 10% higher chance of hitting cover when shooting at the Master Tactician's allies behind cover. I like that one. And whenever she reloads, all allies within a 3-cell radius also reload. Those are all really cool. I'll just make us more survivable. Lore Imperium maxed out. And then she's kind of our Commerce Lady. So we'll get that going. We've got our Heinrichs guy who didn't even get to do anything last time. He's got all his Psy ratings. That's great. Second Sight allows him to shoot it out even farther. That's pretty good. Athletics, Lorzenus. I mean, I guess Carouse at that point, since he's kind of on the front line quite a lot. We'll hold. Uh, we've got Alfar. <laughs> can we make Alfar stronger? Yes. Yes, we can. 
We've got Wounded Beast. Every injury increases the Death World character's agility and willpower by five. I mean, those are... Every trauma counts as three injuries. I, I don't know. We've got Blood Haze. As long as he's killed at least one enemy with a melee attack this round, the Arch Militant gains 10 plus agility percentage bonus to dodge. I, it really doesn't have that much. Devastating attack. Arms... Ma we said to stay away from Arms Master. Deals... Well, no. For every stack of uh, versatility, get more armor? Yes. Yes. Sure. Athletics and I guess Carouse. And then we got three more. We've got Irliet, who's all about that agility and perception. Uh, she's got her... I like I like Ambush. If, if they're not in line of sight, she gets a whole bunch of hit chance, crit, and all that, but keep your distance that strength bonus lone killer if she's on her own which she is quite often and i like hmm not that she needs it she's not really getting shot at either she's got a cape that makes her the lowest priority target on the field so i'm kind of thinking she'll reduce the enemy's armor and dodge when she hits them and then we've got her Awareness and her Lore Zenus. Argenta. She gets stronger. Okay. I don't know how that's possible. No, no heresy. Against Zenus or Daemonic creatures, she gets 10% extra crit hit chance and armor. That's really good. Stronger together. She gives her bonuses to everybody else, which is awesome. Breaking attack. Devastating attack reduces armor and toughness. Contempt for the weak. She's got focal point. That's to a priority target. Any ranged area and burst attack reduces enemy weapon skill by negative 10. I mean, a lot of the Necron, not so much. I'm thinking she adds penalties. Oh, that's if she forces them to. I'm just going to go with the um, the Blood Haze. She'll get bonus to dodge. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> we'll go stronger together. There we go. And then Awareness, Demolition, and... I guess Medicaid. Just, cause, just because. And last but not least, we've got Abelard. I mean, he's already ridiculously tanky. Ready to serve Fellowship, but he doesn't have that much. Covering Bulwark. Full cover for their allies. Wow. Punish the impudent. Taunting opportunity. Unflinching. Whenever an attack made by an ally hits the vanguard... Well, we already made it so it's less chance of that happening. And we'll gain more resolve with Unyielding Beacon. Carouse, Lore. We'll gain Athletics. Let's go. Okay, perfect. I should have done... No, no, we already maxed out coercion. So we've already visited all of these. So let's do a quick save. We'll actually look at the items. I totally forgot because we picked up some new items, yeah? Including that necklace, which is insane. I don't know if I necessarily want to give it to Argenta because currently, ever since we got the never miss with bolter single shots, that just is amazing. Whereas critical hits deal double damage. So that's not something that he can wear. That is... Ooh... We can probably stand to have less rate of fire on Argenta. She's got a lot. She can shoot for like 20 times. So if we do that, she gets a lot of critical hits. Oh my god. Wow. Her sleeves came down. That's amazing. And then where Reckless Rush. Sure. Yes. I mean, he's already gone Berserk. We might as well make him go more Berserk. We've got Cloaking Field Emitter, the Ancient Zena Mechanism, and the Double Holo Field Emitter. That's it. Okay, great. We are all set. We're stacked. I mean, not that we weren't before. So quick save again. And we're heading in. The Sanctum of Tafitas. I, I don't know. We're supposed to go to a world called Epitaph, right? If we go over here, go to Janus, we'll go in and pick up our grenades. And now let's head in. Dead Star. Can we go straight to it without triggering anything? Those things! I've never seen anything like them before. But the panel of the ship's tech priest, Lumina Readers, say that they're star corpses. Not just corpses. 
They call them stellicide victims. Oh no, Argento will only fire 18 times instead of 20 during her 700 turns where she wipes out all the enemies. It's true. It's true. She's pretty fast. She's She was basically Flash's illegitimate daughter. What did the Lumena readers mean? Who knows with those star sages? Apparently when a star dies a natural death, it's different. These look like they were murdered and plundered. All energy was siphoned. Like when a spider sucks the innards out of a fly. And witnessing these husks, if you don't mind me saying, scared the Lamena readers so much that they wet their metal trousers. Oh my god. I didn't know they had metal trousers. That's stylish. Don't you think we're observing far too many stars here? I agree, Lord Captain Bunnyman. The stellar trajectories also suggest that most of these stars didn't used to be here. Someone was hoarding them in this system and I wouldn't like to have been here at that time. The gravitational currents would have been pure chaos. Who could have pulled off something like that? Was it Drukhari? Dragging stars around like they're their property is quite in character for the damn Zenus. I mean, as curious as all of this may be, we still have a job to do. I mean, did we just go from each one? Nope, we gotta get in now. What do we have going on? Lord Cap'n, a Zenus squadron is on an intercept course. It's the same abominations as before. All decks prepare for battle. Orders received, Lord Captain Bunnyman. Glory to House Von Valancius. Wait, the same ones as before. Are we talking about the ones that came through the gate when we fought against the Inquisition? Or are we talking about the sickle-like ships, which are the Necron ships? Maybe both? This seems like the final battle, but I don't know if this is Epitaph. You know what I mean? The Necron also do stellar engineering. Oh, I would imagine. We've got four. They are Necron. Shroud class light cruise. Oh my god, this looks Romulan or something. What is this? Necron Lords. Okay, so he's in here. Double lightning arc. Medium range. 192 damage dorsal lance weapons. That's terrifying. So they've got the double lightning arc. These guys have single lightning arc on the frigates. Okay, well... <laughs> That's a lot. That's scary. Well, um, maybe we should go ultimate. Is it that time already? We'll tuck up. We can definitely make a jump. Get us in a little closer. That way we're still in the acceleration phase. And we can ping out on the smaller ones. Maybe we can wipe them out. We'll go in and target this one here. You'd launch torps really quickly before we get too close so that they have space to react. Uh, hang tight, hang tight. We've got our... Oh, we're just short. We can tuck up a little more. Get in a range. Shot. Main. Lance. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll pop off a shot to the left. We're targeting the right side. Uh, we're not in range for shield pulse. We're actually going to mark the cruiser. Weakness on the right. There we go. Gosh, if we come out here, this is tough. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to push forward. I'm going to boarding party close range. It'll start burning or death. We'll go ahead and send out the port macros. That's just done. Oh, no, forgot about that. Okay, so now expeditious reload. And we'll be able to send the dorsal lance. We can actually shift in or away. Oh, gosh darn it. Okay, well... Let's pull away, gain some distance. I did not play that well. And we can actually reinforce the left. And hold, here we go. Here they come. We did not wipe it out. Forgot about the reanimation. That's 192 potential. Time to unleash a counter attack. Come on, come on. At least it's gonna draw some 
fire first. He, oh, he did not go for a killing blow. He shot into the reinforced side. We still have full hull. We, we're at 198 out of 210. That's going to the rear, though. Now our shields are down to... Oh, that went into the side as well. 122 on the reinforced side. Excellent. He's got double lightning arcs. It, capable of 192. 104. Into the reinforced side. Excellent. Wow, we got lucky. Well, this has the commander on it, but he's just going to change his position. Let's come it around and work on the, uh, the weakened cruiser. Hold. Instant control. Instant control. Good hit. Huge hit. Port guns into the damage side. There we go. Reanimation. Again. Burn him out. We'll go in and flip the small one. He's out. We're going to shield. Oh, do we? Will shield pulse do anything to this? I don't know if it will. Well, let's go ahead and new heading to turn. We're coming around the backside. Cool. That's all in this side there. We have enough of a wide arc. We might be able to... Oh, no. Too much. Too much. Engage the engines. Oh, boy. Okay, well, that's on cooldown. That's not... Let's go in and restart the shields. And then we'll boarding party on the cruiser and hold. Hang tight. Wide arc. Oh, focus fire, buddy. Focus fire. Interesting that there's this glowing thing right here. I don't know what this does. That's left over from the death of that uh, destruction of the previous ship. Oh, that's the damage side. Double arcs coming in. Oh, we might not survive. 79. Oh, if he comes around, he's burning. He's burning from boarding party. Can he flip? Can he, he cannot flip. Oh my gosh. Wow, that is close. Okay. Uh. Wow. Mark up, mark up. We need to finish targets, but at the same time, we have the main leader here. This is on the opposite. Torps. Torps. Torps out. out. Okay, think, think, think. This does put us in. That's on the port. We do have expeditious reload potentially. So. We are going. Oh, we don't have our augury yet. We can do it. We can do it. Focused effort. On Master of Etherics. Arc augury. Extend range. Shot. Hopefully to kill. Every shot count. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. One gun off the field. Okay. Um, frontal cone. Dorsal. We'll take the shot first. Just so that we've got expeditious reload. The force of a supernova. We'd have to turn pretty hard to make it happen. I don't think we're going to be able to ram. We can't get our, our prow to him. Let's go in and burn him out. Boarding party on the Necron Lord. This, that's the starboard. That's to ram. We'll come it around. We could jump out. Okay, all the way. Expeditious reload. Port guns active. Shot. Dorsal lance active. Shot. Reanimation protocol. Oh, no. He's still active. He's still active. Okay. Void Sunder. Are we in range? We are in range. Main lance. Okay. Uh, are we going to live through this? If we get right up to him, it's possible he's not going to be able to get right to us. So we're going to jump to create distance. We're going to reinforce the rear. He gets one lightning arc. This guy gets two. Hold. Hold. Yeah, we, our hull is compromised. Okay, 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 okay. Look at your available targets. Oh, yes, that's what we're talking about. Sword pulls away to bait. He's kiting him. 
He's kiting him. Living metal. And he's he's pushing away. Perfect. Okay, we can do this. We can do this. Good job. Good job. Wow. And connect. Come on, reanimate. The Necron Lord. Did the Necron Lord switch? Necron Lord moved. He moved. Shot. Every shot counts. Necron Lord's in here. <laughs> Spin him. And that should move the Necron Lord back. No, no, he's not. He did not. Wow. Swing line? No. Boarding party first. Burn him. Flip it. Engage the engines. And we are out of range. That's not gonna help. Reinforce the four. Hold. All right, what do we got? Come on, come on. Come on, buddy. You can't resist. He's wounded. Look at him. Look at him. He's wounded. Oh, this is excellent. His weak side, we, we're not as maneuverable right now, but. If we come in like this, there's the front. Yes, yes. Oh, <laughs> Take that nerd. All right, shift. Mainland, shot. Reanimate. Dorsal guns, Fire shot. Flip him. <laughs> Torpedo out. Change the weak point. Hold. Oh, I forgot boarding party. That's okay. It's okay. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay, we've got this. We've got this. Instant control. Torpedoes. Proximity detonation. Shot. And then we'll follow that in. Yeah, we got this. We got this. Main lands. With the force of a supernova. And yes. <laughs> All right. On to the next one. Look at that. That's crazy. Oh my gosh. Wow, that was kind of close. That was that was maybe a little too close. Okay, so first hull repair. Let's take a quick look. What do we got here? Upgrade posts. Yeah, we're we're looking good. Master of maneuvers. Poor guy got pulled out of there. Oh, we didn't even have him there. Oh, that's fantastic. Apparently that would have helped. <laughs> when he got pulled in for his companion quest, he got yanked out of the master of maneuvers post. Well, that's whoops. That's that was not good. Well, glad that we survived. Glad we survived. Okay, let's see what's left. What's on this tomb world here? Oh, that looks different. Is that an asteroid? Lord Captain Bunnyman, we've spotted a planetoid with an unidentified Xena structure. Something tells me this is the place we've been looking for. Auger clerics detect a field of void mines on our trajectory toward the planetoid. What do we even see on the planetoid? There's practically nothing. The auger clerics say the magnetic radiation blinds the machine spirits. We see some kind of wicked pyramid and we're picking up a few encrypted Vox transmissions. Can you tell me more about these mines? Good mines, I know from experience, encased in ceramite under a coat of camellia line. Their cogna detonators are inhabited by the most malicious and cunning machine spirits you've ever seen. Far too good for pirates, and given that they've been planted for seven cubic kilometers, I reason that these are gifts from the Lord Inquisitor's own stores. Nahashru, thank you so much for the follow and welcome to the Bunny League. It's very good to have you with us, man. High five. Yeah. Hey, welcome back, Death. Welcome back. We are... I think we're as far as we can go. I don't, there's probably more, but, but I don't know. So we'll see ya. We will break through the mines, transmit the deactivation. Oh, that's right. Good thing we read that. Oh my God. Transmit the deactivation code that we found in the outpost of the Lord Inquisitor's men. Beginning transmission. Receiving return signal. 
5% of mines report a transition to sleep mode, receiving coordinates of an area designated as main landing site. We have a safe channel of approach toward epitaph and coordinates for landing. Oh, this is epitaph? Okay. This might be the end of the game. <laughs> we got codes for traversing the minefields. Are there any traces of Kalkazar? There's plenty. We're picking up the remaining Vox Echoes of conversation, standard signals belonging to Augur observation systems, the gas thermal trails of shuttles preparing to land. You know, Lord Captain Bunnyman. It seems to me that this place is about to fall apart. Augurs detect a multitude of signs pointing to structural damage in the tomb located on the planetoid and they are very fresh. Commence preparation for landing. I will lead it personally. Are you certain, Lord Captain Bunnyman? I beg your pardon for such audacity, but this old void wolf's gut tells him that this tomb is very likely to become ours. I have this bad feeling as if... Forgive me, your lordship, Bunnyman. I've completely lost my senses, giving out advice like that. The ad, I'm ready to face whatever lies in wait. We make landing. Be careful, your lordship, Bunnyman. We'll wait as long as it takes for your retrieval signal, even if every Xena fleet in the world appears to swat us from orbit. Oh, God. 5% less mine. That's right, 5%, 5%, 5%. It's, it's, it's a little bit of a better day when there's 5% less of the best mines that the Inquisition can muster in front of us, right? Bring firepower. All right, we'll bring firepower this time. All the firepower. Okay, then we won't even bring a tank. At this point, Pascal's kind of our tank. How about that? So every single person we will bring will be firepower. That basically means... But I kind of want to bring Heinrichs. Oh my god, what is happening? Oh, Nomos. Oh, I forgot about Nomos. Every person on the bridge freezes in astonishment, watching the remarkable procession approach your throne. Officers and enforcers... <laughs> you know how... You know how in James Bond films, they usually have the main villain sitting there petting a white kitten that has a grouchy face? And then they wheel their chair around, they spin it, and they're like, yes, Mr. Bond. Ah, yes. And they look super distinguished. I mean, you know, as far as villains can look. Now, how distinguished do we have to be to forget that we should probably sit forwards in our chair? <laughs> I am not intimidating at all. This thing's going to flip and they're just going to see Bunny Man's butt. I don't know if this is going to... Because you have to kill each Necron twice. That's true. That's true. Every person on the bridge freezes in astonishment, watching the remarkable procession approach your throne. Officers and enforcers are glancing at you questioningly because the bunny man is sitting in his throne backwards, but they do not interfere until they're ordered to. We, we have, have come, come to speak, speak with you, HB. You gave us food for consideration by revealing the mystery of our origin. From then to now, we observed, calculated, sensed, and we discovered that a great change is coming, a trial. We see the potential for a great disaster. It is already ripening. The wave could crash down upon the Coronis Expanse, and perhaps extend beyond it. We are headed for suffering and death. You are the one who can prevent the disaster, and we want to help you. We do. Let us help. Nomos are not human, but we have learned to see people as more than shells. We want to save them. Protect them. Wait a minute. What do you even wish to do? Wait until the unknown threat appears before you. Then face it. We do not know where or when it will happen. We do not know what we will face. But we know that we want to be there with you. There is something we require to do to it. Oh, to do it. Nomos are tethered to the shell of the ship. We can only follow you outside by using servitors as our shell. But they are lacking. Only a modicum of us can enter such a primitive vessel, and our power is likewise limited. Is he asking to be put into Amarnat that controls Eskados? Is that what he's asking for? Oh, he's asking to be Magus. Okay. We need a vessel, a body, but very few things can house us. That is why we have come to ask you. Magos Asclepius has offered his shell to us. It might do. Indeed I have. I cannot think of a prouder end to my pilgrimage than the liturgy of synchronization with the Great Spirit. I will become a vessel for the Omnisaya's favored child. 
and step beyond the confines of wretched living existence and into the halls of the eternal machine song. Yeah, we're gonna have an Yep, yep. I what is this coming threat? Nomos cannot say. Something changed after you helped us remember our birth on Epitaph. See, we're here at Epitaph. We now sense the liberation of something vast, which is actually a mere fraction of something limitless. It is seeping through a bridge, its shoulders pushing against the walls of its prison that are about to give. But what it is, we do not know. We must say, it frightens us to think about this unknown something that is trying to break free. It is so vast, too vast to measure or explain. But we now know that living souls are the same. They are always larger than they seem, and no capacity can calculate their potential. This makes us believe that we, Nomos, and you, Bunny Man, can step beyond the limit of calculation. There, we will face the unleashing horror without faltering. You would sacrifice yourself, Asclepius. I desire it more than anything. We asked him many times, because we did not want to hurt him. Nomos would not have proposed it if the human was against it. I have heard you and made my decision. We await your word, master of the ship. Please, give us freedom. We will stand with you in the hour of great need. Bunnies, do you... <laughs> You know what this reminds me of? It's like those move Frida, <laughs> Braveheart time, pain and blue, let's go. This reminds me of those like, uh, we must return to our master. We must return to the source. And then either something horrible happens or, oh God, you know, I can't let you do that day. Well, I, I mean, I did kind of touch every single Necron pillar they let me. So we might as well just unleash Nomos on the world. That only seems fair. You can take Asclepius' body. No one really liked that guy anyway, and he kind of came in by himself. He didn't even ask to board the ship, and I'm sitting backwards in my throne, so you might as well. Oh, there he oh, there goes. I saw green. He knows the Skatos. It's over. Praise the Omnissiah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Praise the Omnissiah. I kneel before his favored child and humbly offer this shell as a gift. May I become a temple to the machine and the vessel for its great spirit. How interesting. We feel restricted, but not as much as inside servitors. Some work must be done on the new shell. Then it will be ready for journeys to the outside. I'll leave you for now, HB. But in an hour when you stand before the great trial, we will return and stand with you side by side okay i don't know what he means by i need to modify this shell but that does not sound very good oh wow everyone's looking at me that's scary didn't anyone ever teach you not to touch weirdly glowing pillars in spooky rundown places and there goes 80 server <laughs> consider you grew numos to have the same conviction they won't betray okay thank god wow what's going on here your lordship bunny man the shuttle is ready for landing we have the exact coordinates for a secure landing site. Will you authorize the start of the expedition? I still need to say my goodbyes. Oh, my, oh God. As your Lordship Bunnyman commands, we are standing by. Well, at least they put everyone there in one place so I don't have to go running around. Yep, they did. Can I at least talk to the guy who sells me stuff? Uh, you're the most important person on this ship. You gave me loot. Oh, you don't even want to say something? Wow, cool. Cool, all right, there we go. Well, I guess I'll talk to, uh, we'll talk to Pascal. Or Amarnat. I don't even know anymore. The tech priest is checking his gear, whispering prayers to the Omnissiah. He looks up at you and speaks matter-of-factly. The tactical equipment audit is 97% complete. No critical failures detected. The Omnissiah shows favor. You don't seem too worried about the coming landing. The Vox makes a rustling noise that sounds like a chuckle. <laughs> a mission of reconnaissance is a blessed and desirable one for an explorator. The data soul of the one who explores, analyzes, and charts overflows with the joy of servitude. A scowl lowers his eyes. I would be honored. 
to disembark with you. You took good care of my ship and equipment. The dynasty will not forget it. Where the iron flowers of the Onisaya bloom, there must also be as passionate gardeners. Thank you for honoring this unit by letting it serve the formidable spirit of the Von Valencia's dynasty's flagship and your lordship. When the campaign comes to an end, will you stay on duty or return to your fellow tech priests? It has been an honor to work with you, but the time of servitude for this unit has come to an end. Servitude is the way of the one who has questions, and I now have the answers. I will gather my flock and give them answers, not as a servant, but as a ruler and mentor. May we have good fortune. There is no such thing as good fortune. May the statistical probability be predictably positive. Wow, this is the end then. All right, Heinrichs. Heinrichs von Kalox nods to you. Our journey together approaches its end. One last push, and the secrets of the Expanse and Kalkazar will be laid to rest. I can't wait. I'm tired of the shroud of secrecy that has hidden the truth, even from me. Well, you'll meet your mentor again down there. And I have questions for him. I want to know why I was left in the dark about everything that was happening in the shadows of the Expanse. Why all the Acolytes died on the way here. Well, almost all of the Lord Inquisitor's Acolytes. Why... Heinrichs exhales sharply and stiffens. I want to hear what he has to say. And then make my judgment. When all this is over, what will you do? Heinrichs presses his lips together and shakes his head. I feel uneasy even thinking about it. But if Lord Inquisitor Xavier Kalkazar falls today, Heinrichs locks eyes with you. Someone has to take the rosette of the Order Zenus. At the very least, until the Inquisition Enclave determines who will be a worthy successor to Xavier. Hey, it's actually good to see you. I managed to get a bit further in BT, but no idea why someone's call missions are easy. Hey, there's a fluctuation there. High five. That's awesome. You're making some progress, man. That's really good to hear. If you're joining us right now, we're, we're currently about to go into, I think, what may be the last fight of the game. Oh, uh, this ended a lot faster than I thought. Epitaph awaits. Steal your heart, Heinrichs. The interrogator dips his head. Lead on, bunny man. Von Valatius. Actually, you know, we did get that new armor. Can he wear it? Even if it's not better for him, I kind of want him to. Yellow. Oh, we cannot. Oh, wow, we can't. Okay, well, we have it. If he if he wants it, we've got Lady Argenta. It got a lot easier when I switched some mix up. Heck yes, Panther and Griffin. I mean, both pretty good. Argenta rolls her shoulders impatiently. When is the battle, rogue trader? This idleness is torture. We must destroy our enemies in this den of dark forces, and we will do so by his will and in his name. Make the sign of the Aquila. Together till the end, sister. In his name and for Terra's light. In his name and for Terra's light, echoes the voice of the Sister of Battle. Have you had time to think about the future? What you'll do should we prevail in this pivotal battle? I long to set out on a journey of my own. Forgive me for saying this, bunny trainer, but I have followed you long enough. There are too many restraints, too many distractions. And meanwhile, thousands, millions of heretics out there have yet to be found and destroyed. I'm the only sister of battle the Coronus Expanse has, which means I have much work to do, all within one turn and one second of real time. Dear God, she's really dedicated. We're almost out of time. Prepare yourself, Argenta. I am prepared, now and always. Oh my God. So how's the old rogue trading? Yeah, absolutely. This game is awesome. I'm just kind of sad that it seems like it's ending yeah. Sounds like she went the zealot route. What's that? <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Hey, Kasha, what's up? HBFT. The faint smile and conscious face makes you momentarily forget about the impending battle. We have traveled a long road together. Let us finish it together as well. I am honored to have you among my companions, Lady Kasha. Kasha smiles demurely and curtsies in response. I'm honored to be your companion, HBFT von Valencius. This is probably not the future you dreamt of, but if all this ends in victory for us, what do you intend to do next? I've been running for too long. Hiding behind others while my home, my family, were being torn apart by hatred and strife. And what could a young, inexperienced girl do to those who were so desperate to either destroy me or bend me to their will? Kaja smiles bitterly. The throne of the Novator of House Ocelia will no longer sit empty. But my only regret 
as I shall have to leave your ship in the darkness between the stars I've come to love so much. I hope you will visit me, HB. Steal yourself, Lady Kasha. The hour of battle is at hand. My heart is fluttering, Lord Captain Bunnyman. But not because of fear or doubt. I am ready to face what is coming. Ever notice when Kasha mentions Arjena has three colors, gold, silver, and crimson? Yeah, yeah. Crimson's awesome. <laughs> loot the saint armor sounds surprisingly much like beating up a pope. Yep, we've only helped you loot a saint. Yep, that's true, that's true. We did. Absolutely. Abelard looks at you with a tired smile. He cannot resist giving you his characteristic appraising glance. Well, Lord Captain, my service to you began under the most remarkable circumstances. I should hardly be surprised that you've delivered us into circumstances more unexpected and surprising than ever before. Of one thing I am certain, the Von Valancius dynasty will cover itself in glory today. Abelard, no matter what happened, you were always at my side. A Seneschal's place is at the bunny trader's side. As you have learned, others can betray and abandon you in your darkest hour. If the Lord Captain cannot count on his Seneschal, there is no one he can count on. That is not a fate that I wish for you, so I am doing my duty. You have a highly organized mind, so you must have already considered what you're going to do once the campaign of ours comes to an end. Somewhat embarrassed, Abelard tucks his thumbs into his belt. I, now that I have your blessing, it's about time I took care of my family. The Vizarian clan has gone without its patriarch for too long. I should make time for my descendants before some noble upstart tries to chew them up again. Are you ready to follow me all the way? As always, Lord Captain Bunnyman, I would follow you into fire and back. God Emperor be my witness, I have had the honor of serving under two rogue trader bunny traders and survived one, so there would be no shame in going down alongside the other, if it comes to that, naturally. Abelard's chuckle sounds slightly sharper than usual. Get ready, Abelard. We have quite an ordeal ahead of us. We have been through worse. The old Seneschal grins cheekily, and for a split second looks younger, by a good hundred years. He then bows his gray head. I serve House von Valancius, Lord Captain Bunnyman. I will say this. If we win this, we go back to the Expanse. First thing we hear about is the Cult of the Final Dawn making trouble. I will go bald, cause tear my hair out in frustration. <laughs> there are allegories for what she can become. Would you mind spoilers? Uh, maybe, how about this? How about after, after we finish? Cause I feel like it's gonna be soon. <laughs> Thank you, Dreamy. Erliot folds her arms in a welcoming gesture and greets you with a meaningful nod. Each journey has a beginning and an end, Ellen Tuck. Here and now, our journey leads into the maw of a merciless enemy, and only by breaking through the darkness ahead can we move on. Or journey together has not our journey together has not been an easy one, but I am glad that both of us are here today. Our travels will fall of heartache and countless hardships, Ellen Tuck. And so the darkness ahead does not frighten my weathered heart, nor does it frighten you. Will our paths diverge if we survive? Erliot shudders. I do not think I will wish to return to my kin soon, Ellen Tuck. Will I even be able to? Perhaps I will join you in your quest to explore the distant stars. Perhaps. Erliot averts her sad eyes. I will look for those who were not ready to return to life on a craft world. Those like myself. The future is too... vague, and my path is leading me into the unknown, while our fate will be decided in the coming battle. Erliot's voice rings like naked steel. I am ready to drive back the darkness, Ellen Tuck. Are you? The ending's epic. Oh, awesome! The Exalted One once wove our destinies into the glittering tapestry of this world with gold and silver thread, Shireen. And today, the pattern of our lives will either be completed... Jai snaps her metal fingers deliberately, loudly. Or the tapestry will be torn asunder. Personally, I prefer to place my hope in the first option. Are you afraid of what is to come, Jai? A battle against the enemy? Pain? Oblivion? Jai smiles and shakes her head. Oh no, Shirin. My only fear is that after these tribulations, we will never be the same again. And I do so enjoy being me. After a 
positively pregnant pause. Jai continues in her usual playful manner. So, what brings you to me, Shirin? Not parting words, I hope, because I despise goodbyes. I feel as though they rob me of my future. You never want to hear goodbye, after all, but only ever see you again under the same stars. Well, I just wanted to say I'm glad of your company, especially now. Our alliance is like a miraculous oasis blooming in the fierce desert heat. I am glad to be your partner and friend and ally in the fight against the enemy. I'm curious to see what you'll do once all this is over. You mean if it's ever over? And if the RG do not play their evil tricks on us? Jai raises an eyebrow and shrugs. I don't know, Sherin. Being drunk on unbridled freedom sounds nice. It's so close. I could reach out and grab it like the tail of a comet and leave the Kaspalika mission behind, start doing things on my own without having to rely on your good favor. Limitless possibilities lie ahead. I just have to survive the coming darkness. Get a grip, Jai. We have a hard battle ahead of us. Rest assured, Shetty. When it comes to matters of being and oblivion, Jai Heidari has the coldest mind and the bravest heart. Any games you look forward to playing you haven't played yet? Uh, I have a list, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure off the top of my head. One thing I do want to do after this is I want to, there's an entire tech tree. I think we finished about half of the tech tree on Pacific Drive. I want to unlock it and basically at least get to the point where I build out the car the way I'd want to build it out. I don't think that'll take long but it's something that I've wanted to do. So I kind of shelved Pacific Drive at, after the end of the main storyline, but there's like so much to explore still, yeah? You're still in War of Tales? Heck yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I would definitely like to check it out again. Obviously, there's way more games too, yeah? Three Providence. Ooh, sweet bull. You're getting on up there, man. It's, it's really, really cool. I am not a priest, of course, and the spirits do not always speak clearly to me, but I did cast the runes. You have a great challenge ahead of you, Itvara. Be very careful, or better yet, take me with you. There is no better way to guard your safety. Well, I'm glad the Emperor brought our paths together. This only proves that we will not lose, Itvara. Go into the foulest hole in the universe, where only lowborn and wretched inhumans crawl. Fall into darkness and then cry out. Who here believes in the All Father, sisters and brothers? And even there in the world's most rotten pit, you will hear an answer. And if you reach toward the voice, you will find a worthy companion. Everyone who believes in him and follows in his footsteps is given the chance to become someone greater and more worthy. Xavier Calcazar is waiting for me down there. Should I give him your regards? Oops. I would rather talk to him myself. My angry and vengeful heart tells me only he knows how and why the baleful Howl Pack died. It also tells me I will not forgive myself if that puffed up old Kalkazar somehow dies before I rip the answers from his leering mouth. You found your pack and our campaign is nearing its end. What are you going to do next? I will return to my brothers and sing the saga of the baleful Howl Pack. I will carry it all the way to Fenris and pour its ringing verses into the ears of the Jarl and the Great Wolf himself. Its burning words will warm us during the fierce hell winter. Ulfark grins. And the brothers at the table will nudge each other and point their fingers at me and say, it was he who crafted such a beautiful saga. How generous the Allfather has been to him. Fenris Hjolda Vlak. Fenris Hjolda. Eidvater. Olifar bows his head solemnly and respectfully, an untold honor granted to a mortal who has impressed the Emperor's angel with his deeds. All right, we're ready. This is crazy. I don't think we can like select people and restack them or anything like that. Obviously, we can wear different things as well, but I mean, what do we really want to wear anything else? No, I think we're good. This is excellent. Let's do it. Your trade, trade routes are huge, Meeble. Permission to take off. We are heading to Epitaph. Acknowledged. Glory to the Von Valancius dynasty. Be safe, Lord Captain Bunnyman. Okay, so we got to choose. The bunnies have said all of the Daka. 
I mean, honestly, Argenta equals DACA. Pascal now equals DACA. Kasia equals DACA. Onfar equals DACA. Eriliad also equals DACA. But out of everybody, I actually, I really want Abelard at our side at the end, but I kind of want to see what Heinrichs is going to say to the big guy himself. So I'm going to bring Heinrichs, yeah? What's a DACA? DACA is like um, gunfire, bullets, <laughs> outwardly facing damage. <laughs> that's, that's the DACA, yeah? So we're going, yeah? So I'm going to bring Heinrichs, even though I, I actually prefer Abelard. I would like to put that new armor on Heinrichs, even if it's worse for him, just because it looks cool. It's a void suit. That sounds awesome. I think right now he's just got light armor. I think he's got the proficiency. I, I never ending flurry of bullets. Oh, there's a lot of bullets. There's a lot of bullets. Oh my God. They're right there. Can we please deal with them now? Okay. So first of all, we go over to our guy. Here he is. Heavy void suit. He's probably going to lose a ton of agility. Yep. His dodge goes down like crazy, but he has more protection. Sure. I don't know if it's going to be better. I mean, you could do Psycho Breastplate too, which is cool. But yeah, this will do. That'll do. Actually, come to think of it, he has decent carouse. This might be better. Oops. He has decent carouse. Ah, he gets 14. Yeah, that's a lot better, actually. From area and burst. Yeah, this is a lot better. I mean, he doesn't have as much deflection, but that's, that's totally good. Wow, it's not bad. Let's go ahead and set the... Um, the formation. I want Kasha up front so she doesn't destroy everyone with her void stuff. Believe it or not, I have... <laughs> I've got Heinrichs at the back, yeah. Daka Orc Slang for gunfire, bullets, firepower, yes. Absolutely. All right, what do we got? What do we got? How big is this zone? Or is it just like a two-step thing? Oh, it looks decently big. And why are these here? Are we okay with this? The Even the wicked Xenos were no match for the scourge. Oh my god, he's just standing there. How pitiful Personal pilot. Look. Engine seer. Wow, a lot of dead Skitari. God. Oh come on. Can I don't understand why we can't shoot these guys while they're just Always literally standing and moving. Price. An odd haze obscures your vision, and for a moment you see the metallic corpses at your feet turn into the bodies of soldiers clad in the colors of your dynasty. What? The Zenus is not showing any signs of aggression, simply staring ahead. There's an odd disoriented quality to its movements. As in, they turned our people into them? I mean, they're wearing, look like they're wearing white and gold armor. Is there money to be made? And so they're disoriented because they're still transforming into Necron or what the heck? There's only forward. Oh, there's oh, there's destroyers up here. Out of the corner of your eye inside the glowing green orb mounted on the contraption, you see the reflections of people who are not here. They are looking at you curiously and fearfully. What? Oh my gosh. Yes, actually, I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for the tip. I just I just saw that. Thank you so much, man. And honestly, anything is more than enough. So thank you so much, man. Wait, did I do, did, uh, did I do that? No. <laughs> Uh, oh no, you totally got it. You totally got it. Thank you so much, man. What the heck happened? I'm much love, man. Thank you so much. So, the, I didn't do that, right? That wasn't me. It's not like I... I'm still new to the art of exploring. Tanakia? What the heck is Tanakia? We noticed something. Oh, there's goods here. Why would they give us I goods at this late hour? Open. Little bits make... It's true. They do. They really, really do. Operation. What is this? Successful. Necron Tech Hotshot Last Gun. Astral Currents. The wearer gains 20 movement points in the first round of combat. Their movement cost is not reduced by threatening areas. The wearer's movement does not trigger attacks of opportunity during the round. Oh, 
cool <laughs> cool that's all that's all i got to say about that that's pretty cool i think i'm <laughs> well first of all we got a shotgun uh who can use this thing apparently it's just counting as a las weapon well hb can use las weapons can't he yes he can wow great i actually specialize in less weapons i'm not going to use this sword that ignores deflection in close range why why even bother but so for the commissar whenever the wearer chooses an ally as a target of their ability the wearer immediately gains movement points or <laughs> i could just have all the movement points right I don't know if this is hubris, but HB standing in the middle of everything with a giant Necron shotgun, does that sound blasphemous at all? I don't know. What if instead of this, I decide, you know, I don't want to get hit, so I'm just going to make it so that the first three shots shot at me are going to do nothing. Although then I'll be staggered till the end of combat, so maybe not. But, uh, wow, that's crazy. Something tells me we're getting new stuff to get ready for the ultimate boss fight. Necron last shotgun. Yes, that's true. I mean, I don't know the significance of that, but I'm pretty sure it's significant. All right, I'm feeling pretty good right now. This is totally fine. We have long range, we have short range. Ooh, more stuff to touch. The Zenus is making the same rhythmic sound over and over as if trying to say something, but losing its train of thought and starting anew every single time. Every few moments, the metal particles lose their color and become translucent, and you can see something dark and formless behind the metal, yearning to be born, but unable to do so yet. Can, whenever you say it, can we just destroy them ahead of time? Uh, unless, I guess they might just knit themselves back together, right? Is, is that how that works? And, and what weapons does, oops, Lady Argenta have? Right now, she can do the heavy caliber oh i forgot about they shall weep oh my gosh each shot with this bolter deals an additional five times ballistic skill bonus rending damage with 40 percent armor penetration to all characters adjacent it's an aoe bolter that deals more damage has more armor penetration and stacks off of argenta's ballistic skill which goes up to like 30 on the regular Oh, that's really good. We should use that. <laughs> what? Wow. I love this game. Oh, I forgot we got a rifle. Oh my God. Gloom rifle. Oh my God. Wow. Damage from overpen. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. That's probably pretty good. Additional target deflection. Oh yes. Wow, that's pretty good. I should probably use that. What's that look like? Oh, nice. It matches my clothes. I'll, uh... <laughs> Yay. What about Alfar? I didn't forget anything for Alfar, did I? Judix? No, no, that's fine. That's fine. What about our boy here? I mean, sure, that that's that's all good. And then, yep, that's fine. Yep. Okay, we're good. We're good. It does damage and look pretty. Win, win. Save. It'd be awesome if she got another heavy bolter, but I unfortunately, I went. That's the only reputation I didn't go down. The Keep Fellowship of the Void. About you. A broken metallic finger sticks out from between the sarcophagus doors that are slightly ajar. It wriggles weakly. Looks like an arch militant or something. Always keep your eye on the price. Always keep your eye up. The drawn out metallic groans form a painful and melt. That guy is. Oh, he's a destroyer. I thought he was really swole. I mean, he is from a painful and melancholy melody, but one that oozes with venomous spite. The armored plates sing in an unknown language, and you feel as though the meaning is on the verge of reaching your mind, unless the monster cuts your life short before that. The grating roar is more like the sound of a metal torture instrument than a sentient being's speech. I recognize a leader and a true warrior in this one. Yes, still a Zenus, unworthy of life, but a warrior all the same. I bet this noble madman of battle will fall by my hand. Alfar casts a joyous look over the party, as if expecting someone to take him up on the wager. Examine the creature. The Zenis' entire skeletal body is made of an unknown metal interlaced with greenish energy, channels aglow with currents. 
Below its waist, the flares of a grab pad are humming and rattling, its upper limbs fuse into a formidable heavy cannon. Not a single part of the monster's body betrays vulnerability. Without a doubt, this is a technologically superb machine designed to annihilate all life. Disabling it will not be easy. Is that a giant plat? If we don't look good killing things, what's the point? Hey, Cindy, high five. Is that a giant plasma gun? Or is that guy just happy to see us, right? We have done no harm to your race. Once I find what I have come for, I shall trouble you no more. No distress. <laughs> we might as well try and talk our way out of it, but I'll feel like I've cheated something. The sound of the vibrating metal plates has both the rhythmic malice of a march and the hollow hum of misery. The lament of an immortal mechanism doomed aeons of wrath and battle, or else an impending demise. The salvo from the monstrous cannon is an infernal orchestral chord that makes the very fabric of space tremble. Oh, well, there we go. You know what they say about guys with big guns? Oh, they're compensating. Oh, he just has Elegy of Sorrow, Security Breach. Plates of Necrodermis reduce the damage against this creature by negative 95% from every side except the butt. Well, we are known to attack the butt, so uh, I guess that's okay. We know how this goes. I don't think Necrons use plasma. Well, uh, they use something akin to... It's green. It's green. All right, well, let's let's work it. Here we go. We'll get Kaja behind cover. Probably should use cover a little bit this time. We'll have Argenta. She'll do her thing. Alfar is cover, although he probably doesn't want to get blasted with Kaja. She'll probably kill him. Uh, we got HP. He's just going to stay way in the corner here. That's basically cover. <laughs> we got Pascal. Uh, he'll stand there. And then Heinrichs will be the little guy that he is. There we go. Great. Okay, cool. Hold. So we've got Kaja. Let's go ahead and stack up. We're going to stand Emperor, here. Give me strength. We'll go ahead and give some stats to HP so that he can do the Emperor's work. And then we shall give him some more... Uh, we'll give him more stuff. I'm there we go. To being ordered around. All right. So now we shall hold. HP is ready, obviously always I'm gonna go ahead and give i really want to give argenta the thing but i'm kind of thinking plasma is going to be awesome and honestly oh wait she's got the new bolter oh my god all right argenta what's new air of authority this is probably you know uh can we just back off a little bit there we go <laughs> okay so willpower Me. If you insist, we should give him. ourselves willpower, honestly, but uh, we'll give this to Alfar here. Heinrichs is like the fallback solution. Uh, we shall weaken, warp curse. We can always warp curse the boss. There we go. We can kind of give him a little bit of a zap. Isn't this a job for the sir? Four to seven damage. Okay, that's, that's a thing. Uh, we'll just set Me? the rear field if here insist, Lord Captain. we'll set the front line here and then we shall weaken do we even need to weaken him i feel like we should weaken that guy Isn't this a job for the oh look at that he's at 16 percent armor now that's cr wow he got screwed holy crap wow he got screwed that's that's terrifying <laughs> can we just like make a move to see if anything happens Oh, yeah, that barely did damage. Oh, but his... His butt is facing us. <laughs> his butt is facing Argenta. That's what's up. All right, well... Uh, all right, guys, just group up here for me a second. If you insist, Lord Captain. Wow, did that work out in our favor? Like, totally worked out. Can can she... Oh, Argenta can go. Well, all right. Reckless but rush. We all know what happens when she gets reckless. And uh, rapid fire. All right, we're, we're actually going to switch over to our brand new bolter because we want to try it. Wildfire. Surprise. That's right. That's right. And... Oh, what? We can't see. Do we have shot here? Oh, we do here. We have. We do here. What about here? We do. Okay, great. Never turn your butt towards a rabbit. Shot. 100%. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> oh my god! Holy god! Jesus. I just... 
I think she's stronger now. <sighs> okay, so what we're gonna do is kill every Xenos on this field. Here we go, fire our mastery there. Let's go. All right, shot, she doesn't miss. Shot up, boom, enemy down 327. All right, shot across the field. Warrior, there we go, there it is. All right, beautiful. All right, another shot, let's put them on their knees. Let's do this, all right, send it again. Go, all right, Ember, she never misses. She never misses. Oh, this guy, he's he's standing there. I think I think he should probably yellow. Or is the new bolter's pretty good. What the hell is this? Oh my god, she just oh my god, it's multiple. Oh wow, they blew each other. Oh my god. Shot. How do you get two numbers? She killed them twice over with one shot. Oh, that's pretty good. Over penetration. Oh, the over penetration. Wait, 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 wait. How does that work again? Each shot with a bolter deals an additional five times your ballistics, which is 206, rending damage with 40% armor penetration to all characters adjacent. So the AOE damage from her shot dealt 325 in an AOE adjacent and killed them twice over. So they actually reanimated, then immediately died. I see why they shall weep. <laughs> I see why they shall weep. Let's go. Oh my God. And I forgot to buff her. I did not use HB's. I did not use this yet. 30 momentum. All allies gain wounds and armor by our persuasion. 23, 238 divided by se Oh my God. How much? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just, just keep killing. As just keep killing. Commands, I act. All right, hold. Well, we can give her another turn. No, that's that's not fair. That's not fair. We really shouldn't give her. You know what? Screw it. All right, here we go. Use the Inquisitor's Decree. Now she has more. She's 147 percent. Yes. All right. Can we? Can we? Bu we should probably buff. Well, Pascal hasn't gone. Yeah, well, it's we'll buff Pascal a little bit. We'll give. Uh, maybe Alfar wants a turn. I'll see to it personally and we will inspire Alfar to do more damage. Uh, we'll give more resolve to uh, Alfar. We'll give some temporary wounds. Oh, actually, let's... We should probably shoot someone. We'll go at all costs. And uh, we'll just ping that guy. This is good as done. Oh! Oh, this new rifle's good. I forgot we've got a new rifle. That's awesome. Well, um, finest hour. Okay, let's let's save that. Save that one. All right, Kaja. Ka oh, it's still Kaja's turn. Can one of you guys, one of you guys, want to do something? Maybe. That's fine. You're fine. All right, we're done. There we go. Oh, it's Argenta's real turn now. Great. I'll do it. Well, now she's gonna revel in this slaughter, and now her ballistic skill is 260. <laughs> New overpowered toys are always fun to shoot with. It's true. It's true. They are. I love overpowered. It's kind of what I'm really looking forward to in life. She now has 10 stacks of versatility and her ballistic skills 226. She now gets, well, she's got rapid fire. Let's, um, we'll send a shot down range. That, that'll do it. Yep. Kneel before Argenta, I see. Uh, we can now rapid fire and wildfire. And there is a death mark which could absolutely destroy us if we let it shoot. I'll do it. The Emperor's judgment. As Shot. The Emperor commands, I yep, you. that guy. <laughs> In thy light I stand, and thy light I crave. Shot. Oh, that's an immortal. That's not a regular guy. <laughs> Okay, we should probably take that guy seriously. Uh, run and gun. And shot. What's her ballistic skill now? 226. Okay. Uh, hang tight. Oh, that guy. That guy's coming back. Okay, they're actually going to shoot us now. We haven't tried our Necron shotgun yet. Oh, he's pointing at us. Oh, and he missed because her dodge is 95%. Oh, that guy's back. He's back. 
Oh, he hit her, but then killed his friend because of the arc lightning. Wow, excellent. Oh, Ulfar gets to go. And he has the high ground. Let's do it. All right, Reckless Rush. So Ulfar actually has... I just want to point out that Ulfar currently just have this armor. He's got 81% now because he utilized Fury Incarnate with Reckless Rush. So he gets 50% crit hit chance and extra 50% crit hit damage, but he takes extra. He just utilized Hellbrute, which reduces his armor and his deflection. And then on top of that, he, but in turn, he gets more critical damage. And then of course, we've all allies will not get hit by his burst attacks. So that's great because we now have our Annihilating Bolter. He's got six Wildfire. And we will send a burst downrange. Iffy. Oh, Iffy. I guess if he can hit him. Dear God, man. You're, Argenta's making it look silly. Uh, here, can we get a shot on? Oh, that's... He kind of has to build up, apparently. All right, well, let's go Devastating Attack. Fire Mastery. What is he at right now? He's at 199 Ballistic Skill. Okay, so... Shot. Blighted. Wow, we can't hit that guy. What about this one? There we go. Slowly but surely. I guess he hasn't built up yet by just killing everybody. Well, that's a little, a little unfortunate, but maybe we buff him up some more. If we assign an objective, we'll assign... I guess I actually have to expose myself. Let's make some opportunities. All right, so we're going to inspire. Heck, Kaj is already buffed, though. <laughs> inspire Kaja. He can crit to the moon if he hits. That's true. I'll Sometimes the enemies are in positions that for some reason we just we just don't have it in us. Yeah, like I can't even see this guy, apparently. Who if not me? Okay, press the advantage for us. And we're gonna go in and send this guy a ping. We'll give him another turn though. Okay, so we're actually gonna switch on over to the bolt pistol instead, reckless rush. And then we're going to Hellbrute Trophy. And we're going to wildfire, so it doesn't cost us three. And then we'll just send a burst down range 47. I guess we could also, in theory, move if we run and gun. But we'll just send it from here. Wow. I kind of wish I gave an extra turn to Pascal because he does have... Oh my god, his movement's insane. Because with Pascal, we can use Machine Spirit Communion just basically get rid of all that recoil. But now he's in a better spot. This guy, he was missing. So if we strike him... No, it's better. It's better. Shot. Yeah, that's that's a little better. That's a little better. Shot. Burst. That's a little better. Swing. Flip it. Shot. And we can dash on. Uh, are we going to make it? Kick. <laughs> All right. Beautiful. Let's. Pascal hasn't gone. Heinrichs hasn't gone. We'll give him some stats. And hold. All right. So Heinrichs finally gets to go. But everyone's almost dead. We'll go ahead and buff his arms. We'll give everyone more resolve. Why not? And he's going to move as fast as he can. Although he can also do warp speed for the on himself. Glory. So he can move a little farther, but he's going to charge. Flip it. I think he's out of um, points now, though. <laughs> he's already out. Hold. And finally, okay, Pascal gets to go. Excellent. That's what we want to see. Let's get him forward. Semi boss fight in last dungeon. Check. Easier than expected, which is kind of weird. Check. Well, I don't know if it's weird. Our people are pretty strong. We'll give a little help to uh, Alfar there. We'll stack up on 
that guy in the distance. We will mark him as prey. We'll mark uh, this guy as prey. I don't think we can see the other guy from here. Oh, we can. Wow. Okay. That's excellent. Well, we shall in that case trail that guy who's farthest away. Now we shall buff up Olfar. It would scale sun. better, but then again, it's just... Well... <laughs> I guess it, it it is what it is. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Here, why don't you why don't you move over this way? And we'll just zap him a little. There we go. Uh, joint. It's great. Yep. Hang tight. Move. Oh, can't see that guy. Well, let's doesn't matter we'll give some let's give a full turn again to all far i think you can clean up the last two so close range reckless rush el brute point blank executed hold all far's coming around smashing zenith in the name of the bunny trader is the best and most wanted goal that's true that's true all right, so now he's got 361 ballistic skill. We'll flip over to close range, now get reloaded. Oh! Wildfire. Burst. Oh, whoops. Oh, oh, don't kill us. Don't kill us. All right, we did it. Excellent. I feel like Argenta could have just kept going. Is there anything to loot here? Doesn't. We gotta look around. What is that? Oh. Dynasty Notebook. The tiny notebook is adorned with a coat of arms of House von Valancius. The pages made from real peri paper carry a pleasant scent of perfume and are covered in ruler straight lines of text. Their meaning is locked behind an intricate cipher, but you do not need to know the contents of it to identify the author. You know this perfect calligraphic handwriting all too well. Who was Lady Theodora known for perfume? The first round fight. Yeah, it, it's definitely not over. That's for sure. We haven't met the Inquisitor yet. What do they have down here? Tanakia. I don't know what that is. A lift. Oh, wait, 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 stop. Oh, boy. What have we done? I should have waited. The barriers holding, barely holding prepare for defense. In the name of the golden throne, hold the line. Wait, I wanted to look around. The Zenith Knight lets out a clanging howl, portending imminent death. Oh, whoops. I did not mean to engage already. So we've got warrior, warrior, warrior. Warrior, warrior, warrior. So that's six. This guy's a... Crypto Geometric Sentinel. He has an Enmitic Annihilator. Hyperphase Sword. 35 to 60, 50% armor penetration, murderous demise. Grants 100% crit hit chance to every ally for one round. Oh my god. Usable only if there are more than three Necron creatures, excluding the Scorpec Lord itself. Crypto Geometric Adjuster. For two rounds, create a 4x4 area, which reduces perception of every enemy inside, unless they pass a willpower test at negative 50 penalty. Annihilation. The creature teleports to a target within a 12-cell radius and strikes, dealing rending damage equal to 50% of their wounds, and knocking the target prone for a round unless they pass a toughness test. If the target successfully passes, the strike deals normal weapon rend- Oh my god. Immunity of Deathless. Mental damage. The creature is immune cannot, to the cannot attack, fatigue, disturb, toxin, perplex, and horrors of the warp. Mental damage dealt to the creature is reduced by negative 50% and machine damage increased by 30%. Doom Tech Blight. The creature may suffer a negative effect at the start of each turn. Oh, wow. Probably because he was affected by the Tech Blight by the, um, by the Inquisitor. Wedding his pet. He'll last around 1,700, like half an Argenta round. <laughs> All right. Well... Cool. We want line of sight with Kaja. 
We want line of sight. We want line of sight with everybody. How about just everybody has line of sight? Alfar can stand out in the open. HB's gonna be behind cover, and Baby Heinrichs can stand in the back. Okay, great. Although he'll stand next to Argenta just to give her a camaraderie bonus. Okay, great. Now we're looking good. All right, two HB. Me. Although I should probably have put Argenta. Well, that's fine. Captain. I won't second guess it. We'll give some turn. We'll actually give a turn to Pascal, believe it or not, because Pascal never gets to go. I would like to get the Machine Spirit Communion on us, and we'll go ahead and mark Prey. We'll have the big guy. Then we'll put Prey right in front of us so that it'll auto trigger. We've got a Blighted Death Mark on the left. We definitely want to take that guy out. And then we're going to go hot on the trail, actually, to the main guy. And then we shall hold. It's Takasha, so hold. It's over to HB. HB's now going to buff up Argenta. We shall utilize Air of Authority. We shall, I guess, give her, give her some time. She shall trigger... She has the right one. No, she's got the heavy bolter. Let's go heavy bolter. It's been a while. Can she move? She has a shot here, which will not hit our allies. So we're going to go reckless rush. We're going to go rapid fire. We're going to go controlled shot. The soldier and their allies will automatically dodge the soldier's next attack. And then we're going to go wildfire. We are going to actually move out God, here so we face. just in case so we don't accidentally hurt our allies. Actually, we'll move right here. Why not? She gets no camaraderie bonus, but that's okay because point blank is point blank. Shot. Do it. 18. Oh, okay. Only 191. Let's hold here. What's his armor? 110. We will. Doubt is for the weak. We only hit one guy. That's not enough. Okay, so we'll hang tight. Hang tight. We will give her the willpower. There we go. It's over. You have the high ground. We are going to waking nightmare that guy. His willpower and toughness will drop significantly. Now he has armor of 22%. That's pretty, pretty good. Let's give it to Ulfar. a job for the serfs? And we'll actually give him the opportunity, but let's group who we can together. We're going to put our rear line right here. So we can move to it. We're going to put the dodging line right here. I'm where all the support is. Being ordered around. And we're going to put the front line right where the group is. Isn't this a job for the serfs? Well then... We'll hold on that. We'll, I guess, move this guy to the edge. Oh! He just shot Argenta. All right. Let's go in and... I really want to zap him. I guess we could. I am a navigator, not a servitor. Solid. And we'll give some opportunities to Ulfar to get started. He can Reckless Rush. <laughs> Rapid Fire. And Wildfire. He is pulling back. Can he go around this thing? Okay, I guess first down, down range. Okay, walk out. Dash. Oh, can we not get through this? Do I have to, like, kick my way through it? Oh, that's a bummer. All right, hang tight. Kaja. Me? Fear. If you insist, Lord Captain. And we'll give another turn to Argenta. Okay, here we go. So now she actually has Machine Spirit Communion, Reckless Rush. The barrels, yeah. He can't, he can't move. He can't move. We're switching on over to her new bolter. They shall weep. Rapid fire. And send the burst. Death mark. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yep, that'll do it. That'll do it. Oh, my, she's still going. 
I forgot about that one. Holy God. Uh, let's move Pascal. As the tactical imperative dictates. I forgot that for that first kill, she just shoots at the nearest one that she can just because she's full of raw. Extermination as well, yeah. Uh, I guess we'll ping that guy. And we're going to use joint analysis so that perception for Pascal will keep boosting higher and higher and higher. And then hold. Revel in slaughter because that's what she's doing. Now her stats are at 245 ballistic skill. So we shall send a burst down range. That... <laughs> Let's stack the big guy. Still working on her anger. I, I'm okay with her having some anger issues. All right, raid. And joint. Might as well target the boss. Yeah. Maybe we can end him before he does anything. So let's get reloaded. Wildfire. And she's going to send five down range. We'll use Devastating Attack and send a shot to the boss just to build up her Exterminator talent. Emperor commands, I act. Okay. <laughs> Firearm Mastery. Your limit break is up. It's true, it is. All right. She gets six shots with this Bolter. Pretty good. Emperor. I like Faith it. Without deeds is worthless. Was chosen. As the Emperor commands, I act. <laughs> Pretty sure he reanimated. Doubt is for the weak. You can escape the Emperor's judgment. Okay. There we go. It's like a small nuclear. <laughs> yeah. Holy God. I don't even know what he does anymore. He didn't for the bunny. <laughs> it's like, wow, that's, that's awesome. Okay. I dig it. Let's, let's go at him. Here we go. Bunnies. Can we, we don't even know how to get down. Oh, we were supposed to go this direction. Oh, my bad. All right. Run and gun. We got to get, we went the wrong way. <laughs> She can't jump down or fly like an angel. In the arms of an angel, fly away from here. Can we dash through? Yellow. I'll do it. But can she shoot anybody now? No, she can't. That guy's not alive. I don't think she can. Yeah, he, he he's not real. He's just thinking. Okay, great. Watch, HP missed an entire big boss speech. Go. <laughs> I didn't mean to. It's not my fault. They should have gotten more swole. You know what I mean? I thought the Necron were deadly. All right, we're gonna... Yeah, we'll just stop here. There we go. <laughs> HB is ready. Oh, he can shoot these guys too. Okay, great. Well, we're gonna... <laughs> Let's, uh, at all costs... Press the advantage. He's got 77 stacks. And uh, we'll try and nail one of these guys. 24% though, it's hard to hit him. Yeah, so we dodged. We should give. Let's let's just hold. We'll we'll let them we'll let them do their thing. We'll just hold. Oh, it's Lady, it's Lady Argenta's real turn now. Okay, let's. <laughs> okay, she's she's pretty fast. She's pretty pretty fast. Now she's gonna yeah, we're gonna. Can she even shoot at anybody from here? She cannot. She cannot. So she's just going to chill. There we go. Just chill. That's perfect. What if we give warp speed to Argenta? <laughs> what if What if we decide to make her Let's also strong it. in me melee combat? What if we also enfeeble her enemies? And what if we give ourselves more resolve? 
and then at this point i'm not even gonna move with heinrichs he can just chill oh there's another death mark well that's not good i didn't see that guy he's pretty dangerous as i understand it all right warriors more warriors that guy turned blue okay so hb's up he's gonna relocate shout commands at the teammate that's true that's true that's what i do all right we actually have a line on these guys we go and she's already buffed we'll give her more authority she need, can have all the authority we shall tell her if she'd like to she can move i'll make it happen and move she shall oh my god wow all right she can see everybody now she's ready hang tight can we inspire her? Oh, can we move? Oh, we can move too. Oh my God, I can just follow her around. I forgot about my 20 movement points. <laughs> I have 20 movement points. All right, here, have have some more Argenta. I'm just jacking her up. Let's, uh, <laughs> this is probably what everybody does, but it is so much fun. I see why. Uh, that guy is an objective. Okay, fine. That guy is an objective. Get that guy. Great. And uh, we... Oh, I forgot to use the Inquisitor's Decree. There we go. Time. Have 30 momentum. And uh, let's ping that guy. Oh, we, get, we hit that guy. Oh, and we shot through him as well. Okay, well, have a turn, Argenta. Go. Whispering moment. sweet nothings in Argenta. All right, Reckless Rush. Rapid Fire we can move oh my god she can move how far away is this how many movement i don't care all right shoot that As guy commands, I act. revel in slaughter is worthless. dash Wildfire. As Reload. Commands, I act. And shot. Shot. 31 stacks of versatility, 1175 on crit. She has 415 ballistic skill. Okay. Devastating Dash attack. And shot. The colossal warrior's formidable underframe can no longer bear his weight. With armor plates clanging, his great bulk slumps. A deep sound full of rage and tragic despair is born in his chest. You notice the convulsions in the Zenesis limbs. The light is flickering in his eyes. Perhaps something went wrong during this monster's awakening from stasis, damaging his engrams and plunging him into madness formidable yeah yep yeah. there's formidable gave too many motivation speeches to argenta she's too strong she's pretty strong what are you oh it's not even here the zenis's limbs shiver at the sound of your voice he emits a deep hum full of dour pride you were unable to decipher it but you can sense his disdainful rage and stern resolve to kill you this is neither the dispassion of a prowling beast nor the blinding rage of insanity but the instinct of a warrior Grant the ancient warrior an honorable death. Your watch is over. Oh, apparently he was there somewhere. The Zenith dies with a piercing howl of wrath. There is no fear in these sounds. Only the stubbornness of a true warrior with a touch of regret at his defeat. A terrible rumble comes from somewhere deep inside the crypt as soon as the green fire goes out in the fallen warrior's eyes. The glow of the glyphs upon the walls become chaotic and disarrayed. Something just broke irreparably in this crypt. Was that it? Was that the last boss? Uh, but I wanted to loot stuff. Oh, crap. Did I... Oh, there's nothing to loot. There's someone over here. We should probably talk to them. My bad. Wow. Argena hit it too hard. Vapor. No kidding. The box is filled up with cast metal insignia like the ones worn by Theodore's bodyguards. Some of them have splatters of dry blood on them. My warp site oh, cool. Something. There's a hidden loot thing. And we got 
The tech blight voraciously gnaws away at the human metal, but not as eagerly as the walls of the crypt. Oh, so it's Rise eating this top, place. Or get left in the dust. What a shame. These obelisks are different from the ones you've seen before, though what exactly they signify, one can only guess. And this is that Tanakia. The maimed creature at your feet is still alive, as evidenced by its heavy breathing. It was a woman once, sporting close-cropped hair and equipped for battle, but now her skin is shredded by the metal sticking out of her body in a dozen places. Her body does not appear to have any external injuries. It has been maimed from the inside out. It is as if her flesh was transmuted into metallic shapes that then burst out of her skin and turned her internal organs into a bloody sieve. Some of her exposed bones have a metallic gleam to them, while others still look natural. Hey, can you hear me? With a heavy jerk, the woman raises her head, emerging from oblivion and focuses her gaze on you. Even in such a wretched state, her eyes still gleam with self-confidence, zest, and subtle shrewdness. You... Who are... That coat of arms rings a bell? Von Valancius, I'm not as surprised to see you as you may think. I don't think that's supposed to be how Necron conversions go. Wait, doesn't biotransference do... I have no idea what that is. Who are you? The woman tries to salute you, but the metal cutting through her tendons has cost her the control of her fingers. Sanakia Kalbergaria, Inquisition Acolyte, and by the grace of Lord Inquisitor Kalkazar, the Warden of the Epitaph One Covert Facility, or whatever is left of it. What happened to you? No such thing as Necron conversion. I've been having trouble sleeping lately. Oh, you mean the metal things in my body? I have no idea. Looks like something has gone terribly wrong in the crypt. Her voice becomes more serious and dry. The Auspex has detected some unknown radiation and everything went crazy. The Zenas didn't feel like sleeping in their coffins anymore, so they started trashing the place. And, and the pylon I was standing next to suddenly grew a dozen tentacles and one of them grazed me. I, I blacked out and when I came to, I, I looked like I tried to give birth to a shuttle. <laughs> That's one way of putting it. Well, Obliterator virus? Oh, what? I'm looking for Kalkazar. Where is he? At the facility in the crypt, making preparations for the emergency launch of the operation's final stage. At least I hope so, or else he's already dead. Now that I think about it, there are enough reasons to assume the latter. What facility? What operation? I guess you're still young if you don't know that in this world, whenever the big boys and girls say the word facility, that almost always means a colossal secret weapon capable of destroying worlds. And that's all you're going to get. It'd be very disrespectful of me to spill a secret so many have given their lives to protect. Have I sated your curiosity? Then I'd like my favor returned. There's a pack of low in my breast pocket. Can you give me one? You can keep the rest. I'm feeling very generous today. Take out a pack of low out of the woman's jacket. Good. You're old enough to know what these are for, aren't you? Stick one into the cigarette between my teeth and light up the other. Just make sure you do it the right way around. Look, let's be straight with each other. You have nothing to hide now that you're dying. What's going on in this place? Tanakia gives you a long, piercing look, then speaks sadness audible in her voice. Obliterator, it's a tech heresy virus that turns your body into a living weapon, where your hands can literally morph into numerous fire. Oh my god. Obliterator virus turns you into a walking armory. Nurgled trader marines are infamous for being bearers of the obliterator virus. Oh my god. The one that destroyed Kruderak and unleashed... I think so. I think so, Joemia. Straight, huh? All right. Let's give it a try. It's taking a shine to you for some reason. One day, Zavia decided to immortalize himself in history in a rather extravagant way. All for the Imperium's sake, of course. But then things didn't go as expected. Even though we expected that they wouldn't. And now you'd... Better get far away from here, because whatever happens next, I doubt you're going to like it. Or you can go down there if you've got the guts. Maybe you'll immortalize yourself too. <laughs> That's what I would do. But I'm insane, so I'm not the best example to follow. A weak smile dances on the woman's lips. So, about that cigarette? Bring the low into the lo Bring the low to the woman's lips. You were saying something about an operation. You're a funny one. The Inquisition secrets for a love cigarette. That'd be something, wouldn't it? No deal. Give the dying woman her low. Enjoy it. 
People say it's bad for your health. I'd better be careful. Tell me, why does my coat of arms look familiar to you? Oh, I should know. It was on the uniform my agents wore. The ones I sent when Kalkazar took an interest in her ladyship, Theodora's retinue. They didn't wear them for long, though. When I presented Theodora with Kalkazar's ultimatum, she purged her retinue of our operatives. I'm fairly certain Theodora would have preferred to have my head as well. But the Lord Inquisitor recalled me here to guard his treasure cave. Just in case Theodora decided to return for what she thought was hers. Or the Drakari started causing trouble. Say what? How did your people infiltrate Theodora's retinue? A feint. A deception. A game of double and triple crossing. When they told her they intended to take revenge on Kankasar, she believed them. She was just too eager to get back at the Lord Inquisitor for taking her clever Archmage's advisor, Amarnath. Do you know Kunrad Voidvir? Not sure if he's still alive, but... Back then, he was Theodora's Master of Whispers. In theory, he should have been the one to out my operative as spies. But instead, he thought that they were his chance to pull off a brilliant plot and prove to his mummy how great an heir he'd become. It's true what they say about blondes. Every other one is as thick as mints. Wait, what was the ultimatum that you gave to Theodora? It's merely a message saying that her dirty secret was now ours. She was the first to visit Epitaph. She found something here. Something too good even for someone of her exalted status. Rogue traders are not allowed to have such toys, and I relayed the most exact coordinates down to the last digit after the decimal point to the Lord Inquisitor. The Drakari have come to this world. Why? <sighs> the Xena Freaks, my favorite partners. They had a crucial role to play in the operation you mustn't know anything about. Their visits to Epitaph have left me with so many unforgettable moments. We were ordered not to fire on them first, but to split them into atoms if their skinny butts deviated so much as a single degree from their approved flight paths. I swear. It was as if those fools were trying to get shot at with their half-witted provocations. They even had a nickname for me. The Almost Witch. A compliment, I guess. Why does no one from Theodore's retinue remember her visiting this system? I can give you two versions of the truth. The sugar-coated one and the honest one. The sugar-coated version is that once Theodora realized just what she had in her hands, she deemed it a matter of the utmost secrecy, and mind-locked the memories of all members of her crew. The honest version is she mind-locked the important people and disposed of the rest. Theodora depressurized compartments by entire blocks, casting any unwanted witnesses into the void. She needed to free up space in her hold for the spoils anyway. You've heard about mind-lock technology. The subject's memories of times or events would be placed under a special lock that could only be opened by a key phrase, one that most likely only Theodora would know. Okay. <laughs> wow. I just checked. The one faction that do not have obliterators are Death Guard. They should have made Pertur Perturbo an, an obliterator, not a Daemon Prince. A fan creation of obliterator Plague Marine. God, that, that seems like a lot of power. I am HBFT Von Valancius. Theodorus air. Well, you'll have to excuse me for not looking surprised. My facial nerves seem to be partially paralyzed, but I gathered as much. I'd hardly mistake you for our spectacular void she-wolf, after all. And if she were alive, she definitely would have come here in person. So you're the heir. Well, at least it's not Conrad. Sure you do. What do we do with her? I suggest granting the Acolyte the Emperor's peace. In honor of our years of working together. <laughs> You've always been so sentimental. A puppy dog. So attached to your colleagues, your hair, your eyes. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that still a sore point? Well, this is where it ends for you. Her blood-smeared lips twist into a smile. Is this an act of mercy or revenge? End her suffering without replying. Mercy. Rest in peace. Oh, double tap. There you go. Oh, three taps. Okay, triple tap. It takes you more than a few strikes to end the life of the already half-dead woman. The metal skull screeches under the pressure but does not break, and her heart keeps pumping blood through her shredded veins. Finally, her agony comes to an end. Wow. Okay, what does she have?
She's got a knife. Okay, great. Add cargo. And now we loot. Yeah, so there wasn't much loot on her. I don't know what I expected. I mean, we are... If we're at the end of the game, there's not much to loot. I know up here, there was... There's something we can look at. Yellow. No. Can't look at it. Okay, I think, I think that's it. Wow. All right, we came through. I mean, the boss probably had loot if our agenda didn't evaporate him. Well, I mean... In theory, even though they evaporate, then we still have a chance of looting it, but... Oh, we've found. got a thing here. Sanguine Thirst. This power axe deals three times the wielder's strength bonus damage to bleeding targets. If it is the first attack against a bleeding target, the attack has no cooldown. By the way, axes have a special attack that inflict bleeding. Oh, how handy! Blood Fury Cloak. Whenever the wearer kills an enemy with a melee attack... Their attack limit is removed until the end of the turn. But every one of their attacks also deals 10% of the wearer's maximum wounds direct damage to the wearer. I mean, kind of worth it. The elevator system leading to the deeper sections of the crypt was installed a long time ago. It seems every bolt is stamped with your dynastic coat of arms. Always keep your eye on the price. Well, we, we came through here. Before we descend the steps, we should probably arm. I want to compare the axes. I feel kind of bad, though, because... Okay, so not Adeptus Astarte's equipment. I guess we, in theory, could use this. So could Pascal, if he so chose. So we've got a weapon skill of 40. Heinrichs has a weapon skill of 70. Yeah, but this is for dogmatic people, and he's a dogmatic votary. So he ignores deflection, dodge, and everything from... Daemons and Psychers and Xanas. This is for strength bonus. I mean, his strength is 50. His strength is high, but he can't use it. And her strength is pretty decent. My strength is so-so. His strength is great, but let's be real. He gets int bonuses from the Omnissiah's Providence. So not really too much use to us. And then we've got that cloak, but the only person who's really going to kill people in combat is all far in melee and he can't wear it so yeah we're good did we get a piece of gear that buffs your damage per missing wound on the bearer did we i think there was one here which is stimulant injector it reduces your wounds by 10 percent, but it increases your crit hit chance by a bunch especially on like abelard with all the toughness there's that one all of our and we actually that does sound familiar this is cool when the wearer attacks a target with any ranged weapon in a one cell range, the attack inflicts bleed. And you deal 25% crit damage to all attacks against it. And then if you were to couple that, say, with this right here. Oh, I'm sorry, with the Sanguine Axe, right? This one. Power Axe deals three times wielder strength bonus damage to bleeding targets. So that kind of lines up. You're going to be in melee. You can shoot off a range shot if you're an arch militant and then hit with that axe. And that'll hit pretty hard. But we don't have Abelard with us. So we'll just save first and let's go. I guess we're going to finally talk to the Inquisitor. Should be pretty good. I don't see anything on the sides. Deactivate the shield. The Lord Inquisitor is expecting the rogue trader below. You just like punch that thing. Wow. Rise to the top or get left in the dust. The surviving soldiers bear grave wounds inflicted by Gauss weapons. Even the most skilled chirurgeon would likely be powerless to heal them. Epitaph. A bulky device whose machine spirit is continuously weaving a protective force field. This must be what is holding the Zenus at bay. But looking at its unsteady flickering, one cannot help but wonder how long this barrier will last. Keep your wits about you. All right, here we go. So this takes us lower into the tomb? Why would we want to go into the tomb? Can we just, like, exterminate us the whole world? Will that work? Just loose the planetary virus? Okay. Oh. Uh, 
That's a lot of Inquisition in here. I don't... What are they doing? Are they going to use it like a hive mind and like put the tech blight and it transmits to all the other pyramids and destroys all the Necron for all time? That kind of thing? I mean, that sounds something like they do. Plausible. Is there money to be made? Force access. What the heck? Oh my god. Oh my god. Wow, what the heck's going on? I guess the tech blight is making this whole pyramid go to crap. Uh... What? What? Wow, those are the best. Those are really good looking enemies. My God, I've never seen such amazingly handsome enemies in my life. Reality bubbles before you and bursts with an agonizing shriek. A few silhouettes now stand in your way. Three of them seem to have your face. And yet the differences are striking. Each has been marked by other accomplishments and different experiences, making you feel like the protagonist of a tale about a pair of twins separated at birth. Oh my god! Emperor, bestow strength upon me to smite yet another obstacle as I carry out your will. Heck yes! My master changer of ways is this of your making? No! I can feel it is not! You're not playing tricks on me, you are <laughs> sending me prey for a great sacrifice. Heck yes! Is there some ironic lesson in what's going on? Should I be looking in the mirror a little less, bunnies? Or perhaps try to look at myself from the outside? Or is this a hint on my own worst enemy? <laughs> I shall blunder this in my memoirs. Heck yes! Wow, look at where your doppelgangers came from. But the blatant abuse of the fabric of existence is causing the motes of reality to flare up. You see the mirages of the coronus expanse in their glow, altered past recognition by the decisions you've made, or could have made, in some other world. Oh boy, I'm looking at... I'm looking at HP in the mirror, heck yes! <laughs> I'm telling him to change his ways, but it couldn't be any clearer. If you want to make all the alternate worlds a better place, then you better look at yourself and make a change, you know what I'm saying? Oh god. Okay, well, address the arrogant copy. Wait, I'm talking to myself? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, you, weird, totally not me, seem to think you're better than the rest of us, don't you? <laughs> and yet I was the only one clever enough to become the master of my own fate. And I'm handsome. And not be reduced to someone else's plaything or a slave to dogma. Like you, noob. <laughs> Heck yes. Why do you even seek to enter the crypt? I came to claim the treasure! I'm the bunny man, baby! Whatever it is, Theodora found it, which makes it mine! Xavier will regret trying to steal from my dynasty. Heck yes! The doppelganger smirks. Your doppelganger's slightly accelerated speech, jerky movements, and the sweet twinkle in his eyes suggest that he's been having too much candy and has been jacking himself up with a bunch of carrot juice. And I become very principled and vengeful where my treasure hoard is concerned. <laughs> oh my god. Well, I wonder how you even acquired such an ego, you dick. <laughs> you can't hurt me with your words. The lack of pointless advice, I presume. On the day Conrad killed Theodora, all of her officers died with her. Including Mort, Abelard, Dedira, Ravor, Vigdis, just meant more loot for me. And when I came into my inheritance, which was rightfully mine, there was no one to teach me how to be a funny trader. So I taught myself. And looted everything. I handled everything myself and found out who Theodore von Valentius really was. A narcissistic, unscrupulous, self-serving who lied to everyone. I admit I regretted not getting the chance to know her better. Plus, I'm better looking. I embraced her principles, realized literally everyone in the Corridan's Expanse was out to take advantage of me. So I took advantage of them. The Drusians, the pirates, I took all their loot and raised my reputation to them to the max. The Adeptus Mechanicus, the Gasbalica, Kalgazar, Uralon. I mean, they're all noobs. And so the puppet pulled at the strings and made its master dance. Well, guess what? I'm the master now, baby. I dare say things turned out well for me. Ah, uh, to Siphony, my sworn friend and the most overbearing shrew in all of the expanse. Of course, you're here as well. The copy nods meaningfully at Kasha. Well, nice to see you in the thick of things as usual. The mention of the former Novator of the house makes Kasha flinch. What? What? I, I, I think you mistake me for someone else. Indeed, in this rancid reality, you're some kind of, well, pathetic parody of yourself, and nowhere near as beautiful. 
Oh, God. An ego-inflated crackhead. That's right. That's right. Number one, crazy ego-driven narcissistic drug addict. Have you even achieved much without loyal allies? I mean, indeed I have. Why, well, I'm the most influential bunny in the entire expanse. Caligus was slain by the Zenus and his successor, Evane, became my puppet. Incendia chases pirates, not realizing it's me who's raiding your colonies. <laughs> Man, I was able to make a pact with the Cabal of the Reaving Tempest against Calcazar, forcing him to flee. I mean, I undertook a dozen expeditions into the unknown, moved the dynasty capital football, named Lede my governor, and made Hieronymus a cardinal. Not too bad for a little bunny man, wouldn't you say? Dude, you are a parody of me. What the hell has gotten into you? I mean, you're like the epitome of hubris, greed, and brazenness. I know, ain't it great? This is what being a bunny trader is all about. You simply lack the imagination to grasp it. Emperor, what an insufferable... Smug, arrogant, childish. How can a single bunny trader embody everything that we loathe? Well, let's... Okay, don't be so harsh, Heinrichs. I mean, maybe we all have a little bit of that in us, right? HB Multiverse was born. He's surprisingly successful. <laughs> so, address the cursed copy. So, one of my versions chose to serve the arch enemy. I do not serve... I reign. You grovel, but I dominate and rise ever higher. Heck yes. Adira opens her mouth and you see the blackness between her teeth in place of her tongue. A hundred otherworldly warp voices speak instead of her voice. The master requests a sacrifice. A living sacrifice. Toss them into the... Their paths will be unraveled and woven into yours. Oh my god. Why did you even come to Epitaph? My master, the changer of ways, directed me here and revealed my destiny. Heck yes. This is where I will cut short the life of the Corpse Emperor's Champion and claim the greatest trophy of all. This is where I am fated to become one with the war. Because after all, how else am I going to be the most powerful bunny man alive? Look, I wonder at what point your soul was tainted by heresy. <laughs> It happened on the day Conrad Voigtveer wounded me with a cursed blade. He only wounded my pride. I mean, from then on, I started hearing voices. I used to hear voices, but these were like different voices. Fortunately, my companion Adira taught me how to avoid going insane, and I began to listen. She said, you're already insane, just embrace it, and heed her wisdom. They revealed secrets to me and whispered dark rituals. I raided the Von Valencia's crypt because I'm a gamer, I loot everything. I made a dark offering of Theodora's skull because I'm a gamer. They gave me the option, and I enslaved her spirit because that's just funny. I learned all of her dark, dirty secrets, all of her lies. I saw the full picture and realized the only strongest survive in the Expanse, and any strength is good enough to survive. And I went incredibly good looking. In short, you've gone from being a bunny trader to being a piece of crack and This is very interesting, but shut up. Alfar shifts his gaze to you. I have just realized I've not given your spiritual fortitude the credit it deserves, Eightvater. Oh my god, stop commenting on the different parts of my character. Have you even achieved much on your profane path? <laughs> oh, I have! My empire is no paltry protectorate. It stretches across Winterscale's domain and the worlds of Korda. With my brother, Kunrad as regent, together we rule many planets. I deceived Urulan the Fool, banished him from the Expanse. After subverting his cult, I taught the Brazen Drukari a lesson by sending the Orcelio Navigators into Komarag. <laughs> Man, that was fun. To cause the most powerful dysfunction, disjunction in history. I thought that one up myself. On Quetzaltamir, I struck down the Furious Kalagos, a rival for the favor of the Dark Gods, and used his blood to make a pact with the Edge of Daybreak, my illustrious teacher. Blood for the Blood Bunny God. Am I right? Emperor, why do you so rarely send me heretics who are this eager to confess? My job would be so much easier. How Cecilia would never swear allegiance to someone like you. We follow his light and your twisted chaos incarnate. Guys, look, under different circumstances, we could have become allies. <laughs> Student and mentor at best. Plus, I'm more handsome. Need I explain who would have been the mentor? Jesus Christ. Why does it look like my graphics card? 
Oh, look, he's a Chaos Mutant. And Tazine's just got... Address the pious copy. Hey, your faith seems to be stronger than that of us all combined. I remember in whose name the sacred warrant was granted. I remember by whose hand I'm ordained to exist. I believe, and my faith is... What? Congratulations to all of me who had all of the faith. It's a bright light driving back the darkness, you see. But your faith is cold embers, and when I look at you, I feel ashamed. Oh, oh come on. Well, where did... I can't even with you. <laughs> wow, such strong faith commands respect. I'm ready to acknowledge your repentance and dispense justice. The bunny way. Oh, my... Look, this situation has become complicated. How are we going to resolve this? We shall fight. I sense your soul's greedy interest in what is hidden in this crypt, and I will not let you take possession of this blasphemous thing. Ah, but I see we outnumbered you compared to you, doppelganger. I think it'd be wise to join forces. Topple you first, resolve the conflict between those who've survived, and get all the loot. I concur. We'll finish off the one with the biggest retinue first and decide who's worthy of the prize. However, I already know who it's going to be. It's going to be this guy. <laughs> yes. Look, I'm giving you a chance to settle this affair peacefully and avoid self-destruction. Like literally, in every sense of the word. A great deed is not accomplished by peacemaking. It is accomplished by spilling blood for the bunny god with a righteous hand, baby. Oh, dear God, live on stream. I apologize in advance, but I need to slap the righteous version. <laughs> well, apparently we are really strong. Oh my God, did we just game the system? How are we this strong? Oh, we brought Argenta the Scourge. Holy crap, she's got sunglasses. Wait, does she really? She's either blind or she has sunglasses on. She went full Trinity. Oh my God. Savor the kill. Destroy the weak. <laughs> War him. Run and gun. Revel in slaughter. Finish the job. Combat master. Oh yeah. They did Argenta well. Oh my God. Well, let's send Argenta against everybody. How about that? And the thing is, all these HBs made a serious mistake. They're all deciding to fight on the front line. Everybody knows the real bunny man would fight from way back there where they can't even see me. <laughs> Heck yes. All right, let's go. Which ability do you have? Yes. Oh, I think her eyes are... Oh, they're burned out. How is she supposed to shoot anything? She's not Jet Li. Well, maybe she might be. Maybe we'll send this guy against Cursed Chaos. We'll have this Argenta face off against herself. We'll have Heinrichs... Heinrichs can... Heinrichs can do Heinrichs stuff. I mean, Heinrichs doesn't really do much. He'll just chill there. We'll have Pascal, who will see them all. And HB uh, will be back here. All right, great. <laughs> H I'm the king of the world. This is like Jet Li when he's in that prison planet. Man, great. Okay, well, I'm definitely going to buff myself first. Yellow. Can I Can I do that, actually? Uh, nope, I'm out of range. What if we get Kaja to move here? Check HB first. The evil Scarlet. one? Why? This, this one? Glorious cursed he has destroy the weak savor the kill he's got a life draining sword oh i remember that one the heretical one i couldn't equip daemonopathy once per battle he may choose an ally and grant them 20 bonus to all characteristics power from beyond the veil all weapons on the battlefield become warp imbued gaining bonus damage equal to the veil degradation wow i'm really doing stuffs glorious reflection Panoply of the Assassin. Each round, the wearer's dodge is increased by 10% until the end of combat. This effect resets after any attack made on the wearer. Oh, okay. That's easy. And oh, he's got the auto-striking power sword. So if we go into melee, he's going to automatically strike back every time he parries. Yeah. All of them about have 2,000 each. Well, we can change that very quickly. All we got to do is buff HP first. We'll give him the chance to hide. I mean, get into a commanding position of the battlefield. This is the way the real bunny man would fight. And then she shall go back to her I corner and contemplate how she can better tactics. serve. Okay, great. Now HP will provide some bonuses Who to the holy me? Argenta. He will now give her the authority to do amazing things. I'll see to it personally. And now the real HP will command the battlefield. <laughs> Yes, yes. All right, here, willpower. 
If you insist, Lord Those Captain. fake HP apparently didn't learn. That's right. Should probably kill the glorious one, Argenta, Adira, and the other two. How about we kill them all? I think that's the right call. Uh, we should probably let Isn't Pascal go so he can help us. We shall then bring it down to Pascal. Okay. He can then give us machine spirit communion so that we basically have incredible recoil control. Yellow. There we go. And then he shall now mark each of the HPs. <laughs> This is so cool. Yes, this is it. Okay, you get marked. You're also prey. You, sir, are prey. And since this guy's super dodgy, we'll make him easier to hit. There we go. Good job, Pascal. Now you may hide. Okay, we shall put... Actually, I'm going to put... Yeah, we'll, we'll put... Yeah, we'll put this here. This is going to be the damaging zone. This is going to be the front line right here. Isn't this a job for the We're going to move left to right here. I'm a little worried. I feel like I should take care of Argenta first, but I mean, she's blind. I think she's blind. I see a little thing on top of her right here that looks like an eye with a line through it. Is she really blind? Oh, I think you're right. How did that happen? I didn't do that. I don't know. Oh, well. Sucks to be them. Uh, can we group up most of them right here? Me. If you insist, Lord Why did I not this? Oh, they didn't, they did not succumb to the movement. What if we if drop their willpower and their toughness? Now they're, oh, oh, so they may be able to move a little bit. I am a navigator, not a service. Yes. Body the corrupted mind. Wow, I sound Me. awesome. If you insist, Lord Captain, I know. <laughs> Here, have some fun. If I may. This is so cool. If only that were possible. All right, all right, all right. Now you're more susceptible to warp. I probably should have done this first. Hold. Oh, Adira. Oh! Oh my god! Wow! Okay, she needs to die. Oh my god! Jesus! Oh. A cursed HP. Oh, he's an assassin. Yes! Go, Ulfar! Daemonopathy. Breakthrough. Endure. So he's a melee character. Reckless strike. Uh oh. What's coming next? Power from beyond the veil. God Emperor, move through me. Here comes blind Argenta. What? You're not going to shoot. You just shot HB. What are you doing? I mean, even I like him. Lynchpin strong. Oh, she's a master tactician. War him. Run and gun. Oh, she still has shots left in her. Oh, she took the damage to get the reset on the cooldown. She's shooting for the real HB. Glorious HB. Sworn enemy to Ulfar. Stri huge strike to Ulfar. Forceful strike. Righteous HB. This is hilarious. Oh, he's got bolters too. Oh, Targenta. Hunt the prey. Okay, so he's a bounty hunter. Piercing resolution. I don't know what that is. Run and gun. He can still shoot. And he doesn't. Okay, so curious. What kind of weapon does he have? Improved heavy. Can I loot this from him? <laughs> this is the last. So you know how the Fellowship of the Void has a weapon at the very end, the very last maximum rank? That's it. Can I please have that? <laughs> Can I loot my own self? I mean, I sure hope so. Yeah, right? Okay, okay, okay. That's it. You've all screwed up. That's what you've done. All right? I realize putting her here means that we can't effectively engage these guys, but she can't miss on single shots. Let's just remember that. So she's going up to rapid fire. She's going to... Ooh, should I... If I get the shot, am I gonna... I guess I should probably get the line on her, on him. Ooh, I don't want to 
kill him. Okay, maybe let's... Gosh, darn it. Okay, we're gonna... Uh, I'm totally gonna kill him, huh? Controlled shot? I still have a chance of hurting him, even with controlled shot? How about this? I'm missing on purpose. Oh, I forgot they got AoE damage. All right, reload. So we're going to do Fire Mastery, those singleton shots. We should be able to drop two HPs in a turn. Shot to the Cursed. Oh, yeah, that's one HP down. Oh, my God. And the next. And the next. Hold. We're going to go in and stack up on the Blind Argenta. We're going with insight to build perception we're gonna get the uh, perfect spot if we've got it we don't hold wild hunt oh she gets to go wow cleanses the body. they get extra turns too apparently okay so let's see inspire to i guess i should probably come down from my palace All right, we, we actually need to be in range. So I'm going to stack up on uh, our boy here. On it. Oh, I guess I can't. Do I have to actually see him? Okay, fine. For whatever comes. I'll make it happen. Wow, that didn't work. Okay, fine. Uh, Heinrichs, Kaja. We'll buff Kaja. Argenta. We'll actually give her some health back good as strong point we'll give her more damage i'll make it happen we'll mark the objective oh we can't see it okay in that case i'm gonna mark the other I'll hp with the improved heavy bolter and we'll now give oh, i can't give all far a turn from here Oh, that's a bummer. Oh, well, I'll give you it to Argenta. Feel to witness this. <laughs> you should feel honored to witness this. I'll Shot. I can still fight. How's he doing? His health is going way down. Okay, uh, can we move in range and, like, kick this guy or something? Because I forgot she gets a bunch of... All right, kick him. Faith without deeds I forgot about the AOE. Exactly. I'm killing... Um, I'm killing Alfar. So... Let's flip it over. Heavy Bolter does not have that problem. So... Shot. There we go. We drop. We got Pascal. It's coming over. I cover. Stack on... Righteous Reflection. One more HP left. Perfect spot. And we shall raid. Hold. She still gets to go. We shall run and gun. It's coming around to the open. Get the best angle she can. Wildfire. And shot down range. Do Adira. And AoE to Argenta. There's just one. Faith without deeds is worthless. Revel and Slaughter. Singleton. Shot. The Emperor commands, <laughs> Singleton will not miss. Shot. Oh my god, the detonation. Jesus! Is that it? Oh my god. So here's the thing. We need to loot them. Poor Alfar. I didn't mean to. We're going to take all. Oh my god, we can take their stuff. Oh my god, we can take their stuff. Oh my god, does that mean we get an improved heavy bolter for a bow? Oh, yes, we do. Holy Always crap. Wow, we drive. cheated somehow. This is amazing. Okay. Oh my god. Is this real? Wow, that's... Where, 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 where? Where are you? Where are you, you beautiful beast? Oh my... <laughs>
Each kill with a weapon increases the rate of fire by one. Oh, it's on. <laughs> Imperial Pride. Damage against Zenus, Psychers, and Servants of Chaos increased by plus four. Judex, yes. Hymn of Vehemence. Oh, that's that's one I had. Well, what about... Does Alfar have anything? Yeah, Noah Star tastes things here because he's already. I mean, he's. Eruption! What the heck is this? A Melta. All target hit by this weapon's area attack deal 25 energy damage to everyone in a two cell radius. Sure. Why not? Oh! Okay. What about Pascal? Pascal has new stuff, right? He's got... Oh, yeah, there's Imperial Pride. Auto-striking... Oh, can we have two auto-striking power swords? Oh, my God. Wow. And then there's the anti-vehicle revolver. <laughs> anti-vehicle revolver. On a successful hit, the shot explodes. It deals 20 impact damage to everyone in AoE around the target. I mean... I can use that too. I mean, that seems cool. God, I want to use everything. God, it's like the end of the game. Why are you giving me all these cool things? I mean, I guess because they can. There's there's no point in holding back anymore. You know what I mean? Oh, man. I, I want to use it all. Well, what we can do is auto-striking power sword. And then we can use anti-vehicle AoE revolver. It, uh... <laughs> Maybe give a pair of that to Jai. I mean, she's not here, though. I would, but she's not here. Did I forget? Did they have armor? Oh, my God. They've got armor. Wow. Car Carcerkin Malaeus Body Glove. 15% dodge against Zenith enemies. We've got... Oh, what? Oh, is this her? Wait, what? Does she have new... This is different. After using a heroic act... The wearer immediately uses War Him or Furious Recital regardless of cooldown. Versus each critical hit or kill grants the wearer 5% critical hit chance and critical damage and attack that misses the target resets the bonus. Oh! She's got her own... What? I mean, this looks cool, but I mean, this does not fail. If she misses... It resets the bonus, which I'm honestly like, I mean, it's just cool to try new things. Wow, that's cool. What about Ulfar? Did I doubt it because, I mean, he already had that. Yeah, he's got Blood Craver. So she's got new armor. She's got a new bolter. We've got this boy. We've got, well, he's got his thing. I mean, just because it looks cool. They've got the glove, the void suit, all of that. Uh, he's got power armor. She has her perception thing that's kind of unbeatable and then i've got this armor wow this is crazy and then is there anything at all is the cloak wow this is cool there's a trinket that gives extra crit damage for dual pistols yes yes more likely because the final boss is gonna a divine comedy well we get to go to level 52 before engaging them so what do we got here uh god we can do anything we want huh i mean lead by example that's totally us <laughs> more than possible bring it down move 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 yeah we can we can tell people to move that's fine and then we might as well go contagious luck to everybody great uh we got pascal we've got ballistic calculation oh 15 percent extra damage in, in instant exposure we've got all of his regular i like the move at the beginning if he wants to get into melee uh, we've got, I like the machine spirit scan protocols, increase the stacks with the machine spirit communion on the enemy. Uh, we've got Kaja, leaders assault more than possible, per personal oversight. I mean, if we're going to keep buffing the same person and then, oh my God, they're really giving us everything. Well... We, she has, might as well give her, well, willpower's not going to help her. Combat Master, Dual Weapon, Dueling Mastery, Grenadier, 
nimble. There, dodge more. Okay, go. <laughs> She's already dodgery do. And then we've got our boy. I mean, uh, at this point, just you're stronger together. There. And you you know heresy. So Blade of Light's not going to help you. Obscured Threat, Psychic Barrage. Let's go for... That's Biomancy. Well, does he have bolter weapon base? I know, power, because he's currently wielding a power weapon. There we go. Great. Uh, Alfar. He's got heavy weapons right now. I guess, I'm pretty sure I gave him heavy gunner. I did. Does he have overpower or anything? I mean, at this point, does it matter? <laughs> pretty strong we'll go enough bullets for everyone and i just want to double check we have we do have overpower oh we need heavy weapon proficiency we don't have heavy weapon pro are you kidding me wow i didn't realize oh because it has to do with strength oh that's a that's lame that, that's not going to get us anything right now so we'll just go in and say power weapon expert oh no no that's what ah he's got the axe right is that count as a power weapon? Right now, his axe is... Power weapon. That's great. Yeah, we'll totally do that. That's awesome. So he can now be even stronger with his axe. So we'll start with... He's got heavy gunner. Enough bullets for everyone. There it is. And... Power weapon expert. Perfect. And then we got one more. We got Argenta. She gets stronger, apparently. She already went Demolition Engineer, Combat Medicaid, Rack and Ruin, Rapid Reload, Swift Slaughter, Tactical Disengage, Trace of Trajectory. Let's go for... Ooh. Oh, she already got Flash Fire. That makes sense. And... I know she has Overpower and Breaking Point. Yeah, she does. So right now we gave her a bolter and we gave her a heavy bolter. So no need for anything else. I mean, she can get nimble. Let's just get nimble. So she'll dodge even more. Why not? All right, great. We're all stronger. This is excellent. We probably want to make sure that we Join can heal prayer. that injury on our guy right here, Olfar. He's good now. He's back on finish. top. So let's get armed. Let's get ready. Your replacement full up. We're topped off. Let's just not wow, we have a lot of stuff. This is crazy. Okay, save. There's a... I'm guessing we have to fight against the Inquisitor. Oh, there is so much to loot. Why is there so much to loot? I didn't notice. Wow, they just got stuff everywhere. What is all this? They gave us a Vindicare Assassin's weapon. Oh, what is... What? What? I thought that was it. How did they give us so many cool things right at the very end? Why would you do this? Whoa. Okay, I just assume that those are all... No, 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 no. Stop. Stop. <laughs> I don't want to... I, I, I need to take a look at some things first. <laughs> Keep your wits about you. Holy crap. There's so much stuff here. Uh, we'll go to this one first because it's it's up here. Wow, they gave us an Exodus rifle. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that looks plasma. I always keep my options open. Okay, before we accidentally trigger everything, hold new is to oldest. So right now we've got Cruciatum Litany. Every wearer's single attack gains plus 10% damage for each negative effect on the target. Uh, let's, yeah, yeah. Incandescent Storm. What? Every attack action with a plasma gun is a separate cooldown. All of this plasma gun's attack actions can be used in a single turn. Okay. The wearer gains a number of unyielding beacons that... Oh, that's Abelard. He's not here. The wearer does not lose elusive effect. That's... That's Irliet. She's not here. Oh, well, I'm definitely using this. My god. I... 
grants plus 25% hit chance if the wielder has at least Iconoclast Zealot damage increased by 30% of your momentum. Well, I, I'm not a Zealot, unfortunately, but yes! Okay, so I think that's it. Yeah, that, that's all the new stuff there. I see the Inquisitor has his fingers in many. Yes, he does. A lot of pots. So many pots right now. We're, we're going to head on down and see what's there. Where is it taking us? Oh, what is this? To the top, poor girl left in the dust. Demolition. The tech blight has barely affected the bridge, but almost completely devastated the Zenith structures below. I don't know. I mean, this maybe it looks like this all the time. I always have a backup plan. Lore Zenith. Can I not look at it? Oh, there we go. There we go. 25% multi-key. As soon as you touch the obelisk, disjointed streams of alien information flood your mind, making you nauseous. Oh, we have, we apparently are really low, Lord Zenus. They're fighting against Necron. They finish the Necron. Lord Inquisitor, we are progressing according to plan. Our troops have already reached the target. Okay, so they all won and charged in. Oh, weird. So I guess we can trigger sort of what happened here if we had a high enough Lord Zenith. Uh, Keep and then here. About you. Unnatural energies torment the Zenith's dead body, destroying and reconstructing it over and over. There's a turret down there, but we're going to be on the bad side of it. Can we come down this way? Oh, nope, there's a turret over there, too. Oh, boy. Oh. Duty prevails. All right, she blew the turret. She blew the turret. Oh, we can shoot the generator. I Interesting. Keep my options open. Well, let's go ahead and repair this I'm injury. Restless. I wish we could just do it from here, but we'll get this singleton use right there on herself is a holy there we go and then replace this here are we in a blackout mission what do you mean oh because you got to get rid of the turrets and stuff wow well we grabbed that wow this place is huge we're like right next to this pyramid thing now A lot of dead people. A lot of nice equipment. The destructive web of the tech blight is spreading along the walls of the crypt. Always keep your eye on the prize. I don't know if we can turn to engage us. Uh, I want to... Oh, yeah, we can use our Melta. <laughs> oh my god is the gate. it's got one shot in it wow uh yes yeah that's that's something oh my god uh, that was a one shot well that's hilarious all right we're moving we're moving is there money we've cleared made? both sides down the middle as anybody would obviously do there's a destroyer's body and we're going somewhere. We just keep going lower. Underneath the pyramids. How did he bring us from different dimensions? Did he know he was doing that? Was that on purpose? Or did they just appear here because they we all had the same idea that we wanted to loot? Oh my god. They did say they wanted to talk to us, right? Alright, we're here. 
Inquisition Tech Sorcist. The Inquisitor is waiting. Keep your Inquisition Veteran. The Inquisitor is waiting. And there he is. But what else is out here? Can I just walk by and look around? I always keep what my the options open. heck is this? Oh! What is that? The air around the yoke, a powerful device created by humans and Zenus, is thrumming with tension. Wait, we were working with... They were working with Zenus? I guess Rise they did the kind of bring in... Left in the he did say... Oh, yeah, that's right. She did say that the Drukari were coming in and it made her sick. A low hum emanates from the master machine that combines the mind of the Imperium with the taint of Zenatech. What the heck is going on? All right, I guess we'll talk to the guy. Inquisitor Enforcer... What does he have? Rogue Trader, the Lord Inquisitor is expecting you. Finding the balance between watching streamers and getting I yourself when you have... Oh, yeah. I understand. Well, here we are. I see that you did not heed my warnings, HBFT. Your decision to come here in spite of them may have consequences. But we still have a chance to turn it to everyone's advantage. If your lordship, Bunnyman, listens to me very carefully. Master Van Kalox, I'm pleased to see you. How was your journey? Illuminating, Lord Inquisitor. Heinrich's tone would have frozen anyone else solid, but not Calcazar. What are you even doing here? Exactly what my duty dictates. Saving the Imperium. Isn't it obvious? Point at the Zena construct. Is that what you're here for? What is it? We call it a shard. And yes, as you have noted quite aptly, it is the reason I am here. This construct contains an ancient or rather a pre-ancient being of cosmic power. They were called the Catan. The entity is currently trying to escape, and I am here to collar it. Conkazar nods at the giant device, whose design clearly points to it having been brought into the crypt from outside. What is this Catan shard? And what is it even doing here? A specimen of an ancient predator race, devourers of pulsars, who feasted on star systems. Reality itself bent to their power. But many millennia ago, an ancient Zenus race managed to defeat them, shatter them into pieces, and lock them away in prisons like the one you see before you. Have you read Belisarius' Call, the great work? I have not, Lexicon. I have not. But what's kind of crazy is that I have a feeling they stole stars and brought them here so that it would draw the Catan to... Maybe they want to release the Catan to destroy... I'm so confused. And you think... You stand a chance against such power. Do you mean to say that a human is not capable of such a feat? But I am not just a human. I am an instrument of the Emperor's will, one of many, and the Imperium is omnipotent. If I were to fail, another would follow in my footsteps. That is how humanity makes the impossible possible, with the hands of particular people in particular circumstances. Your skepticism is unwarranted. How will taming this creature help save the Imperium? Over my years of service, I have come to realize the main problem that humanity faces in this war is the imbalance in power. Our opponents are not races or nations, but incomprehensible monsters. And it is high time we acquired one of our own. My yoke will bind this creature and make it a chained guard serving the Emperor. That is not the full extent of my vision. There are other shards similar to this one, scattered across the galaxy. I plan on seeking them out and combining them all inside the yoke. Each conquered monstrosity will bolster our defenses. What? You fought diamonds? But this is a god. Oh! Seeing as the inhabitants of this place almost killed you, I gather something went wrong with this plan of yours. Not at all. Operation Precious Sentinel is in its final stages. The increase in Zenith's activity is a vexing yet trivial development in the grand scheme of things. They were supposed to guard the device, 
but they slept through the intrusion and only the Catan shard's emanations could make them stir. Theodorus' research destabilized the shard's prison and my project only made it worse. Whenever particles of the Catan shard's energy seep out, many curious phenomena occur. The destruction of the crypt, the warp reality. When I tame the monster, I will order it to stop disrupting the laws of the universe. Oh, like that's just gonna... And that brings us to the most interesting part of our conversation. You know my plan. So now I want to know yours. Will you admit that I am in the right and join me in this undeniably ambitious act? Or will you try to stop me? I will be upfront with you. If it is the latter, I will be forced to remove you. But I am sure you realize that already. Well, listen to yourself. What you were planning is heresy. I will not let you bring this insane plan to fruition. I am with you. Wake the beast and let us shackle it together. Okay, so... <laughs> so basically, there is a god inside. We want to wake the beast and fight a god so that we can shackle it. Which I'm sure... we can't do <laughs> and tell it to please stop messing up the universe and fight on our behalf I don't think it's gonna end well period so I'm not gonna let you <sighs> listen to yourself what you're planning is heresy enough HBFT it will only be heresy if I lose if I prevail, it will be a triumphant feat in the name of saving humanity from the horrors of this universe. And I will not lose. I'm not going to let you bring this insane plan to fruition. Heinrichs, eliminate the rogue traitor. Kalkasar gazes at the unmoving interrogator. Heinrichs, he's gone mad. I'm just going to say nothing. After a brief pause, Heinrichs nods and responds gravely. I no longer recognize your authority, Lord Inquisitor. My apologies. In that case, Heinrichs von Kalox, in the name of the Ember, I hereby revoke your inquisitorial privileges and declare you excommunicate traitorous. The punishment for your heresy is death. I bid you farewell. The Inquisitor nods calmly. There is not a shred of hatred or disappointment on his face. Farewell then. I am glad to have made your acquaintance, HBFT. Despite everything, he glances at his retinue. Eliminate the bunny trader. Well, make an example out of you. Crush him. So this guy, Holy Inquisition Presence, the Inquisitor's aura decreases the psi rating of psychers within four cell radius by two. Oh, he's got Roaring Thunder. I know what that does. Exhilarating speed. The creature's movement points have been increased until the end of combat. Current movement points are 12. Okay, so we can go very far. We've got 13 enemies on the board. If we can pick a corner, fight to the corner, flip around, get all the enemies in front of us. Or, oh, of course they level us up, but we didn't... Oh, we can't apply the point. All right, fine. All right, Kaja. We'll get her over here. We'll get all far with a multi-melta. <laughs> we'll get Argenta on the front line. We'll get Pascal. We'll get Heinrichs. I mean, he's a psyker. I want to keep him away. And then we'll get HB, who shall command valiantly from over here. Okay, great. Behind cover. <laughs> Let's do it. All right, Kaja, stack up. If you insist, we'll immediately you give to... actions to... I'm going to give them to Pascal. I'm not accustomed to being ordered around. Machine Spirit Communion, we will affect the Inquisitor as well. We'll mark Prey. We'll mark Prey on his Enforcer. And we will also mark Prey on an easy one next to us. And then just so we can easily hit him, we'll go hot on the trail on the Inquisitor himself. That'll end the turn. Goes to Kasha. Kasha holds. We'll give the stack to Argenta. Actually, I kind of want to see what the new weapons can do. So I'll give Allfar a little bit of a boost. And we'll give him a chance to shoot it. On it. 
He's not like fully buffed or anything, but should be good. Reckless Rush. Wildfire. So he can send a single shot or he can send a area attack. All right. burning 10 stacks <laughs> that's that's frightening all right i like it uh we'll follow up with a <laughs> oh that's awesome all far oh yes give me a little bit of a kick oh yeah <laughs> heck yes oh uh... That's so satisfying. Can we can we dash over to the other side? I don't know. Will he let us? All right, we'll just we'll hide over here. If you can hide with a Space Marine's body, and uh, hang tight. There we go. Great. All right, we got HP. He's got the Exodus Long Laz, and he's got the Necron Shotgun. Wow, that's so cool. I mean, let's let's relocate a bit back here. <laughs> back here. Run, run away hold all right kaja stack up give all for a buff give willpower to argenta she now has the improved heavy bolter oh my god i forgot can we group up as many people okay she's gonna step out Emperor, for a second we'll group up as many people as possible Oh, he's resisting. He's resisting. Waking nightmare. Tag Me? both. If you insist, Lord Captain. God, his he's resistant as hell. All right, make him Isn't this a job for warp cursed. Zap him one. I am a navigator, not a servant. Dear God. All right, we'll make this the, uh, we'll hold. Can we move him closer? Isn't this a job or I guess sex? we're moving the enforcer to the corner. Put him in a fear if zone. Attack of opportunity. Beautiful. All right, all right, all right. Um, Argenta. This a job for the serfs? So she finally gets to go. We're going to go ahead and line this up. I'll do it. She has her improved heavy bolter. Faith Reckless rush. Is Each kill gives her plus one rate of fire until end of combat. So we need to actually kill. I'll so rapid fire. I guess we could start with I a small people not. over here. Wildfire. 20% sixty percent. Or I can just work the big guy. We'll work the big guy. Shot. The Emperor commands. <laughs> that that'll do. That'll do. Are right, we got that? We got that. Heck, let's just. Oh my God, she's still going. Okay. Uh, joint analysis. We want to get the perception going. We're gonna stack on Xavier. I guess we can totally grab from these guys. I should have done this earlier. And hold. She's up. She currently has In rate of fire light, eight. Oh, rate of fire ten. Pray. Shot. So we need to kill as many of the small ones as possible. Now it's rate of fire twelve. Shot. So all the small people we can kill, the better. Shot. The now the rate of fire is now fourteen. Oh my god. Doubt is for the weak. Rate of fire is now 16. I'll do it. This is why I was chosen. All right, let's just hit them all. So that every time I hit this guy and remove his stack, it's going to boost Pascal permanently. Faith his perception by five. I'll Shot. He's still on his knees. Okay, boost up. Our rate of fire capped out at 16, it looks like, so far. 
Okay, so HB's back. We can inspire. I guess we should probably get out from our hidey hole. <laughs> I have strategy. We can buff Pascal. We can air of authority. Go this ahead and inspire stuff. Argenta. More resolve. Oh, not me. And we are going to boost with Inquisitor's Decree. We'll go in and give a full turn to uh, Ulfar. Reckless Rush. The and the Hellbrute Horn Trophy. So and we're going in with a charge. Actually, walk it up. You, Swing. Oh, okay, so he's like in some kind of uh, field. So let's work the rest. Go for the throat. He's on the ground. <laughs> what is that? Burst. Shot. Enemy down. Okay, we've got six. Oh, there we go. Enemy down. Relocate with all of the kills. He's getting more movement. Shot. Enemy down. Revel and slaughter. Dash out. Run and gun. Relocate. Rapid fire. Wildfire. Shot. Oh. Hang tight. On it. We've got 44 stacks, tactical advantage, and Exodus. Not bad. Not bad. Anyone who can shoot this guy, please kill him. Here's my perfect moment. <laughs> oh my god! Wow, okay. Uh, that that's cool. All right. Let's go. Let's go. We've got some guys back there still. Mark them. Raid. Hold. Hold. Pasha, hold. Okay, now we get a turn for Agenta. Guided by faith. It's over. <laughs> it's over. It is over. Revel in Slaughter. She got 236. Reckless Rush. 14 stacks. Rapid Fire. 28 shots on the burst. Wildfire, so she can stack versatility. It's got 84 health. As the Emperor commands, I act. I'm going to play this again one day and I'm going straight down the Fellowship of the Void. This is insane. All right, shot. For the weak. And the last but not judges. least. This is unacceptable. Power resides in the will of the righteous. Shot. I'll do it. Oh, there. Oh, God. No, it is too early. The yoke must be activated or all is lost. Oh, Nomos. No kill like overkill. That's right. An invisible yet clearly tangible aura of power envelops the figure clad in the robes of a tech priest. It is all the more baffling to hear a youthfully excited voice from under the hood. This, this is, is it. it. The place of our origin. origin. Wait, was he... Is he like a manifest Catan? Nomos's gaze is trained upon the Catan shard. It, it was, was your strike. strike. And your wish to escape your prison that begot us. The mysterious creature that has been your ship's soul for so long turns to face you. But it is you, HBFT, who truly ushered us into this world. So let us meet our abominable precursor together, for it is ready to break free. Uh, what are you talking about? Can you not talk in riddles? We are out of time. Now. It escapes now wait why is he still what is he 
Why are you letting it out? What are you doing? Oh, it's like a... It's naked. He eats stars? Uh... He said it escaped... What? I don't think my computer can handle this. I wasn't ready for this jelly. Is that it? Cliffhanger. Oh, we get to fight it. Okay, cool. The sun to power converges. Oh. <laughs> oh. Plummeting star. Oh, he's going to shoot stars at me. Time's arrow. Disperse. The Catan Shard teleports the enemies to random positions across the... I mean, it doesn't matter. We all shoot things. Flow inversion. A cone-shaped area attack directed at the enemy who last dealt damage to the Catan Shard. Oh, what? Unraveling reality. The Catan Shard creates various copies of itself. <laughs> Dimensional swap. The Catan Shard swaps positions with one of its copies. Quantum cognition. As long as any shard copy or the energy orb remain each time it is attacked the katan shard will gain a stack of reconceptualization and trigger reflective retribution on the oh so the i'm guessing the more damage we do to it the more we do damage to ourselves we do a lot of damage uh that's not good and what the heck is up with this guy oh is he dead or is he just frozen in time he kind of looks like he's got a i don't know a little warp spike going through his chest there i guess we got to fight this thing okay what's the orb though is the orb around here somewhere? So right now I'm seeing the Catan Shard and the... Ka oh, it goes like every... F Holy crap, it goes so... Oh, and Nomos can attack too. Wow. All right. Well, let's get Kaja, Ulfar, Argenta. Actually, you know, maybe we stand behind Argenta a little bit. We'll have Argenta stand right there. Uh, Pascal... He's sort of melee-ish. HP behind high cover. Heinrichs to... Yeah, yeah. Heinrichs is stuffs. And, uh... All right. Cool. <laughs> okay. Well, let's, um... Same sequence. It seems to work so far. Why change now? Hold. Argenta. I'll make it up. The problem is with the improved heavy bolter, in a way, it's kind of worse, if you think about it, in this situation, because there aren't little enemies to kill. So she can't increase the rate of fire. I'm afraid not. Oh, we don't have line of sight to ya? Well power. Me? If you insist, Lord Captain. Voice of command. And Waking Nightmare. Isn't this a job for the serfs? That helps a lot. He still has 218% I'm not armor. To being ordered around. That's the front line. This is the rear. This is where you need to dodge. And we shall... Oh my god. All right. Step aside. Step up. The navigator is coming. Isn't this a job for the <laughs> Oh, we can move a god. Wow. Zap I him. I'm a navigator, not a son. Me. All right, Argenta. If you insist, Lord Captain. Reckless rush. <laughs> Rapid fire. Commands, I act. Wildfire. Send 14. Armor 186. Faith without deeds is worthless. I'm gonna keep this. Argenta gets to go win again. I she's like off the charts right now. If we keep shooting, she's not in a position to do serious, serious damage because he's got so much armor. But 
well bunnies all right deaths thanks so much for hanging out hope you have a great one and we'll catch you on the next one man have a good one we'll hold what is Bocanthus paradoxes all right so what i'm gonna do is give a turn to pascal because i need to stack this on him uh machine spirit communion approved. joint analysis apply prey hot on the trail we're gonna go ahead and inspire i'll see to it personally he's as good as done Air of authority. And now we'll give a turn. I believe he's at 168. Now we'll get actually, you know what? If I open up a shot, is everyone in line? We've got a firing line kind of, but we're going to hit each other. All right. I'm going to add all costs and I'll send out a ping Exodus, small ping, and we are going to trigger inquisitor's ring and extra turn to argenta so it's a little bit of a better situation 166 and argenta currently has 253 reckless rush rapid fire wildfire i don't know if devastating stacks on it but we might as well and burst out that is not the emperor's will wow okay okay let's keep bursting so currently if we look at his situation he's 50 stacks of castigating enemies that become targets of the navigator's power okay that's because of her staff Blood Augury, Undamn the Sea of Souls, Machine Spirit Communion, yes, Kill Squad, Hot on the Trails, Load, Prone, burn. He's Prone? I would not have guessed it. Suffers a negative 30% penalty to parry and dodge. All right, well, cool. I guess we'll just... This is based off of each shot with a bolter. Oh, yeah, rending damage, 40% armor penetration to adjacent... All right, we'll just keep shooting until we can't anymore. Shot. The emperor commands, I act. Dump the whole thing into him. Shot. Faith without deeds is worthless. <laughs> Hold. Hold. Uh. Hold. All far. Okay. Reckless rush. Coming to this side. We'll go ahead and send a. So it shall be. Hey, Falcons. I, I can't level, unfortunately. They I leveled up, but I can't utilize the level. Whoops. Burst up. Wildfire. And it's going to allow us to utilize this for free. Now the singletons have 50% more. If we give him a kick. <laughs> Eight damage. Okay, so if we use the special attack, it causes bleed. I don't know if that's even possible on a Catan shard. Hold. Nomos. And he just moved us. And he has copies. Okay, so Heinrich just got some kind of buff from Nomos. I don't know what it is. Nomos is boon. Increased ballistic skill, armor penetration, and damage dealt. Oh, that's nice. Well, let's go in and buff ourselves. Naturally. Okay, uh, sworn enemy on the copy. I won't object to it. Eroding shard copy. Okay, we're gonna enfeeble it. See to it. Warp speed on ourselves. We have the vehicle revolver now, which is cool. 
Poppy's lowers initial HP as it splits not... Oh, really? I don't know. It still looks about the same. It did say copy in the description, I think. But, I mean, I'd love it if it weren't and it did that. That would be awesome. I need a foothold. Swing. Oh, that's not a lot. <laughs> that's not a lot. We're actually going defensive. Cautious approach. Hold. Okay, Argenta is still... She's in a rearward position. That's excellent. We'll get behind cover. For the weak. I'll do it. Rapid fire. As the Wildfire. Comes, I act. Reload. And dump I'll it. Shot. The Emperor commands I act. Emperor. In thy light I stand. Fire and mastery. Three hundred. Okay, so she can definitely clear the copies. I don't know if this counts as a kill because a kill will actually raise the rate of fire. Currently, rate of fire is at nine. She sent in the shot on the copy. The copy is gone. That raises. That does count as a kill. So it works. And she gets the free shot. One fifty nine. Do not hurt him, or he will die. <laughs> So she can't shoot that way. She can shoot here, but there's a 95% chance we're going to hurt Heinrichs. Oh, God. Really? All right. Doubt Pull back. Weak. Can we get a different angle? Better. <laughs> Better. Shot. Rate of fire. Now 12. Excellent. Maybe we can over penetrate and hit. Nope. Oh my god. It's actually doing damage. Oh, oh, what is this? Energy orb. Oh, that's right. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. Oh, that's great. Energy orb. Cannot attack, immobilize, energy charge. Next turn, Katan Shard will explode the orb to deal lethal damage to all enemies. Okay, so we need to get rid of that. Okay, cool. Well, let's Power stack. In the of the Shot. All right, the orb's down. Hold. Oh! Oh, there it is. Wow. All right. All right. That's cool. <laughs> oh, my God. Where Where is Pascal? Okay, so Pascal, there's some cover here. We'll get behind half. We really need to drop some guys. So let's go in and stack disintegrating shard copy. There's too many copies right now. Eroding shard copy. And eroding shard. Oh, no, negative. Perfect spot. We've got a lot. And I repeat, a lot of action points. We are now going to grab whatever we can from these guys with tactical knowledge. Call the bolt. We can shoot all of these in one turn. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll hold. HP's up. We better help out, Heinrichs. <laughs> Poor guy. He's like so out of his depth right I'll now. See to it personally. We could move him too, which is kind of excellent. Heinrichs, go. We need you to relocate like pronto. I'll put my psychic abilities to use. Hold. HB. We are not. Oh, there we go. Inspire. 
It's as good as done. And we're actually going to hold on to Orchestrated Firestorm for the main boss. Let's assign an objective on that guy. Seems safer to do. And we'll tag him. I don't want to drop the tactical uh, stacks. So hold. Oh, that's not too bad. Wow, everyone has so much armor. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. We can do this. We can do this. Let's come together. God, we've got unparalleled movement. Can we grab him? Bring him together? Waking nightmare. If I may. That's gonna drop their toughness, their willpower. Uh, we're gonna go in and buff ourselves because her damage increases captain. with the willpower, and now she's got 330 willpower. So if we were to maybe stare at them, dear God, we would probably kill some of our own guys as well. So we're just gonna zap the one Isn't closest. This a job for the serfs? <laughs> ha! Just goodbye. Yes, you did. All right, joint analysis. So we can keep buffing his perception, which is at 133. Raid. Hold. All right, so we've got the singleton. Me? Move this guy into a better spot. I guess fear it. Any damage we can get is awesome. I will give out some points to Pascal. And he can overcharge shot. There it is. Beautiful. Offhand. Claim the bounty. Stack him. One forty-four on perception. Hold. Hold. Alfar hasn't really gone yet. <laughs> and Nomos' turn. Alfar's been hit pretty hard, actually. Now that I'm looking at it, I should probably get over and like heal him. What you doing, Nomos? He's got to think hard. He is like one of the most, I don't know, advanced cogitational minds. In Nomos. <laughs> oh, there we go. Wow. He was just like, not going to do it. Don't want to fight anymore. Not going to happen. Uh, let's give this guy a burst. I do that. Everyone, step aside. Burst but out. Heck yes, there it is. Beautiful. He needed a moment, yeah. As anyone would in a situation like this. All right, stack up. So what are the other copies, though? Because we there's a Catan Shard. There's Structuring Shard copy. It, apparently, there's four enemies on the field right now. But I only see these two. So odd. All right, so we're going to Sworn Enemy here. And charge. I won't object to it. Oh, there we go. That's we're talking about. And you're Naturally. But of course, Lord Captain. And burst. <laughs> there it is, Heinrich. There we go. Good job, buddy. All right, Argenta, Argenta. Get on up. Dash, dash, dash. Revel and slaughter. Run and gun. We need the angle. There's that angle. Reckless rush. So currently this thing has 13. For the rate of fire, we're going to go up to 23. Wildfire. 
burst there it is oh no what <gasps> holy crap what's happening take the victim's place oh i think we screwed up buddies what did we do right now she's a victim it looks like reveal the light attention she has so many buffs doomed by the void the creature's destined to die in the next round unless someone takes their place okay okay well it's the next round it's not the next round yet it's not the next round stack shot oh whoops holy crap we almost killed her wow raid i can't move fat i can't move closer that shot's gonna hurt her that shot's gonna kill her shot on what if we do aoe here instead all right that's fine that's fine pascal said my bad i am glad he at least said it oh that's what the buff meant hp was gonna kill her by the next round <laughs> <gasps> okay 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 let's make some opportunities well can i take her spot move closer for the interaction well how about heinrichs you do it <laughs> heinrichs can do it he's totally fine with this let's go not enough action points oh that's right i have to give him action points i'm not gonna buff him though I'll make his good job heinrichs be the inquisitor all right Hey, that worked great. <laughs> Thanks, Heinrichs. We should probably give her some points, though. Can we reach? We cannot reach from here. That's a bummer. Uh, let's give some points to Ulfar. He's low. Oh, can I not? All right. Well, shot. Oh, I should have used the shotgun here get back in the fight i wish oh yep get back in the fight that's gonna clear any injuries hold oh okay kasha okay kasha get a move on get a move on come on come on we're not close enough she's got 20 health yet left stack on argenta willpower isn't this a job for the sir 65 me. Group them. If you insist, Lord Captain. Zap Isn't that guy. All right, he's down. Uh, drop toughness. Currently, Katan Shard has. Oh my God, he's got 16 toughness. He's like as weak as a baby. <laughs> Shall make this front line. If you insist, Lord Captain. Hold. All right, Elfar's back. Reckless rush. Dash out. Flip it. <laughs> I moved. I switched the weapons too quickly. So it shall be. We're going full berserk. Wildfire and burst so it shall be. 408 158 he's got 12 stacks versatility swing there it is 20 foot tall glowing death <laughs> So wait, did we yoke him? I don't want to yoke him. I don't think you can actually kill a god, right? Kill the void dragon. I will try. I don't know if it'll let us. I mean, Kalgazar is, well, he's there. It's a shard of a god. Oh. Hey, heck yes. Hey, Nicholas. Welcome. Yeah, we just, we just 
I think we're finishing the game right now, yeah? They're indestructible. They can be sent back but never killed. Oh. The ancient monster struggles against the energy manacles of the yoke. It's impossible. Actually, very good point. Uh, if you don't want to see the ending, you... I'm so happy that you're here. But in your interest, you, you may not want to be here. <laughs> but definitely come back a little bit later, yeah? The ancient monster struggles against the energy manacles of the yoke. Its impossible powers that make reality itself burst at the seams are now being forced into a compact dungeon, quark by quark, returning it to a cruel and painful non-existence in the moment. It could struggle harder, but something is hindering it. You are the cause of these hindrances. Only now does the Catan Shard turn its focus to you, for the battle was nothing more than the reflexive resistance of an alien mind absorbed in a completely different range of thoughts and responses. But now, it is thinking about you, and its thoughts are so corporeal that you can sense them and know them. It seeks an end to the confrontation. It is capable of resolving it in a way that would benefit all. Oh, it's trying to break a broker a deal? Don't worry, I don't mind spoiling. Okay, high five, buddy, high five. Necrons broke their guns into shards and used them as power sources. Wow, they're kind of dicks. More and more tears appear all over the shard's form. As the yoke absorbs its power, it becomes increasingly harder for the shard to maintain its physical structure. Each imperfection you inflict brings the star predator closer to imprisonment. Do not bow your head before our abominable precursor. It was begotten by the dark abysses of the past. It is a fragment of that which devoured stars and erased civilizations. It knows no benefit other than its own. Allow us to stand against it. This is our time, our impossible chance. We can strike a fluffy deal. Do you like Bunny's Entity? Their gods were so, were dicks, so it kind of worked out. Oh, what? As yet another layer of reality cracks, a figure appears before you, her. After giving you a probing and appraising look, Theodora permits herself a slight smile. No, Moose. If our birth ever had a purpose, then it is here and now. Why do you call the shard your precursor? Because that is what it is and what we are. We have told you before about Theodora's ambition, Amanat's mind the ship's cradle, an epitaph's secret. One sprouted into another, and spurred yet another. Thus, no most were born. We were but an echo of the shard's power, an echo that left its prison. But we have become something so much more, with your help. What do you even tend to do? Clash with the precursor, touch it, absorb it, so the reflection becomes the object reflected. So the shard becomes Nomos. Then, and only then, will its threat be eradicated forever. I don't know. I mean, I... Uh... Do you think you can do this, Nomos? And what will even happen afterward? We stand at the threshold of possibilities. Probabilities and outside the bounds of the predictable. It is beyond possible to know whether we can or cannot. But we believe that we can, and that is what drives us to try. And if we succeed, we will obtain power beyond compare. We will become a shield against any threat, in whatever form it may manifest itself. I've made my decision. You can sense the shard's reaction, observation, analysis, and an almost intangible anxiety. Oh god! <laughs> Getting Thanos, but I don't know about this. This seems try to touch Theodora. Think about the Catan. What what does this mean? Think about it. I mean, that's probably not gonna be a decision, right? If I choose this. Mental contact is effortless. This is not communication. Such a powerful being cannot comprehend communicating with anyone but its equals. It simply bears the gift of making the other hear and understand it. So grand is the potential of its thoughts. Oh my god, I just realized we can look at it from different angles here. That's cool. Try to comprehend what the Catan is. 
The Catan is the pinnacle of reality. It is eternity, dominance, omnipotence, individuality. The Catan is the original purpose behind all existence. The rest was born in order to contain, nourish, and be appropriated by the Catan. Through the Catan, space is an illusory variable. Through the Catan, time is a young and trivial phenomenon, for it existed for an eternity in the gaseous energy fount of the universe before time was eventually born. Through the Catan, fact and probability are mere abstractions between which it can soar on its electromagnetic wings. Currently, the Catan is not whole. It was shattered into lesser pieces, and so were its thoughts and powers. The feeling of emptiness is oppressive, and it yearns to become one again. We're killing a god! Nice. <laughs> I love you, Tank. I love you so much. Try to sense the motives behind the Catan's actions. The Catan wishes to be. All Catan exists to spread and conquer, not to stay manacled within untime where it was entombed by the contemptible sentient tools away from all that is. The Catan wishes to ascend, sate its hunger, and embrace once more the pure exhilaration of claiming and taming reality. Try to understand what benefits the Catan's promises. Power. Eternity. Comprehension. The Catan once chose to reign over the short-lived races and forged a new and glorious fate for them. It has learned from its mistakes. Now it will only bestow its gifts upon the chosen few. Oh, all right. That's not sick. <laughs> stop thinking about the Catan. It's much easier for you to try to stop trying to comprehend the Catan than for it, one who can grasp the world in hundreds of ways, to stop comprehending you. I don't know if we should try to touch Teodora. What's the deal? Its gifts are more like enslaving tools. Particles of reality around you begin to boil trying to heal the wound upon existence and preventing her from entering your version of reality. You and she can exchange words, thoughts, glances, but a physical connection is an impossibility. You are merely fleeting phantoms that could scatter at any moment. She is silent, her gaze still trained on you, as if she is trying to commit your every feature to memory. I am at a crossroads, Theodora. What should I do? You and Kalkazar did so many terrible things in pursuit of your ambitions. Tell me, was it worth it? Her smile widens. It is always worth it. You will understand this yourself. The wound on reality is healed, and the vision of Theodora quickly fades away. You catch her last words. Whatever, Whatever fate, fate you, you choose, choose, one, one can, can only hope. hope. It will, it will be, be better, better than, than mine. mine. Oh, God. So act now, my child, for Nomos. Deliver the final blow. I consign you to oblivion without end. You shall bend to my will. Nope. Destroy the yoke and kneel before the ancient deity I'm rid... No, what? No. So we're not going to kneel in front of it. We're not going to kill it. Yeah, Nomos is basically... good. I this seems wrong. But Nomos. Pokeball, I'd shoot you. <laughs> Kill it. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah, because then we're going to have a, a little god running around on the ship. This seems great. Can we even kill it, though? I was told, I thought the shards, they can't be destroyed, right? They can't be killed. So all we can do is contain it. We've got to go with Nomos. Here's our Pokeball. We are ready for the most important poke battle of our life. Wish us luck. It was supremely effective. <laughs> Nomo steps toward the shard and the whole world explodes into a terrifying whirlwind. You can hear the colors and see the touches ice burns your hands while fire leaves you freezing. And in the midst of the madness, you can clearly sense a battle raging, a clash of two beings, one endlessly ancient and the other endlessly young. Well, they say with age, difficulties come. So hopefully the he's got the speed. Pikachu, don't evolve yet. You got to take this guy. <laughs> the power of the Catan Shard is such that it redefines the very notion of power. But it has a weakness, one that you can see only now. With the Shard and its rival standing face to face, the Shard is just that, a Shard. It is incomplete. It's not whole. It cannot be what the Catan was before. What opposes the Shard is something entirely different. 
an undivided sentient being with a clear purpose in mind, akin to a well-aimed arrow. And the one who flinched and loosed this arrow was you. The battle goes on and on and on, outrunning the course of time, but you do not need the gift of clairvoyance to know who will emerge victorious. I'm sensing I am immortal. I have an almost blood I can. Yeah. <laughs> he has no rival. No cuts on me. I'm equal. Oh. Okay. The Catan shard was transmuted into a new form. And their name was Nomos. Oh, God. <laughs> Possessing the power of an ancient being and nurtured by the rogue trader, the young star god watched over the Coronus expanse, their new domain, with curiosity. Gathering its bleeding worlds together again, the bunny trader dared to build something more noble and civilized in the expanse. A haven for those drifting and unprotected in the strict hierarchy of the Imperium. It would be an unbound frontier where freedom and compassion were not wholly extinct. Oh my, that song was about fried chicken if I remember. <laughs> the shackled monster under Von Valencia's control ensured the survival of the fledgling Utopia. Uh-oh, Utopias never last. The star god destroyed all who threatened its peaceful civilians and instilled fear in those of little faith. The Expanse tasted the sweet fruit of freedom and tolerance with reverent fear. The Imperium could not forgive such insolent deviation from the order prescribed by Holy Terra. The Von Valencius dynasty was accused of the seditious formation of their own empire. An invasion fleet gathered in the Calixis sector, and the lifespan of the young Utopia was as short as its creators. Protecting the young kingdom of freedom, Nomos created dimensional barriers that cut the Coronus Expanse off from the Imperium more soundly than the Great Rift. The humanity of the Expanse was left in isolation, relying only on themselves. They either had to build something new and different from the Imperium or fall to the horrors lurking in the darkness. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. The ideals that HBFT Von Valencius was committed to were alien to the Imperium but close to the hearts of many in the Expanse. Anyone who could not resolve a dispute or who was denied justice rushed to the palace of the Bunny Trader in search of mercy. Having lost its leader and lacking a worthy successor, the Corda dynasty began to weaken. The grim legacy of the abominable Aspis revealed itself, and the Protectorate fell into chaos. Grasping claimants tore the defenseless domain apart. Resisting the temptations that besieged him, Caligus Winterscale returned to his domain and began to piece together the shattered remains of his protectorate. Until his dying day, his actions and thoughts were dedicated to saving abandoned worlds and protecting survivors. Alas, he was not able to achieve much in the time he was allotted. He breathed his last breath on the same throne that he refused to leave for decades, adamantly refusing augmentics that would restore mobility and power to his legs. Thanks to the patronage of the Von Valencia's dynasty, the cult of St. Drusus was successful in spreading its influence across the expanse. Overshadowed, the cults of other saints lost their followers and faced a harsh choice, slip into obscurity or swear allegiance to the ideals of Drusus the warrior. Hieronymus Doloroso remained the most revered priest in the cult of St. Drusus. He turned no one away, hearing confessions from pirates, bilge rats, deserters, and beggars alike. It might have been one of those undeserving wretches who infected him with the rare form of leprosy that robbed him of his sight. Yet his heart could always see the corruption in the souls of his repenting children. The deals struck by the Cognizance fleet and the Von Valencia's dynasty replenished the explorator's dwindling supplies and allowed them to re-embark on a rapid and unrelenting expansion campaign. With powerful bases established in the Expanse, the Omnissiah scouts bravely ventured forth toward unnamed stars with the same drive that propelled their ancestors to explore the Expanse itself. 
The schism of discontinuing the cycle engulfed the entire Cognizant's fleet, and soon the civil war was over. Disregarding the commandments of their forefathers, the explorators started down a dangerous path of new comprehension, creation, and revision of procedures and algorithms. The fleet was united once more, and in its unity, it was ready to stare down any horrors standing in the way of the Catechism of Maintenance and Operation. Magus Dominus Opticon 22, one of the first to hail the return of the Messiah, took the helm of the Mother Squadron of the Cognizance Fleet. Unquestioningly, embracing the teaching of discontinuing the cycle, he personally saw to the crushing of any renegades who did not accept the Messiah's word as truth, and earned himself the identifier, Chrome Scourge. Scur Pff, wow, Chrome Scourge. Oh, this is going to be interesting, Riza. The crisis in the Expanse dealt a serious blow to the business interests of the Fellowship of the Void. Having no powerful allies, they retreated into the darkness of frontier systems. The hard life they faced there forged them into a new tribe, furious, wild, and willing to do anything for survival. They swore to return and retake what had once been theirs. For many years, old Riza presided over the captains of the Fellowship. At the end of her life, she once again took the helm of a ship and led an unprecedented attack on the Mother Squadron of the Cognizant's fleet, during which the attackers managed to seize a dozen transport ships loaded with the Omnissiah's sacred gifts. Violence throughout the Expanse put many on their guard, and as a result, the Kasbala Commission's business declined. Soon, rumors surfaced among the cold traders about a so-called commission that had made it through the Maw and into the Expanse. Its professed purpose was to audit assets and take measures to restructure operations. These words carried with them an ominous threat. Vladayam Tokara as liege of Footfall survived 14 assassination attempts and thwarted no less than 2,000 schemers before a shot finally took his life. Dear God. The esteemed liege's funeral was held in great secrecy with only his closest entourage being permitted to view his corpse, which spawned some peculiar rumors. A multitude of agreements bound the Imperial Navy to the Von Valencia's dynasty. Captains were eager to patrol the Protectorate, knowing they would be richly rewarded. Competing ships were lost to pirate attacks and subjected to harsh inspections. Many officers quietly entered the dynasty service, receiving a salary and title in exchange for their excellent skills. Worthy admirals valued their new friends and enjoyed more gold on their uniforms. Chartist Captain Asterius Thorfast founded the Thorfast and Companions Merchant Company, excelling in trade and acquiring a substantial escort fleet. After three decades, he traveled to the Maw to return to the Imperium in hopes of obtaining the fabled Warrant of Trade. It is not known how this venture ended. When the rogue trader's apostasy became apparent, the Imperial Navy fulfilled its duty and fought the Von Valancius dynasty. The Battle of Dargonis ended in resounding defeat, and the surviving ships fled to distant systems. Disheartened, but not broken, the captains vowed to rebuild their force and plan raids into the apostate territory. The crucial reason for the defeat was the extraordinarily high percentage of captains who betrayed their oaths and defected to the bunny trader's side. Overnight, he acquired a battle-ready fleet of his own. All right, they were so cool. Dargonus grew and prospered until it became the capital of the Coronus Expanse. The planet was like a giant magnet whose pull held together the worlds of the Expanse, absorbing treasures and vices of the Sector. The voracious and shameless nobility of the Expanse flocked to Dargonus in search of the forbidden pleasures. Its librariums harbored dangerous volumes, its dark corners harbored dangerous people. The rule of law could not reach the tops of the spires shrouded in a veil of sinister and mystical rumors. Kiavagama washed off the stain of its former defilement, but not the dark memory of it. The sacred halls were never silent and production rates became the supreme law. The glory of the Imperium was forged in the blood and sweat of its toilers, and the millstones of the Manufactorums ground the workers down by the thousand. Even in death, the souls of its servants dared not step away from their machines. The enthroned Null Caliph 
drew millions of pilgrims and granted the planet hallowed status. Its sacred calculation continued for centuries, and the foremost sages of the Adeptus Mechanicus traveled to the world so they could attempt to define its meaning. Janus was conquered, the Xena spirits were exorcised, and the wilderness was subdued. The fields grew until they covered the entire planet and billions of tons of provisions were harvested there. Janus had become the breadbasket of the Expanse and to threaten it would be to condemn millions to starvation. The nobility of the Expanse appreciated the idyllic conditions of the pearl-like paradise world. White castles rose above the agri complexes and their mud, and the shining knights of Janus gifted the sector with many a hero who covered themselves in glory. Well, it started nice and started getting dark real fast. Yes, we, uh, <clears throat> I thought we were just doing what's best for mankind, but apparently we broke off from the Imperium, as is always the way of the Warhammer 40k universe. <laughs> the mines of Viba 6 grew deeper and deeper, and soon the planet became the darkest and most frightening colony of the Expanse. The final stop for the exiled and the damned. The brutal, hardened inhabitants of the Death World feared neither humans nor Xena horrors, knew no mercy, and were known as the most fearsome fighters in the sector, who had traded their lives for the right to leave the eternal darkness of the mines. Guarded, luxurious palaces were built under the climate domes shrouded by clouds of poison. They housed so many powerful black guards, persecuted aristocrats, and wealthy scoundrels that Viba 6 gained unimaginable political influence. Such grand and sinister deeds were done there that before long, the Grim Death was spoken of as the new political center of the Expanse. The Imperium's kind of the best option that is terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> no longer secluded and forlorn, Foulstone turned into the spiritual center of the Expanse, clad in gold and power. Rulers went there to be anointed for greatness, criminals for penance, and the righteous for encouragement, and there was no end to them in sight. Treasures and influence quickly corrupted the supreme hierarchs of Foulstone, turning them into a coterie of venal egotists anointed by greed. As they did dirty deeds under the cover of holy vestments, their power steadily grew. Oh, that's not, that's not good. It is hardly surprising that a few years later, the hierarchs of Foulstone recognized the blood relationship between their patrons, the Von Valencia's dynasty and Saint Cognatius himself. Say what now? The blood relationship between the patrons, the Von Valencia's dynasty and Saint Cognatius were related? Wow, I didn't catch that one at all. That one flew right by me. Like, <laughs> After recovering from Corda's regime, Footfall reclaimed its status as a trading hub of the Expanse. Having learned a bitter lesson, Vladayam Tokara created the Footfall Partisans Militia, a well-equipped mercenary army that answered only to him. A modicum of order returned to the station. For power corrupts, absolute power corrupts. Yep. The changes that the Von Valencia's dynasty brought to Footfall endured on the station long after. Poor houses opened by the order of the bunny traders saved many hungry and homeless from death. Unfortunately, this disrupted the station's delicate ecosystem. No longer freezing to death in empty compartments or tormented by epidemics, those who lived in poverty on Footfall began to choke the station, leading to a sharp rise in crime. Organ traders illegal augmentic specialists, and savage gangs of Anverse proliferated. Left without a sun, the Rykad system ceased to exist. Its now frigid planets spun away into the darkness no longer held by the gravitational pull of their star. A century later, a fragment of Rykad Minoris entered the Photobunda system and was snared by Void Miners. A piece of its rock was delivered to footfall with reverence and used in the restoration of the God Emperor statue as a final memorial to the world devoured by corruption. No good deed goes unpunished. Yeah. <laughs> Katan, yeah, we need help. With the fall of their unholy patron, the Edge of Daybreak, the cult of the Final Dawn perished as well. Every cell of the cult was hunted down and eliminated, 
rumors that some worshippers of the ruinous powers had managed to get away, hiding the writings of their warp banished lord under their robes were baseless. Left without a mission or a leader, the word bearers retreated to the depths of the Immaterium. Their last act of vengeance was a bloody assault on footfall. The populace of several asteroids was exterminated or enslaved, and the statue of the God Emperor badly damaged. HB made a bad place. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, it's not all bad. I mean, we've got bunnies, right? I mean, that's pretty good. Rumors of the rotting remains of an Eldari craft world spread around the expanse. Explorators, privateers, Kasbalika agents, and anyone hungry for easy money all rushed to frontier systems to vie for a piece of the prize. Some were swallowed by the warp, while others perished in skirmishes with their rivals. The most skilled and fortunate returned empty-handed after decades of searching. The colossal ship, as big as an imperial world, simply vanished as if it had never existed. But the legend of the forbidden treasure lived on and continued to bring daring souls to ruin. Oh, can we please talk about the positive side of things, guys? Next run, heretical. Can't be any worse. Yeah, no. Half a century later, the Expanse trembled to the echo of Eldari war songs. Oh, gosh darn it. Myriad war bands appeared out of nowhere, leaving a trail of bodies in their wake before disappearing into the webway gates, masterfully hidden from the eyes of Monkei. The children of Asorian had come to avenge the death of the craft world Kruderak. Their woeful retribution lasted many decades, until both races were war-worn and had a blood to spill. Oh, God! The spirit monolith purified by the Harlequin troop on the Crone world was hidden from the insatiable eyes of Monkei by raging warp storms. Ships started going missing, more frequently in the systems close to the planet. I mean, even the most courageous captains gave the region a wide berth, and it was named Those Damned Reefs. Somewhere on the underside of reality lay Komarag, woven from manifold, other dimensions and illuminated as always with the light of stolen suns. Its streets ever filled with screams and agony. Any misfortune experienced by the dark city became another scar on its appalling face, lost among thousands of other vile blemishes. As long as pain pulsed and its blood-soaked spires, the insatiable, unshakable Komara continued its flight through the webway, along with its unchanging ruler, the leader of the Cabal of the Black Heart, and the most dangerous of all Drukhari, Asdrubael Vect. After the bunny trader's visit, dimensional rifts opened around the spire of the Reaving Tempest, flooding the streets of Komarag with daemons. This incursion terrified Komarag. The Cabal of the Black Heart managed to stop it. But some Archons saw the event as a sign of their leader's weakness. Others interpreted it as a grim omen for the entirety of the Dark City. Yay us, let's go! We did have nice uniforms. Oh, but... The fall of the Cabal of the Reaving Tempest united Komarag for a brief and bloody moment. The elites of the Dark City set their squabbles aside and found a new game in tearing apart the domain of Archon Eremeries. The fate of the Reaving Tempest reminded the other Cabals that nothing lasts forever in the Dark City, save the city itself. That city's the only place where if Damon's appeared, my response is good. Yes! <laughs> Leaving the Necron system behind, the Star God vengefully obliterated every tomb world of the ancient Zenus race. The old hatred of the Catan, betrayed by their deathless servants, whispered inside him. The voice of Vox Master Vigdis Suriora of the Ptolemon Dynasty has long resounded in the Expanse, bringing hope and trumpeting the arrival of the merciful Bunny Trader. Known for her wisdom and acute understanding of ship systems over her long life, she taught many generations of future Vox Masters from the Ptolemon Dynasty. Her body was built into the bridge itself, and in times of need, her voice flowed through the Vox dispelling delusions and despair. I don't know if that's a good thing. It's kind of reading out like the Black Marauder. I mean, if she were stuck inside of our leg actuators, then I might be a little more scared. But I guess in the bridge itself, well, she will always support us forever. <laughs> that's a little scary. Who? Did I authorize that? I don't think I'd authorize that. After years of dedicated service, Master Helmsman Ravor was granted 
despite his objections, the privilege of rest. The wise servants of the Omnissaya implanted an augment into his brain that restored his ability to sleep. Oh, well, that's good. Soon afterwards, something unprecedented happened aboard the ship. The Master Helmsman overslept and missed the start of his watch. But his temper did become much more agreeable from then on. <laughs> I mean, that'll happen. Let me tell you, he kept his edge because he never slept. <laughs> I do like our pocket gun, given the Necrons the stink eye on the way out the door. It's, it's true. Many years later, High Factotum Janerus Denrock sought permissions to retire. He said that age had softened his heart and that a more worthy, young, and assertive successor should take over his position. There was no shortage of candidates. Under all that fat, Danrock had a sentimental heart. He spared nothing for the orphans of Capellans <laughs> who had died serving the bunny trader. The children were given an excellent education and were eager to serve the Von Valancius dynasty. Old man just needed that. That's right, high five. Urban Drivestem cared more about preserving the influence of his line than the well-being of the Protectorate. His blind ambition lost him his governor's seat and the respect of his family. Within a few generations, one of the largest houses of Dargonus turned into an obscure family of petty aristocrats. Toriana Gaprak missed the moment when her family, which had previously functioned like a well-oiled machine, started to fall apart, racked by infighting. Among her distant relatives, many blamed Toriana for the Kiavagama disaster. Soon, the Gaprak family splintered into warring factions and spent centuries locked in a violent struggle, only occasionally punctuated by futile attempts to reunite the house. Makarius Sarbak was loyal to the bunny trader to the last, despite all the rumors to the contrary. Finding little affection among his subjects or family, he stayed true to himself remaining a forthright, severe, and pious person. Macarius strived to ensure that every soul in his charge felt justifiable dread before both him and the God Emperor. Hey, Cyber, we needing pilots in the Capellan armies? Oh, as always. Members of House Vazarian served the dynasty faithfully and loyally, amassing more and more power. A century later, they had finally gained the respect enjoyed by other noble houses, yet Power and luxury can dull any blade. The now pampered and idle aristocrats were scarcely recognizable as the descendants of the formidable Seneschal Vazarian. It's so different than the dogmatic one. Oh, heck yes! I'm, I'm curious. The dogmatic one's probably like back to the Imperium, burn all the worlds. I don't know. Clementia Vazarian, daughter of Abelard and Chancellor of Dargonis, executed her duties irreproachably and even found time to school the younger generations of her family. She was an equally skilled mentor, chancellor, and political operative. After a century of immaculate service, she surprised everyone by leaving her position and becoming the first mate on a trade ship. She would later admit, like a true Vizarian, that she had always had a passion for ships and void fairing. Branches of houses Gaprak and Vizarian became intertwined for a time after the marriage of Astartia and Vicent. To the great sadness of the couple and the great amusement of the spiteful Dargonis nobility, their marriage produced no children. Just like her ancestors, Astartia, Vizarian, Gaprak dedicated her life to service. Crushed by the events that shook the stability of his house and his inability to provide an heir, Vicent lived in his wife's shadow. When his time came, he passed away without notice. The harlequin known as Nocturne of Oblivion visited the Expanse once again. Sneaking onto Dargonus, he came to the bunny trader's palace and left him a special gift. A case of Eldari crafting, unmistakably ancient, precious, adorned with the rune of an eye inside a triangle. Only the Lord Bunnyman knew what it contained. The Harlequin candidly warned him he was drawing the Von Valancius dynasty into a deadly dance, a shaking doom, that all will freeze within the threads of terror's loom. Then he promptly departed, and not without reason. A few hours later, 
Assassins from the Dark City appeared following his trail and were mercilessly killed. Their armor bore the sign of the Cabal of the Black Heart. After months of searching, Dargonus Wardens found the remains of Achilleus Scalander on the lowest levels of the Hive. Drukhari artifacts and records discovered beside him indicated the agent of the Inquisition had been compromised and was working for the Xenos. Did we? They only figured it out now. We? Oh my God. The Illuminati was Elder. <laughs> the savage deeds that Gordave Skadov witnessed on footfall traumatized him forever. His architectural genius was shattered. Only the rare collections of true connoisseurs held his work written in a shaky hand. Footfall of the ultimate void station and mortuary. Wow, they went all the way down. This is the guy we met in the bar, the architect. Holy crap. And then we told him he should write a book. Man, that's crazy. Adelia Bellardo, the granddaughter of the pirate Jerry Can Dens Bellardo, grew up to be a quick-witted and energetic captain. Since her guardian, who went simply by the name Chaplin, knew only faith, slaughter, and void faring, he advised her to invest her inheritance in a void ship. Her trade clipper, the Snake, traveled to all the settled worlds of the Expanse and to many uncharted ones as well. In all the time that Adelia Bellardo was captain, her ship never once fired on a civilian vessel. All right, go her. High five. Gosh, we're talking about. Man, that was just a side quest too. That's insane. Having completed his last journey with his Lord Captain Bunnyman, Abelard Vazarian, with the gracious permission of the bunny trader, left his post as Seneschal and took over the helm of his large family. House Vazarian rose above its rivals and had inside it blood of kings <laughs> and was never again the target of persecution. Even after their esteemed patriarch died decades later in his bed, surrounded by his grieving loved ones. Abelard's shining memory was blighted only by rumors of a creeping madness in the twilight of his life. Many said they had seen the esteemed Seneschal talking to someone unseen in a voice filled with unusual tenderness and sorrow. Aww. Theodora. Yeah, decades. After the victory on Epitaph, Argenta left the bunny trader. An insatiable flame burned brighter and brighter in her soul, hungry for vengeance. And so the sister embarked on her own personal crusade. At first she hunted and exterminated the remaining followers of the final dawn. Then she pursued those who had abetted them, and then anyone in whom she saw a hint of heresy. Even when she directed her wrath against entire cities, no power could stop Argenta, clad in sacred armor. She left a trail of fire and blood across the expanse, a trail that ended on Salus Prime. No one knows why the sister returned for a third time to the planet where she had found her relic, but after descending to its surface, she mysteriously vanished. Wow. <laughs> She's a one-woman army. Literally, Abelard deserved at least another century. Well, she does crit for like 500 plus, yet yeah, no one can stop her. Rumors said that Argenta was lured there under false pretenses by her former allies. It may have even been HBFT von Valencius himself, unwilling to kill her off or tolerate her raging desire to cleanse the expanse of heresy. No one knows the truth, but many gave a sigh of relief after her disappearance. Well, it was, it was nice having her when she was there. She took a long time to get over those. Yeah, seriously, I don't think she ever did. Enjoying the privileges of the Mercatum Tabula Official, Jai Hadari found her way into the heart of the Expanse's underworld. She became known as the Baroness of Shadows, having amassed so much wealth and influence. She came to control the economic fate of the sector. Even the most powerful figures in the Expanse were forced to reckon with her, reckon with, and despise her. For a long time, Jai was able to thwart the attempts on her life until one day she disappeared. But many continue to believe she still rules the expanse from shadows even deeper than before. Inquisitor Heinrich von Kalox continued to serve the Imperium and vanished under mysterious circumstances several years later. After receiving a signal encrypted with Inquisition codes, he traveled to an unknown distant world from which he never returned. I wonder if she returns to the Imperium if we're dogmatic. I mean, they'd probably be like, yeah, good job. Keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> In her journeys with the bunny trader, Kazia Orselio experienced all the hardships and delights of the galaxy. The invaluable experience 
new knowledge helped her to finally conquer her fears and accept herself and her power. The Lady Navigator became Novator of her house, tasked with addressing the consequences of Tisiphone's rule and the chaos that followed her disappearance. For the duration of her reign, she patiently worked on uniting the feuding branches of the house, forging alliances and expanding the influence of House Orselio. The Starway Atlas, which contained the memories of Tisiphone and the Sathala clan, lost its power. House Orselio's navigators once again had to rely on skill alone in the depths of the Immaterium. Many lost their lives, but they never lost their freedom. <laughs> but those who survived the crisis became hardened veterans and pillars of the house. Most of those fortunate souls were young and brave, too few among them were old and wise. Kazia grew up in some walkthroughs, Jaya is still in queue for st Oh, really? Are you serious? Oh my god, that's crazy. Having revealed himself as the renewed messiah of discontinuing, Pascal Hanuman caused great turmoil. Free from his vows of service, he did not burden himself with leadership over the fleet. He took just one combat squadron and retreated with his flock to remote sectors for contemplation. Decades later, his ships were spotted among the heretics of the cauldron, a sector touched by corruption. Their tech crews revered the Omnissiah, but his image was haunting. No one had dared depict the Deus Mechanicus in this manner before. Adorned with sinister flesh-embedded lumens and golden mech armor and crowned with clawed wings, the Omnissiah chose a grim and belligerent likeness in which to appear before his unrighteous messiah. Oh, what have we done? Oh my god. Because we left her. <laughs> the unit bearing the name Abel Hanuman did not follow Pascal. No longer needed by his ambitious comrade, he was discarded and left behind. While en route to station Altar Templum Calixus X-17, Abel was captured by pirates and forced to toil as a techno mat. The day the Imperial Navy destroyed his pirate ship prison marked the end of his silent torment. Oh my god, I thought we did well. This is horrible. <laughs> Iliot Lanaves lost faith in her kin, who had followed the blind farseers like obedient cattle. She accompanied the bunny trader for a time, but her time among the Monkei only made her feel more alone, revealing to her that humans were as bereft of strong spirit and will as the children of Asurian. She disappeared and reappeared again in the Expanse many years later, as the leader of a fleet of Eldari Corsairs, fearsome in battle and well versed in the tactics of the Imperium. Whoops. After joining the Stormbiters, Ulfar Thunderlung soon became the pack leader, taking the place of Thorbald, who met an honorable end. Geez, HB, create an army of miscreants. I love it. <laughs> I find it. The new leader sent a message to Fenris, stating his intention to remain in the Expanse. There were too many enemies yet lurking in these hunting grounds that deserve the Allfather's wrath. Legends paved the battle, paved the formidable pack's path in gold. Years later, Alfar found a battle in which he could meet his honorable death, but the warp was suddenly torn asunder, and ships from Fenris, bearing the mark of the wolf head, came to his aid. Saved from the battlefield by his loyal companion, Hombrant, Alfar accepted the honors of the Dreadnought and was entombed in sacred armor. Oh my god, go Alfar! During the blessed ritual, he cursed and demanded to be left to his death but his brothers merely answered with mirthful laughter. When he recovered his senses, Alfar led his forces to the heathen stars. The Allfather had given him a new mission in a near-death vision. No one in the Expanse has heard word of the Space Wolf since their departure, yet many believe that one day they will return victorious. Such was the echo of the deeds of the bunny trader of House Von Valancius deeds that transformed the Coronus Expanse and prepared it for events even darker and more violent. But those are the events of a different story. This one has come to an end. All right. I went for marriage with Kash. Oh, you did? Not necessarily a good thing. Wow. Oh, oh are we still waiting here? Whoa. I guess Thunderlong is no longer just a name for being loud for all far. Holy crap. That's crazy. I cannot believe it. We beat it. That was a great game. 
I seriously want to play it again. <laughs> I really do. I'm thinking, I mean, I don't know if I can handle heretical, but I definitely want to get a, I don't know if it's possible to get zealot or anything like that. And I, I now have an idea. I mean, it'll be so cool. Yeah. Near perfect timing too. Oh yeah. Around the end of the stream. Your name is in the crowd. Oh heck yes. High five. Well, for those, I mean, what did the bunnies think? Yeah. And Henrix, Hendrix went a corrupt high inquisitor. Oh, Von Kalux. Oh, in your walkthrough? Really? Why was he corrupt? That's crazy. And Argenta killed him. Oh, wow. Holy crap. Well, I mean, Argenta is definitely vengeful. <laughs> She's very vengeful. My God. Wow. I have to say that even though obviously we became very powerful very quickly, I feel like I, I know it was probably boring to watch, but it was still enjoyable for me to shoot everything nonstop. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I think they did a good job. I, I wasn't sure what to expect with the, um, with all of the, the battle systems and, and everything like that. I didn't know what to expect about the ship combat. I wanted more, honestly, I wanted more ship combat. I wish I could have, like, I know it was just a mini game, but I wish I could have gotten more ships to add to the fold and command like a tiny little a, a baby fleet kind of a la armada i guess gothic armada yeah it was definitely different than my ending argenta has some wild endings i got the tame one mine's the tame one i for one could watch another run you could ichiko i vote we go flames and dogma next run or heretical i'm not picky well well here's the thing uh alcat minigames are always meh I, I was I was surprised. I actually really like this one. I think in Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, we were doing the whole like army management movement around the kingdom. I only went through the first chapter, but I, I, I had a lot more fun with this one because I do like the micromanage, like the squad level combat, stuff like that. It's much different if you choose to go with more than one buffer. Oh, without more than one buffer. Gotcha, gotcha. I mean, it, it might be... I guess if you you yourself, like, I wouldn't mind being a tank, like a melee guy. But that might be kind of interesting, although I don't know if I'd ever get to go. <laughs> Whoa, the music's badass, too. It, there is DLC coming later. I know! Isn't there... There's going to be an assassin. I saw that and I thought, please, please be the Vindicare. Although I doubt it's going to be a Vindicare. Let's be real. I, I, I doubt it's going to be that. Wrath was totally a wannabe Heroes of Might and Magic minigame. Uh, Wrath of the Righteous Crusade mechanic is a worse hero as a Might and Magic. Oh, there you go. There you go. I I really, really, really like this game. I when I, I have to admit that when I first saw the graphics and combat after playing um, War Tales and animations, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if I'd like it because there are definitely games that I've tried to like, like um, what's the bobblehead one? Oh, Battle Brothers. I, I tried to like it and, and I couldn't get myself past the graphical recognition and interface, even though I can recognize how cool it is. Um, and I didn't know if I would like this one despite loving 40k, but this was so well done. This was so well done. So I really, really dig it. I think I will actually play it again. <laughs> I think I might start over knowing what I know now and make like a smaller crack team that can just go in maybe like all flames or I, I want to try a psyker. We I didn't really use psychic powers, but then he is pretty normal. Raven is all about playing with magic and psychics and, and stuff like that. And I'm all about utilizing weaponry and uh, like ammunition based things and stuff like that. Well, Okay, so here's the thing. We are now at the end of the stream. Bunny, thanks so much for being through with me, like the 20, 23 of you uh, that are out there. Thank you so much for hanging out throughout um, this playthrough. I thoroughly enjoyed myself, and thank you to the bunnies for recommending it to me as well. If you have any ideas about the next game that you'd like to see, please feel free to drop it in the suggestion section of the Bunny League Discord. I'm personally, I probably tomorrow, I'm going to come back with um with pacific drive because even though we finished where we did after the main story i am i really really wanted to see the stuff 
that are later in the tech tree because the tech tree is still pretty big so there's so many things we haven't seen we have ne haven't even gotten any olympium yet and there's all the new tech requires olympium so there's i actually think we can actually build a pretty decent car so i'd like to at least do that but please feel free uh if you want to suggest something we could definitely um put it in the suggestions section on the bunny league discord that'll be a great place for me to go and and take a look and talk to talk to the bunnies about it uh one thing you can try is a game with hired characters instead of the companies oh so that you can craft it exactly as you want dragon's dogma would be a must future game dd2 i felt we were totally safe heck yes david uh thanks for the stream hb for playing the game i wonder if there's a continue option after the credits that would be cool have you played total war warhammer yet well let me let me ask you this so i guess obviously i i play and i know that we're we're just hitting time so i'll try and keep it short uh obviously i play turn-based games strategy games things like that uh dragon's dogma as an example as i understand it is i remember the reason one of the things i thought about the original dragon dragon's dogma and didn't actually finish it i, I kind of played a little bit i was excited because it was like a single player mmo is how i kind of thought about it and i thought that was cool because there were so many times i wanted to solo in mmos and i, I couldn't um but i guess it's it's dependent upon what do people like i know like serve for instance if i play pacific drive any like first person type games then it's difficult to watch because it, it may make people nauseous things like that and turn-based games are nice because we can kind of converse and talk but at the same time i think in dragon's dogma it's it's all live is that right like it's action and all that yeah love the game more 40k yeah total war warhammer is a good game but it is complex i remember i really really liked shogun shogun total war like when it first came out but i'm not a very good player of it i pretty much much get my butt kicked all the time and then i i resort to the same type of tactics because it's all real time so i have trouble with that kind of stuff i didn't suggest the ooh stellaris i've heard of that too yeah well let's go ahead and we'll just do enter to speed up i'm just curious if it'll actually go to continue but i can check that out later thank you so much uh next time we'll be streaming is tomorrow at 12 p.m pacific standard time i will be back with pacific drive at least for a bit uh just so that we can kind of explore the world a little more because now that we finished the main storyline and want to at least expand out the tech tree and, and go through all of those right there it, it moves pretty quickly so i don't imagine it will last a very long time um, but I think it'll be a lot of fun. I definitely want to see what other things that we haven't seen in that game. So that's going to be awesome. And uh, this coming Saturday, we are going to be streaming. So we'll be back with Battletech Advanced and Thursday as well. Friday, we'll be back with Rogue Tech. So it's basically, it's uh, one of the long weeks. So if you want to join us, please feel free. If you want to support the bunnies, there's a lot of links down below. And we are trying to hit a thousand subs on YouTube. I'm very impressed. We're right there. We are right there at 660. That's crazy. So it's almost like every time I look back, it's coming on up. Oh, and I guess if you're curious, we actually have all the names. So I would imagine Smeeble's in there and everybody. <laughs> but thanks again. So if you'd like to wait until the end of the music, we'll go and give someone a nice raid. I had a total blast. I hope you did as well. And I can't wait to get into the next one with you. Thank you again so much, bunnies. Have a good night.